everyone, welcome back to Ron's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're going to be playing a prototype, which doesn't feel like a prototype because Sammy, the publisher of the game, actually made this prototype at a production facility. So thank you for that. <laughs> That's always fun to play with actual nice components. But this is Lands of Galzir by Snowdale Design. We're going to be playing this today. It's currently on GameFound. If you are interested in reading more about this game beyond our playthrough today, we're doing a full playthrough. We'll talk about the game, uh, show you what's involved. You can follow along. We'll do a whole session of this story-driven adventure game. It's open world. It's placed in the same world. If any of you guys know who've played the popular game Dale's Merchant or have watched our playthrough series on uh, Dawn of the Peacemakers, I believe is what it's called. I always forget. I call it Peacekeepers or Peacemakers. Mm. I'm pretty sure it's Dawn of the Peacemakers, but... Uh, we played through that game on the channel, and it was awesome. We loved it. Um, but it's in that same world um, by the same publisher. Um, but it's a different style of game altogether, which is pretty cool. So we're going to be playing through it today. Um, like I said, it's currently on GameFound. So it's a crowdfunding campaign. Anyone who doesn't know what that website is, uh, again, the link is in the live chat. The link should be in the video description, and you can go check it out. It'll be on there for the next few weeks. Um, but yeah, this, this prototype is pretty far along, uh, and it is, it's got like nice art on it. You guys will see that today. And, uh, yeah, if you want to know anything about it, just ask us in the chat. We see Sammy, AKA Snowdale design is in the chat right now, but may not be the whole stream. Uh, and that's okay. We appreciate his time. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, you can drop them in the chat, try to get an answer there. We'll try to answer what we can from the prototype we have. Uh, the game is not complete though. This is not one of those crowdfunding, you're just pre-ordering an already finished game. It is produced with production quality components you'll see today, but we are missing a lot of the content. So this is just a demo, like a, a way to play a couple sessions uh, and get a taste of the game. It is not the full game. There are spoilers. We will be, I'm sure, seeing cards that are in the real final game that you will get like a year from now. I'm sure your memory is not that great. Uh, mine isn't. I wouldn't even remember it next week when I play again what happened in the last session. But it is a persistent game. And we've heard that, that, that saying thrown out in games lately, persistent world. This is one of those where every session you sit down, things that have happened in the game, whether it's the same players or different players, uh, the characters' stats will change, cards will be available, the, the map will change, the month changes that you could be playing in the winter or the summer, fall, whatever. Uh, so it changes each session based on decisions you make and things that happen in the game and it's fully resettable So you can reset it back to day one. We're playing with a fully resetted demo here But we did play two sessions before this to see how it goes between sessions So we have some experience with the game We see how the persistence sticks and it's kind of neat and you guys will see that here We'll talk about that as we set it up We'll talk about that at the end of the stream uh, when we're like saving the game uh, and you guys will see that here and it's nice and quick um, and this game I guess we'll give our thoughts on it as we play it and kind of at the end we'll discuss a little bit about it uh our thoughts on it but you guys will get like by just watching us play through it, you guys will totally understand what is going on here especially those fans of the channel who watch us play story driven games like uh destinies comes to mind gives that kind of vibe of destinies uh where it's open world kind of doing what you, you know going around talking to things it's got that you know zelda breath of the wild open world like kind of side questy vibe to it you know wander around bumping into people on the road you know, doing side little missions, that kind of stuff. It's got like that kind of vibe to it. What other game comes to mind? I forget. There's another game we were thinking that it was like, oh, kind of, kind of. Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods, yeah. Sleeping yes. Gods, kind of, yeah. That sandbox, open world, kind of, you're discovering, like, you're thrown in the world, kind of like Sleeping God style. Or uh, the one game that I heard that somebody was comparing this to was like, uh, also similar to Sleeping Gods, same publisher and everything, designer, uh, near and far, like above and below, those kind of games. So it's like that kind of idea, like the, the open world, you kind of go and do whatever you want, wherever you want, and you're slowly unraveling as you play through session after session, discovering the world, and, it, and it's unveiling itself to you. And you'll get to know the people there, the regions and the characters and all that stuff. Uh, it's really cool. <clears throat> but welcome, welcome everyone in the live chat. Welcome, come on in. You know, grab a seat at Rob's Game Table. Check out this cool game we're going to play today. Come on in, come on in. Ask your questions in the chat, and we'll get into this and uh, talk about it. Um, but actually, first, before we get into it, we should look... Oh, Forgotten Waters. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. another one that I would say it's kind of similar to. We've not played Forgotten Waters, but I did look into that game, and I do want to play it on the channel at some point. But yeah, same kind of idea. Uh, so Jot's asking, all I want to know is if Rob is a gecko. How the heck did you know? 
<laughs> Does John install a camera in here or something? How did he know that? Oh man, this is creepy. It's that is creepy. It's hacked into our systems. Anyways, uh, let's go on and check out the uh, crowdfunding campaign over on GameFound. We'll take a quick look at it so we can give some info, especially those who are watching the stream later, kind of see what it's about. Um, and yeah, you might be watching this in a couple months. There might be late pledges and that kind of thing. But uh, right now, the campaign just launched today, just went live this morning. Uh, so we're going to take a look at how it's doing. Boom. All right, there's the game found again. Link is in the video description or pinned in the live chat uh, for those watching with us here. Um, so, so far it's got 488 backers, 28 days left. So it's going on for a while. So you have lots of time to make your decision. You can even wait the two hours or so until the stream's finished to even make your decision. I know some of you are like, you know, you have to back, be one of the first backers, but you, you can wait and get some more info. So we'll give you that today. Uh, so no rush, 28 days you have to make your decision. Uh, I really like GameFound with this this next stretch goal to unlock right at the top of the page. Yeah, I like that. Like, they, I love this system, the way they've, they, they're, they're slowly making this like a better version of Kickstarter for board gaming. I love it. Uh, a new sub. Cassie, thank you for subscribing. Okay. Oh, and I also saw the pop-up earlier. Successful Geek, thank you for being a member for two months now to Rob's Gaming Table by clicking the join button down below. Thank, thank you so much for your support. You. Yeah, I saw that pop right before we went live. Uh, thank you for that. All right. So, uh, it's one to four players. 100-ish minutes playtime. That's pretty accurate, I would say. For two-player, we're playing two-player. You can play this game co-op, or you can play a competitive. We're playing co-op today, as the image showed you when you clicked on the, the video. Uh, but there is a competitive mode. The rules are pretty much the same. There's just the difference in how you might treat the other players at the table and race them to the score versus you working together on the best score. And that changes kind of like your ending, I guess, uh, as you finish. We've not played competitive. No. I don't know if we will stream competitive, but you'll get the idea how it could be working competitive. We'll talk about the differences uh, later in the stream. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. We're going to show you the game, so I, I don't really want to get into it too much here. But I like uh, on the GameFound page here the changing maps. You can oh, see both I know. sides. That's I love spoiled that. It. I wanted to flip oh, it and show it on camera. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Damn it. No, we can sorry. show it up close. I it, like how it's doing that, though. Yeah, That's yeah. very cool. It, it's really cool. Like, really cool. I like that a lot. The switching from seasons, depending on what month. What month in the game you're playing? Yeah, I like that. Uh, Sorry. So there's one thing with this game that I know some people are going to see, and then they're going to go get their torches and their pitchforks and call up their app-driven board game-hating friends <laughs> and go march on over to Snowdale Design saying, stop putting an app in our game, you're ruining the industry, all this kind of stuff. You know, those losers that do that stuff. Uh, but this is not an app-driven game, okay? Uh, so we are going to be using an, a web app today, which is available in any modern browser. All it is replacing in the game is a giant campaign book. So we've played games on the channel like This War of Mine, uh, Madara, uh, Tainted Grail, all these big story games that have giant books you're flipping through, trying to find out what's going to happen next, and trying to figure out where you are in the story, getting paper cuts, dropping it, breaking your toe, that kind of stuff, because they're so huge, and they fumble around, and they take up a lot of space on the table. This game, instead of giving you the campaign book to play through and find out where you are and then, you know, roll some dice and now go to page 207, section A, and find out what's going on, it eliminates all that fumbliness. And you can use a tablet, a phone, a laptop, a computer, a TV, whatever you want. Cast your phone to a TV. If that's the way you use the campaign book in this game. So it's called the Adventure Book. It's digital. And the cool part, you guys know from this channel, I get super frustrated when I get a copy of a game and the campaign book is full of errata. It, it, there's, there's an FAQ I have to go read to find out that the section I'm in, I went to the wrong page because there was a typo or it broke the game. We saw this happen in Tainted Grail. They added stuff to FAQ because it was like we were finding things that were broken on our playthrough and just not knowing what to do next. Uh, the cool part about it being digital and on the web is if you are playing the game and you find out there's a typo or an issue, you don't have to get a new book or write in your book or put a post-it note or get frustrated, uh, burn your book in a fire, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can just, you know, Sammy will update the game on, you know, in the cloud and boom, it's now, you know, fixed and new things are added. So it can be constantly approved and evolved. And when you open it up and you go to play it, assuming you haven't cached it locally, you are always playing the latest and greatest version of the book. So I think it's really cool as people get in their hands and they find something's wrong or something's worded weird or there's a bad translation or something like that. Uh, they can fix it on the fly, which is like. I'm all for that, and I'd rather hold my phone in my hand or a tablet or be looking at a, you know, a, a Chromecast onto a TV or something 
rather than fumbling with a giant, you know, 300 page book or plus, you know, you guys know I've complained about that stuff in games. So just put the pitchforks away. Please do not get crazy that this is an app driven game. All it is, is putting all the text and hiding the choices from you using a web app. And you'll see it totally in the playthrough. You'll understand it'll just make sense. It's not deciding AI or, you know, trying to keep track of where monsters are and all that kind of stuff. It's not that detailed. It's just literally taking a book and putting it on the web, but a little more rich than a PDF. Like, you know, so anyways, um, yeah, lots of add-ons and stuff. There's a deluxe edition, so you can go choose your rewards here. Uh, so it's trying to, you know, get you to do the deluxe, but you can <clears throat> hit choose rewards and it'll bring them all up here. And Sammy really wants you to get the deluxe version, I see, since that's the featured, <laughs> the featured version, get all the nice goodies. Uh, and this is US dollars I have it showing as, but again, you can change the currency. So $154 for a deluxe version of, of a game and only $83, it looks like, for a, the base game, uh, US. And then obviously they're shipping, it's supposedly coming out in July, 2022. But again, it's crowdfunded. That could be earlier, that could be later. Who knows what is happening with the world next year? Who knows what kind of shipping delays happen? Factory strikes, port strikes, worldwide pandemics. <laughs> Who knows? It, that's the chance you're taking. So yeah, expect to add a few months to that, I would assume. But again, the game's pretty far along. So uh, pending any of those things, I would see that date probably not being an issue. Um, yeah, you can get sleeves, you can get a playmat. The playmat looks nice. Yeah, I know. <sighs> Man. <laughs> I like the way it comes it in this little bag nice, too. Yeah. Like, like usually they, they, they come just wrapped up in like some disposable, you know, package, but this one actually has a way to store it. I, I think that's neat. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it doesn't just come in a cardboard yeah, box. Yeah, that's a nice touch. Damn, that does look nice. Yeah. And the nice, the nice uh, labeling on it. Yeah, I do like playing, I do like playing on neoprene. Oh man. Yep. Uh, but anyways, uh, that's the game. So if you want to find information, link is in the chat or the video description. You guys can go read this, you know, after or while you're watching the stream to understand but we're gonna explain it to you. So you don't need to read about how the save mechanic works or how the game plays, you'll just see it, okay? Just wanna let you guys know that that's there. Uh, over on BGG, there's a page also. So the weight is supposedly a 2.0 out of five. Uh, but again, this is just- Only one person voted. I would assume this is just Sammy putting it in <laughs> or whatever, but uh, anyways, that's, that's their assumption, that's what it is. Obviously the people haven't really played it to put it in, but I would say that's about right. Yeah. That's a good estimate, yeah. I think. It's not too complex. Uh, which is nice. It's nice to get a campaign adventure game that you're not reading a 50 page rule book before playing. Sometimes, obviously, you know, you, you, you got to play those games too, but it's nice to break it up every now and then and play something that's not so, you know, brain burning and trying to remember rules and looking up things. And yeah, uh, you can just have fun and play it with some family members and stuff, some lighter gamers, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, supposedly best with two, but again, I've never played any other count, so I'll, I'll agree, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I just want to show you guys that the 60 to 150 minutes is a little different, but the weight. The weight is what I want to show you guys here on this. Uh, so yeah. Oh, that wasn't Sammy that voted for that. Oh, who was, did it then? Oh. Wasn't me. Wasn't us. Wasn't me, I swear. Yeah, it does sound about right. Not, I, I know, that, yeah. I, I feel it's like right. It's, yeah. Maybe it's not a 2.00. I think it's like a 2.03. Yeah, okay. probably a 2.02. Not a 2.02? No, no, oh, okay. definitely not okay. a 2.02. I'm thinking a 2.03, I would estimate, based okay. on what we've seen so far. But I could, you know, with some of the partner mechanics, it could be a 2.04. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm just kidding around. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> when it gets to the points like that, it's like, uh, what makes it a difference between a 2.04 and, you know, 2.10, whatever? I don't know. It's just funny. <laughs> you guys are funny. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so Successful Geek saying the web app that I was just talking about, you guys will see that. You can cache it offline. I, I, anyone who knows that's been that's been a thing, you know, since these mobile platforms came out, you can do it in like the Safari browser on an iOS tablet or whatever. You can save it to your home screen as like an offline web app and play it. Uh, it has those settings available. So you could, without internet, so you could take this game to a cottage that has like no internet, you know, in the middle of the woods, you know, which would make sense because this game is kind of like, you know, you're exploring you know, a valley and all that kind of stuff. And I think it would fit the theme. So go play in the woods uh, with no internet. Uh, you could take your tablet, make sure it's fully charged and you have a battery backup. Um, but yeah, you could cache the game while you're connected to the internet locally to your device and play it without an internet connection, which I think is cool. Just remember that if fixes and things happen, you know, make sure you download a new version as things change and whatever. That's the only thing. That's the only downside to caching 
things offline, but I think it auto will load if you have Wi-Fi. I think it'll grab the latest anyway, but but I'm not 100% sure. It's been a while since I messed with that stuff. <laughs> so, okay. Dan Roberts in chat's bringing up a, a perfect reminder. So uh, he's saying, did I step into an alternate universe where Rob is playing a game currently being crowdfunded? I am going in blindly to back this out of loyalty to Rob's gaming table. Oh. <laughs> One, you're crazy. Uh, two, love you, Dan. Um, but full disclosure, so that reminds me, full disclosure. So for this game, uh, Sammy reached out. He did send us a copy of Dawn of Peacemakers in the past. We played through that on the channel. We loved it. Yes. So Sammy reached out and said he's working on this game. Uh, Lands of Galzir. It's coming to crowdfunding in you know a few months or whatever it was at the time. And you guys know I'm picky with my Kickstarter and crowdfunding, game found, whatever platform they're on. I don't really want to play games that are very far from the final product. I don't like playing like, you know, a lot of placeholder art in games or the rules are on, you know, two pages of white paper stapled together. I'm not really a fan of playing like unfinished games like that. But Sammy told me, they showed me, I, I saw it on one of his playthroughs, a previous prototype, and then he explained he was printing it at a, uh, a the, the real production uh, factory where the, the final copies are going to be printed at. And from seeing the final version of Dawn of Peacemakers, and the quality of that, you guys saw me, my, I was blown away by it. it. Like, it feels like it's printed at the same place FFG prints their games. I swear, the cards feel the same, the tokens, the dials, all that stuff. I've used that stuff before in, in many other FFG board games. And I don't, I, I, don't know, I don't think Sammy's ever confirmed that, but that's my feeling. <laughs> it's like that quality of like an FFG board game, which you guys know FFG is like pretty high standards with board game card stock and quality and components and plastics and... You know, maybe their minis aren't top quality. No minis in this game. No minis in this game. But uh, yeah, it's very nice. So the fact he was willing to present one with art on it, a good looking prototype. I liked on a Peacemaker so much. I looked into this game. It looks right up our alley. So I said, yep, send on a copy. We'll play it on the channel. I'll take a look at it for sure. But I don't normally do that. So, you know, just letting you guys know, like I was interested in it for sure based on the type of game it is. We play app driven games, or we play games, sorry. We play games with apps. We play story driven games. We play campaign games on the channel. And I like the little world in Dawn of Peacemakers and that was a really fun game too. So mm -hmm. I'm willing to give it a shot. So just so you know, we don't normally do Kickstarter previews or game found previews or crowdfunding previews on the channel. Uh, I'm very picky and choosy with that stuff. So read, read into that however you want, but just letting you know, we weren't paid to do this. We just got the copy of the prototype for free, but everything I say is my own opinion, Mel's own opinion. You know, sorry, Sammy, if we offend you on things, but we're not, we're not afraid to like, you know, tell you if something is like not great. And the cool part, it's not finished. So, I mean, if, you know, we cry loud enough, maybe we can change something in the game. Who knows if it needs to be better? I don't know. But anyways, just letting you guys know, I just want to be fully transparent with you. That's the situation of this game with us. I think too, when we flip to the table and you see the game on the table, it doesn't look like a prototype. It's not. It lo it's a game. It's just an unfinished game, yeah. basically, yeah. is what we're playing, which yeah. is so cool. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see. <laughs> Bob asks, does it have to be a cottage or would a log cabin or tent suffice? That would suffice. I'm not sure if the tent has the space on the floor. It depends on the <laughs> size of the tent, Bob, but you technically could play this in a tent. It just has to be one of those bigger tents. It depends on your player count too, but yeah. a tent might work. It depends how level the ground is too. Um, Cause you know, you roll your dice and then they go down a hill. That's not a good idea. You probably put your tent in the wrong place. Um, but that's, that's my feedback on that. <laughs> Dan says, Sammy, Rob may offend you, but it maybe it would be impossible for Mel to offend you, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said anything offensive. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> a cruise, a cruise would work. Yeah, a, a cruise, cruise would work. Hundred percent, yes. a cruise would work. Yes, and most cruises, I'm sure, have Wi-Fi of some sort for most of the cruise probably nowadays. But <laughs> uh, you guys are funny. Okay, <laughs> all right, let's get down to the table and let's start discussing this game. Uh, so. Uh, we have it reset here. Uh, you see the board here. I just want to, before we start putting stuff on the board, I did want to show you guys. Sorry, I spoiled that. I had no idea. Well, we that might was the be plan. playing on the other side because because our first month is going to be random on a D12. So we could be playing in December. Uh, what am I doing? I'm, I'm closing it now. Uh, I just don't want to wreck it. I don't want to ruin the board. But it's like a fall slash winter ish kind of board on the back. And and there's spots where cards go on the board and they can be flipped to show the winter or the summer-ish side or whatever. 
Um, but I love it. I love the art. This reminds me of like the scythe board. A anyone who knows, I, I don't know why it's not zooming, but we're focusing. Come on, what are you doing? Focus. Here, let me try something. Here, wake up. Wake. Oh, what happened? Sorry, guys. One sec. One sec. Let me flip. I bumped something, and the autofocus changed. Successful Geek is saying, shouldn't you play real time? You could. Right? Each month, play the next month. Yeah, you, you could. could. 100%. Yeah. Which reminds me of like the Hexplorit stuff, right? Where in Hexplorit, you scan those codes on those living cards. Yep. And depending on the month you're playing. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I just need to reboot the camera. I don't know what happened there. All right. So let's go back to the table. Well, that should focus. There we there go. We go. Yeah. I don't know what happened there, but. Uh, all right, so yeah, so look at the art, really cool, lots of detail. I don't know if this is final art. I did see a prototype in a playthrough before that did not look as cool as this. But uh, yeah, it's really neat. And you'll see once we put the cards on top. So we'll just throw this on the table for now, uh, and then we'll find out. So, uh, I mean, prototype come with a full rule book. Like, it's obviously in progress. They're changing it and adding to it. This rule book can be found online. Uh, I did find the PDF. It's on uh, the Snowdale Design website. I don't think I linked it below, but maybe I did. Um, but you guys can take a look at the rules so far and see what's involved to know what's going on. But again, you can watch today and you'll see. Um, it's similar to Seventh Continent, and we'll be playing through cards. Uh, so it's kind of like that idea of, of finding cards and items and quests and stuff um, in a, a library uh, index card holder. Uh, so the game comes with multiple trays of cards, and that is like a, a fraction of the cards. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Sam said uh, there'll be 480 cards in the final game. Oh my god. So it has enough room, and I'm assuming, Sammy, this, uh, the reason why there's extra trays, like I know I should be using two trays, it says that in the rules, but because we're not sleeving, and because the game's not complete, we can fit everything in one tray. So we have our like save slots back here, and then we have our quest slot up here, but it comes with these little cardboard dividers, uh, which are cool. This is not paper stock, this is actual cardboard, uh, so it's like nice and sturdy. And you can organize the cards in there, and the cards are beautiful. Uh, I mean, not spoil stuff, I guess. Uh, yeah, the cards are nice quality. You know, the prototype has art on them and everything. But it's like the standard, if you played any uh, Snowdale Design stuff, it's like the same quality. Okay. It's, uh... Anyways, so we're just going to play from one tray today. But obviously, if you sleeve, uh, I'm assuming there's room. Uh, to put all the cards, like there's a second tray you should have at the table, and that's going to have your your uh, save slot stuff in it, and obviously it'll grow and shrink, and this will grow and shrink based on what's happening in the game and be persistent. Um, and then it's got a little tray for your components to go in. So there are four characters in the game, and we're not playing with these two, but as you can see here on these player boards, it's really neat. You have your character, you have some traits they have, which are called tags. Uh, you have your gold is counted on a dial. Okay, so you can keep track of your player's gold, and it's supposed to stay the same. So if somehow I ended at a playthrough with 18 gold in this Northern Banded Newt, uh, I'm going to say names wrong the whole stream, by the way. Caradai? Uh, Caradai? Caradai? Um, he, if he had 18 gold in the last playthrough, it stays that way. So the start of the next play session with, your, you know, a different player could be playing them, the same player, uh, they're going to stay at 18 gold, and it stays persistent between playthroughs, which is neat. And then this tells you when you're saving the game, you, you get this certain card. And then you have your skills here. This little skill wheel uh, tells you how, what skill dice you'll be rolling in the game and how good you are at like thievery, might, survival, uh, intelligence, I think, communication and perception. Uh, and it can change. And I just want to show you this little component. I've never seen this in a game before. I don't know if it's like a brand new kind of thing. We've seen similar kind of stuff. But um, yeah, you just pull out the peg and you're like, okay, I want to change to... You know, in the playthrough, let's say he became more of a thief. And, uh, you know, you can you can adapt it based on choices in the game. You might get a chance to move these around. And you can, you always have four, um, four tabs, but you could go up to, like, level two in something, or zero or one. Um, and once you change it in a playthrough, let's say he changed a few stats, the next time you pull out the game, because it's persistent, that's what his stats are. And, and it constantly changes, which is really cool. And you guys will see it. I'm sure we'll have a chance to change our stats in this one. 
but they do have original stats that these are their starting stats. Obviously, 10 gold is the uh, what it should be at there, but we're not playing with these guys, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then you're storing three cards at the bottom for their inventory. So this is like your little player board. We're not playing with these two characters, um, but just letting you guys know there's four characters in the game. And of course, they all come with their cute little meeple. Like, how can I, you know, come on. Come on, man. How can you not say that's not adorable? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> So those guys we aren't playing with, but they come with little wooden meeples, a little custom design on the side, which is cool. So no, you don't have to paint minis. Not that that's a bad thing, if you have a wife that paints for you. <laughs> but, uh, alright, so just letting you guys know that's not in the game today, not in the playthrough, uh, but I'm playing more, who ha has this little gecko. Or actually, sorry. More specifically, he is a frilled lizard named Moore. Who has the tags Boaster and Unfold? It's gonna start at 10 gold, which you see there. And here's the stats. Got a li they got what level one in might, level one in intelligence, and level two in communication. Okay, I guess with the, the little uh his little flaps there, he's good at getting the information out. But yeah, I love the meeples too. Yeah, they're Tom, so Tom's cute. Tom in the chat, love the meeples. I know yeah. me too. I, I think it's such a nice touch. Um okay. So we showed you the board. Uh, let's go through setup. So I want to, I, I, we could have set up the game and, and been ready to play, but I, I kind of want to show you guys uh, some things here. This came with the game. This little welcome to Galzir, the land of adventure and excitement. Don't worry, you don't have to listen to me read this or anything, but I just want to show you guys. This is really cool, but it's like a little travel document kind of thing, like a little flyer. You know, come visit Galzir, and it kind of like tells you about each region. Um, and there's the guy that wrote it. There's a little, little guy that uh, made it, but I just thought it was a nice little touch Kind of get you in the theme um, And you'll learn about most of the land and what's going on through the storybook or the adventure book the online app and through the cards um, But mostly through the book And what else did I want to say? I think that's it for that. But yeah, let's go through setup. Oh, there's a welcome letter That's what I want to talk about. So there's a welcome letter that starts you off you put together the components You know one of those here's Here's how to set up your cards, you know, put your dividers in, all that stuff is told there. But also, if you want to learn about the adventures and the world of animal folks that's used in all of uh, Snowdale Design's games so far, I believe. Uh, and then we can meet the adventurers. So, my adventurer is more. He's a bolsterous, frilled lizard who loves nothing more than a good story. Sociable to a fault, he lives for the vicarious thrills of hearing a great tale and talks others' ears off in turn. But he has never forgotten where his passion originates from, and he has journeyed to Galzir to find the very source. Okay, Mel, who, who are you playing today? I am p playing, now I'm not exactly, we're not exactly sure how to yep, pronounce but this, I, but we're I don't want to try to pronounce we're it. We're trying, so I think, oops, I just messed it. We think it's Azala. I don't know, Sammy, you can tell us if we're correct or not. Uh, so it's the River Kingfisher, uh, Streetwise and uh, Flight, uh, starting with 10 gold. What's her skills at? What she, she start oh, off with uh, when, in the original playthrough of the game, which will obviously change <laughs> as we go through. But we're gonna start with the pink one is one uh, thievery, the yellow is one in survival, and two blue, uh, purple in perception. So, all right. So far, I like I, that. I, I would say it's Izala. Izala. Izala is how I would say it. Izala? I'm probably wrong. Izala. Izala. So see, I just played more, so I, I, might, I might not even be saying that right, but uh, I just figured it'd be easier. <laughs> yeah, you got the easiest one. But again, I'll be reading Azala's name out of the book. You can pronounce it exactly oh, how you want. So I was wrong. It's official. So, <laughs> so it's official. We got permission by the designer to say the names however we want, so I don't want to hear any complaints in the yeah. live chat. None whatsoever, okay? <laughs> no corrections. No corrections. <laughs> Brian S., get out. I see your correction there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's a sala with a question mark. A sala. Yeah, that's how I would say it too. Okay, a sala. Mother cool. Uh, where do uh, Sammy? Where do the names like? I know we were having trouble too with the names and stuff in uh, Dawn of the Peacemakers. Uh, where where do the names come from? Is it like an an African kind of background or something like that? Or like I'm just curious, like where where are these names? What descent do these names come from? What region like inspired these names? I, I'm curious. If you know. Because there's also names on some of these cards that we're going to pronounce oh, incorrectly 100%. Yeah, we're going to butcher all over the place. But we'll do our best. But the names definitely aren't like, you know, Bob and Sam and, you know, Brian and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, they're not. We're going to have trouble with them. <laughs> <laughs> Rob is wanting more. <laughs> Anyways, 
Okay, okay. do you want me to read this? Uh, yeah, sure. Let us know about Aesala. Aesala is a resourceful kingfisher whose abilities and keen instincts led her into, into and out of quite some trouble in the streets of her hometown. Growing up as an orphan, she learned to rely and trust only on herself. That is, until a stranger showed her a way out and offered her a new start in Galzir. Nice. So Galzir is, uh, it, for those who know the Dale of Merchants and the, and the land, uh, Dawn of the Peacemaker story, uh, it's based, uh, I think it's like a Polecats are, are the main, the main faction, main, like, uh, the main people here. I'm pretty sure is what I read before. I read this thing, like, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yes, Galzir is inhabited primarily by Polecats, whose various species account for approximately one-third of the total population. It is a diverse land, however, and one can encounter all manners of folks hailing from all over the world while traversing this region. For the past centuries, Galzir has seen a great deal of conflict following the uh, succession of three cities, Rheinstum, which is this area, Hezembi, if I'm saying that right, is this area, and Arin, which is down here. So you can see they're like walled off little regions on the map, um, except for this one. It's kind of like its own little island. Uh, let's see here. From the kingdom of Jemsed, many fierce wars have been fought between the new city-states and their former motherland. The tensions are high to this day, and Sarwar uh, remaining the stronghold of Jemsed influence in the region. The polecats give the region an air of wild unpredictability, which is best seen in the aforementioned cities and other major settlements. They are in a constant flux, and just about anything could happen while simply strolling the streets. A certain duck once had to recover his glasses from inside a museum display after witnessing a toad's magician a toad magician's surprise street performance all in all there are a great many things to see and experience in the exciting mysterious and beautiful land so step forth forth with haste galzir awaits there you go set the tone set the tone we'll throw that stuff away actually i'll just keep the rule book nearby in case but we have a digital one uh okay so let's set up here. So we need to place the card trays. They've been done, so we did some of it. Uh, each player chooses an adventure. We did that already. I'm just going through the setup steps so you guys can see. More, more, more. Do your wish, huh? <laughs> Moar. I know, he Mo has the easiest one. <laughs> <laughs> so Sammy's saying, it depends which region the person is from. So many have different backgrounds and inspirations behind them. That is That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it definitely feels like a, for us, like we're in Canada. It definitely feels like an exotic, kind of like an exotic world with exotic names. Obviously, like, you know, you have lizards and parrots and bears and birds and all this that are the, like, people. Uh, but it's really cool when they, when they act like people. Like, you know, you got ones that are, like, criminals. You got ones that are royalty and all this stuff. It's, it's really cool. Uh, it's definitely different. It's definitely, definitely different. It's not the normal fantasy world you see us play or the sci-fi world you see us play. It's its own, it's its own beast. Uh, take all the cards from the global save slot. So there's a save slot that would be back here where uh, this little global save slot, there are cards there already, even on the first setup of the game, it's part of the welcome letter. So we take these cards out and we're gonna set them up. So those are where the cards would be when you save the game. You put a whole bunch of cards back there, super easy, clean up in the save system, you'll see it at the end. Uh, but literally when you start a playthrough, so if it's you know your first playthrough or your 10th playthrough, whatever, uh, you just grab what's in the save slot and it will kind of like, you know, roll itself out and set itself up as a, a whole new, you know, play session that's persistent and was affected by the previous playthroughs, uh, which is neat. So, uh, take all the cards from the global save slot, sort them by card type, Mel, if you can. They will be set up in the following steps. So, you can probably flip them over and, yeah. and see uh, the backs oh. on most of them. Yeah, so just pile them by, by type off, off the board just in case we have to flip it or something which we probably will, we'll see. Uh, if there are two or more players, choose whether you want to play competitively or cooperatively. So there's those two cards. So Mel can show them here. So depending if you're playing competitively or cooperatively, you use a different card that leads to a different story entry based on at the end of the game or how the game works. Uh, there was a modification to the scoring, uh, we were told. Uh, Harmony is us. This is the one where we're playing co yeah. cooperatively. Yeah. So, Originally, when this was printed, uh, we're playing two-player. It would be basically 10 rounds of the game or 10 days. Uh, but that is now seven, I believe, right? Uh, it got changed, so it's seven now. So we're going to ignore that number on there. Um, but it's going to have a little timer token on here, so we'll know when the game ends, which is kind of neat, and you'll see that in a second. So we're playing with that card. 
but we are not playing with this card. This is what you would use instead if you're playing competitively. And then it's a whole different game ends, victory party, they read this. So if you're playing solo or co-op, you return this card to the global save slot. So every time you play, so my understanding, if I'm not wrong, is we could play co-op today, and then we can get together and have like a third player, or maybe Mel doesn't show up, and we have another player show up, or I could play it solo and pick a character. I could pick any character in the box, no matter how far they are progressed. And I could sit down and play another session in the changing world. Obviously, it's better if you play with the same players and you're seeing the story unfold and you're getting to know the board and who's playing with what character. Obviously, I think that's the best way to play this game. But it doesn't seem like there's anything stopping you from, you know, I could play with my daughter in another playthrough. Mel's, you know, gone somewhere and then my daughter can play a different character or the same character. Or we can switch characters and we could decide we want to play competitive. And we could just play a session as competitive. And then we save it up. And then the next time we play, we decide, you know, Mel's back and we're playing with our daughter, and it's three-player this time, and we can play cooperative. I, I believe that's all possible with this game, uh, from my understanding, because the rules are the same, except for that, like, ending and how you'll kind of play your character and stuff, but all the other rules are the same, whether you're playing co-op or competitive, which is kind of neat. So you don't have to learn, like, a separate variant book or something like that. Yep, so, so Snowdale Design saying, yep, I designed it that way, and it's really easy to get to the game onto the table. Yeah. That's the best, exactly. Yeah, getting this game set up and, and playing another session, once you do that first, like, setup of sorting the cards, yeah, it just makes sense. Like, it's just easy to save it and easy to set it up. It's kind of neat. And you'll see that here. Obviously, please do not judge the length of a play session based on the stream. Obviously, we're going to talk about the game. We're presenting the game, like a demo of the game, you know? So we're not just having our heads down, playing the game really quickly to see how long a play session is. This is obviously going to be a longer play session than you normally would have because we're going to be explaining everything. So I just want to get that out of the way. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk it through here. But normally, yeah, to set this game up, like Mel and I on our second playthrough, we're like, we set it up in like three minutes and we're playing. It mm -hmm. was like so fast. And then to clean it up, to like move it down here for the stream, we reset the game. But even that only took like five minutes. Not, yeah, it was very quick. To fully reset the game back to like day one, which was neat. Yeah. I, I was like, okay, that wasn't too hard. Not like when I play Seventh Continent and I've finished a nine hour session and I literally sit there for 45 minutes trying to put all the cards away and figure out where everything goes. Uh, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but yeah, I, I don't look forward to ending a long session of Seventh Continent. This game, there's no, no dread. And it does have true solo. Yes, there is yeah. true solo. You do control this one adventurer. Janet was asking that question. Yes, so that's yes, perfect. yes. Perfect, perfect. Getting the answers in the chat. Awesome. Okay. Um... All right, so if there's two more players, cooperative stuff, the global status card is that card, yes. uh, is one of these. Yep. So this means it's a global status card. It's affecting the entire table, all the players, the whole game, that's a global status card. Then there's status cards that could affect just the player, and there's status cards that could affect just the location. But this is a global status card. We'll just leave that there for now. No, nope. just... no, nope, not okay. yet. Okay. That's a step later, Mel. <laughs> no, no. I was just gonna get Stop it ready. jumping ahead. Sorry. No. We're on step two. Okay. Not step eight. Stop. You're right. All right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, read the cards now as they may affect setup. Okay. Timer tokens of any cards timed effects will be placed in step eight. Yes. Oh, you don't, sorry. It tells you right there, Mel. It tells Stop me right it. there. Stop it. <laughs> I know you want it, but don't. All right. Place the game board in the middle of the playing area, oh. showing either the summer or winter side according to the month on the global status card. We did that. We did that early. We shouldn't have placed the board yet. No, but I think... Uh, <laughs> that was the one that we Yeah, because on. part of the setup, uh, uh, even the first setup on the welcome letter is roll the D12 and you get a month. So we can just roll one right now. It's fine. Just put this back in or I hold it for now. We might roll an eight. And then here, you just roll a die and we find out what, what month we're starting in. Five. Five. Okay. So grab card number five. Put that back in. So you wouldn't normally do this as part of setup. This would have been done at the end of the last session or if you're setting up the game for the first time when you're putting together the player boards and stuff. Um, but we rolled, last night we were, we were resetting the game, we rolled August, so we put that in as our starting one. And it's the same. Yeah, we're, we're on the same side of the board, yeah. Yeah. So either way, it says, here's the global status card. Whoops. Whoop. Global status card, so in this session, we're in May. So in the next session, I'm assuming will be in June. Uh, nature is in full bloom in all of its colorful grandeur, use the summer side of both the game board and the location cards. And then this, this means when you're saving the game at the end, you replace this card with number six, which I'm assuming is June. So every time you play, it's slowly advancing. The seasons are changing. It's kind of neat. Uh, so that is, oh, global status, yep. that'll go here. So obviously we're on the wrong side of the board. 
I mean, we could cheat and say we're in a winter month, but either way, it's fine. We can just show this office, okay. I just want to show you guys, it's like kind of a random start to it, and then you just play through. And as you play sessions, it just keeps going through the months. And then we have our little calendar down here that'll show how many days we're playing for. Uh, so we're playing for seven days, so we're going to have a random day set up in a sec here. Uh, shuffle the event cards, it says. Okay, so these are our event cards. I will shuffle them. And you'll see how those will work. We'll do that throughout the playthrough. You'll see how the event cards kind of find different events for you on the play. And those remind me kind of like Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. You know, you're on a street and you draw a card and it depends what type of street you're on. You will deal with a specific uh, entry on the card. In these, here, I'll just draw one. In these event cards, uh, depending on what's happening, you start reading from top to bottom. So if it's Wednesday, for example, the, the player whose turn it is will do this quest. Or if they're on a settlement or grassland or forest, you just keep reading down until you find the first one, and then you do that. So uh, it doesn't matter. We're not going to know I what know. it is. So it didn't matter if I put that on the top or whatever. But And that deck is persistent also. So that deck, based on uh, things you see and experience, it will remove cards from there and add new cards to it as, as the world changes, which is awesome. All right. So quest cards. We're going to place the quest cards public side face up. So those have been shuffled already. Just draw the first three. This is going to be the um, notice board. So quests are the main way you get, um, uh, what is it called? We're trying to get... Prestige. 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 We have a prestige track up here. We're both going to start on zero. And at the end, we'll find out how our prestige did and what kind of ending we'll get or whatever in this session. Um, but you try to earn pre prestige by doing things in the game. Like you could get prestige on an event, an encounter on the road. You meet someone, you help them. You know, you give them some money, you pay for something, you fight somebody, whatever. You could get some prestige and move up. So in a competitive game, you're competing to who gets the first prestige, uh, uh, who gets to the, the goal first, and that kind of ends the game, and they get like, you know, whoever won kind of reads something, that kind of idea. I'm assuming. I've never done the competitive, like I said. But the cooperative, we're just working together, each gaining our own prestige, but I think it adds together as a party at the end, right? So we're just, uh, just going to track our prestige separately, but we'll find out how well we do. So we do kind of want to work together, and we could help each other on certain quests and things, which is really cool. So. We get these random uh, quest cards, and I'll quickly just flip one over to show you, a little spoilery, but uh, for us even playing. So there's like, for example, the Runaway Prince. So this is the public side, this is the private side. So we shouldn't know this unless you take the quest to your hand. But again, we're playing co-op, so I don't think you need to keep things private like that. But you can in cooperative, or in competitive, you might not want somebody to know which quest you're working on, so they don't, you know, go somewhere and do something. I don't, I'm not sure, but anyways. Uh, on the back is the public side. We have Arin here. So what we're going to do is put a quest token on Arin. Oh, actually, you put the locations out. I was going to say, yeah, I can put Yeah, those that was already, yeah. yeah oh, sorry. that was already on there? Did, yeah, I wasn't paying No, attention. that's okay. So Mel's going to put the locations out. There's just little numbers at oh, the bottom. Oh, that's the wrong side. Oh. It needs to be the summer side. So it'll be more green and also the blue, uh, oh, red in the bottom. Oh, I see. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, so there's a little number in the bottom that tells you where... You're going to place them. So those are all places. Show one up again. Uh, each, each, each location could have one or multiple cards, or some of the locations are just little spots on the path, but you, they have places to visit. So in this one, you could visit the market on your turn, or you could visit the hot springs, for example, in that place. So some of those places you might be going to for quests also, uh, but they're their own little interaction. So the game's pretty simple on a turn. You're moving, and then you're, you're doing a scene. So you could pick one of these to do, you could pick a quest in your hand, you could have an ongoing quest you're working on that you're, you're following a branching story, or a, like a story path to complete. Um, so Mel's just putting all the cards out by number, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So for example, Reinstum here is made of three cards, but when you go to Reinstum, you have access to all of them, that's just one location. Uh, but for example, uh, Teshun here is only one card. So you see as the seasons change, if we were playing on the other side of the board, we'd be playing a different card with different, you know, things happening there, which is neat. Uh, so this first one in RN that we put in, this is uh, public. So you have to go to RN to pick up this quest and get it into your hand. And then you try to follow the quest on the back and progress on it, and it might change to different cards and stuff. Uh, as an, imp an important person of Gemsed is missing, a job for a highly discreet and trustworthy individual is offered from the Royal Bodyguard. Okay, so we'll put that there. And this is like the notice board. So you have to go here to get that quest, and you can take it to your hand if you want. You can only ever have three quests in hand, so you can discard ones if you ever draw four or more, and you can always dump some of them as you're playing if you don't want to 
progress them anymore. And when you dump them, uh, it tells you at the bottom when you're discarding them what to do with them. So this one would go back to the notice board. But sometimes if you're like on stage three of a specific quest line, it'll tell you to put the card back in the library, grab this one, do this with that. It'll have instructions, which is super neat to keep the persistent world going. Uh, the next one, Mel, will be in Chabar, if I'm saying that right. So that's up here. So there's a quest token to remind us there's one on the notice board in Chabar. An inquisitive but inconspicuous person needed. Contact the sawmill headquarters for more information. So you can kind of read that little description and go, hmm, what stats would I kind of need? Or what abilities, what items would I kind of need to go do those things that might help? I would assume you can deduce some of that stuff from that. And then we have in Tashun. You want to throw a Tashun right here? This one says a chance to earn money for an apt individual with nerves of steel. Oh, and folks with bad manners don't bother. Uh, Ar Araltai the Grey Marmot. Again, I'm not saying that right, I'm sure, but all good. So that's the notice board. This is publicly available, but you have to go to these places to get those quests. And you can like, like I said, you can dump quests when you get new ones, things might happen. And maybe you just don't want to work on certain quests and you're just holding them. But I can see the fun and competitive mode where you're like, Ooh. Racing for a quest? Yeah, like, I want that quest, I'm near there, I'm gonna get there. And then the other player goes and grabs it before you do, and then, like, they change up, and, you know, they're working on one that you think might have been for you, and... <laughs> uh, but you can partner up, even in the competitive mode, you can help each other out, and both players will get rewards, but, you know, you have to decide, like, what you're helping them with, and what items you'll use, and that kind of stuff, it's really neat. But in co-op, we're pretty much just like, let's just help each other if we're on a specific location. For example, this one right here, you're able to do with a partner. A single player could help you with this quest. So they have to be at the location on your turn. You're the active player, you're doing everything, but you have access to use their dice, their items, if they're letting you, uh, even in com competitive. Uh, but they will have to give you permission to each individual, you know, if they're gonna lend you three gold for it or whatever. But if you do succeed or get some cool reward at the end, they usually will get that reward too, or some of it or something out of it, right? Uh, which is cool. Uh, all right, so. Quest cards we talked about, you'll see those more as we play through. We place the quest tokens. Uh, then, we got all the bits. So these game trays don't come with the game. These little blue game trays, they're from game trays. Uh, I don't know, there might be a link down below if you guys are interested and want to check those out. Um, but yeah, they don't come with the game, we're just using those. We use them on all of our playthroughs you guys have seen recently. So just letting you know, these little trays don't come with the game. Everything else you see, except for this dice tray. <laughs> this dice tray doesn't come with the game. But there is one in the game found uh, that's specific if you want to get. Um, all right. So we're putting each player's prestige on the zero. There is a 10 on the other side. In case you go over 10 prestige, you just flip it and keep going on the track. Uh, I don't think that will happen. I haven't seen it yet, but maybe as we get better at the game, uh, it might happen. All right. So now saying open the book of adventures and randomize the starting day. So let's do that. So here's a book of adventures. This is just a web app, just on a website. It's in a web browser. Again, you can download it as a local offline web app or whatever, um, but we're gonna click start a new game. But you do need this to play the game. So you do need some kind of digital device nearby, just FYI. But it is not, like I said, it's just basically putting a book online that has a little bit of you know, smarts to hide things from you and present choices to you without having to fumble through a 300 or 400 page book or whatever. Uh, so select the month shown in the current status card and we'll randomize the starting day for you. Okay, so it has some randomization to it. Oh no. Oh no, we don't have to roll the die to find the starting <laughs> That's day. That's good. It's taking over. It's gonna no, do it for saying. us. All right, so we're in May? We are. Uh, so you see on the left, okay, so it's Friday. So on the board there, uh, you will put the day little token. A little tracker. That little tracker will be counted on the board so you so can see that. that on Friday. So we start on Friday. So now, if I go to the rules, it says now for each timed effect, this is the step eight where you're gonna put, so for example, this is how timers work in the game. So this, this is telling you it needs a timer token, then you find a matching token. So there's all these little matching tokens, there's a ton of them, you find two that match. So I have two that match here, two frogs. So you're gonna put it, uh, we, it's seven days is when the game ends. So this is the end game condition, is you're putting it seven days in the future. And then you take this little other token, we put it on the card. So the cool part is you don't have to remember, you can just play the game 
And if you have like, if you're poisoned or things like that or frozen or whatever, like bad status effects that we've seen in like uh, Seventh Continent style, they get a timer on them. Or if you have an ally join you, a companion, they might only join you for a couple days and then they might get bored and leave unless you do something to keep them. Uh, so they will have timer tokens on them. And it's really cool, you don't have to remember, you just move as each round goes, you move along, and when you hit a space with timer tokens on it, and there could be one, there could be none, there could be many, you just resolve them in order uh, and do what the cards say. So if for this end game one, we'll just know, oh, look for the card on the table with the little frog face on it. Okay, it's, or a turtle, I guess it's a turtle. Oh. And, then, and then you go and uh, you just, oh, there's the card, and you just do what it says. Love it, love it. <laughs> Amy says 99% funded. Woohoo! Oh, no. That's awesome. Almost there. But it's not 100. It's almost there. So we're, what are we celebrating? We're going to hit 100 <laughs> during the stream. Probably. Again, I get nothing out of that. I'm just showing you a cool game. FYI. Not being paid. <laughs> it's all good. Let me refresh. Oh, yeah. 99. 99. Oh, man. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. That's awesome. Uh, so. Uh, that is how we track timed effects on cards. Which I love. I think it's this so idea. clever. So you don't clever. have to remember anything. Just yep. when it hits the marker, you just look around and see what effects you have to look at. Yep. Love it. Like, it, it's so new, like, like new player friendly. It takes the load off of you while you're playing. You know, how many time games we play where we're, like, staring at 10 cards in front of us trying to find out what effects trigger and, you know, did I forget this? And, oh, no, we forgot to do this last turn. It's, like, right there. It's, like, so obvious it's going to happen. We saw that in um, the other game that did that was uh, what was that MOBA game? Um, Sky Tear. Sky Tear oh, did, that. did that too. Yeah, when oh, a hero oh. got defeated, they got, they went oh, and put on the yes, track, yes. and yeah. and then they come back and play as the token gets to them on the round. I, yeah, I love stuff right, like that, right. where you just don't have to remember, like you know, do this three turns from now or three rounds from now. It's just gonna you're gonna see it happen. It's super cool. <laughs> oh, Janet was back at five thirty four. And hello, Mark B. Welcome, hello. welcome. <laughs> guys That's are funny. awesome. All right. Uh, so we did that. Multiple tokens. Okay. And each player takes the adventure board. We got our amount of gold already is 10. Mm -hmm. uh, place your item cards. We don't have any item cards to start, but um, we should have. I think we have to get our oh, cards from yeah, our, yeah, our save section, slot. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I might have skipped that part or I haven't read it yet. But anyways, each character has their own little save slot. Uh, so we are going to get these cards to start. So each character has a 0, 0, 0 card that is a once per play session effect. So if you don't use it, it goes back to your save slot at the end of the game and you get it again next time you play. Or you choose when you want to pop it off and, and, and get the ability. Uh, so this guy has risky intuition for more. And... Uh, so on a perception or a communication skill check, I may discard this as a one-time use. But when it gets discarded, uh, I'm, I guess you would just, yeah. I think there's in the save, it tells you where to put it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think like the flow, when, so you discard when we played, it. I, I just kind of put it to the side, yeah. and then at the end of the game. get it back later. Yeah. So yeah, it's a one-time effect, so we'll just keep that. We may remember to use it. I may forget it's there. I do that. So we got our little once-per-play ability. Okay, and then I have this. So they each have their starting quest. And our plan is in today's playthrough to not spoil too much with the quest. So we might do like, you know, our starting quest a little bit, just so you guys get an idea. But it has multiple parts and it will keep going on. So I don't want to fully spoil a character's starting quest, but it is specific to them. Uh, and it's really neat. So you get to kind of know the character, they make some choices, it shapes them a bit. Um, but we'll just do a little bit here. This is mandatory, so we have to do this part. So this is a mandatory quest to start your adventure. So anytime it has a lightning bolt, we have to do it. So even if I was holding multiple quests in hand, any that have a lightning bolt, I have to do one of them on my turn, mandatory. So obviously we're going to start our starter quests because they're there. But on the future playthroughs, if you already progressed it a little bit or completely, the players aren't going to start with this. They'll have their own quest they got last time and that kind of whatever they're working on and that kind of thing, uh, which is really neat. Okay. Also, it is now fully funded. 100%. Well, that took a long time. <laughs> That's amazing. Congratulations. That, that 99 to 100 took forever. Holy. <laughs> but anyways, congratulations, yes. Sammy from Stonedale Design. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Brian S. <laughs> was backer 544. That's cool. 
Now it's cool to happen during a live stream, like Dan's saying. Yeah. Like, you know, it doesn't always doesn't always happen, right? You just, yeah. You just get an update in your email, like it funded, yay! That's kind of cool to happen during during a live stream. Yeah. Congratulations. Congrats, That's amazing. Yes. Congrats. 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 Oh yeah, it shows the time. That's cool. So his goal reached on the right there in four hours and fifty six minutes. Again, the time that it launched was 8 a.m. our time, I believe, which is like, yeah, we, I wanted to stream when it launched, but it launched at 8 in the morning. 8 a.m. is before my wake-up time. So, yeah, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it's That's still amazing, fine. Though. It's still fine. Uh, but, yeah, 100% funded. Congrats. That's awesome. There you yes. go. Okay, so uh, next for setup, uh, the player who has most recently completed a task given by another person receives the starting player token. Well, I give you the task of putting location cards on the board. So your first player. And this is the first player token. I just realized that it was different colors. It says starting player. Your turn starts a new day. So a little reminder there. It's just a little cardboard token. I'm assuming since it's a crowdfunding campaign, there's probably a way to get a deluxified version of all the things you see here. But I could be wrong. But anyways. Um, alternatively, you can randomize this in any way you see fit. Beginning with the starting player going clockwise, each player places their adventure figure on the game board on a location of their choosing. If you have less than three quests, when you place your figure, you may pick up quests from the notice board if you're at one of those locations. So, it's your call. But again, on your first turn, you're going to have to do your starting quest to go start. Uh, I don't know if you want to... I can put it above. Yeah, slide it down so it gets different from your items, right? Yeah. So I'll put my quests up top. Yeah, maybe we'll do like this. Yeah, we'll keep our quests and companions and abilities up here. And our items will go below. And you can only have a max of three items, obviously, as you see there. And I, you may have already said if you did, I'm sorry. But it does say on these quests, during setup, place your figure on this card. Oh. And we cannot abandon this quest. Oh, okay. So just so you guys know, when you play next time, not today, uh, or not this playthrough, you would normally pick any spot on the board in a future playthrough. No. No, no, Dan. No, no. No, no. I, I don't want that responsibility. No, no, no. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> uh, but that's funny. You guys are funny. All right. Okay. So I, as the first player, uh, I am starting on my quest. So it says start your adventure at uh, entry 86. So here we get to see our first scene. So normally you'd get to move on your turn. We'll see that as we go through. But this, because it's a mandatory quest, it's got special rules for your first game. You're going to see that here. So we will go to the app. And you can type here and enter a number, or you can scroll on the side, and there's going to be like 350 scenes. And every scene has multiple options within multiple options, like branching little, uh, you know, spider webs of choices, I feel, uh, based on our two plays so far. So the amount of story and choices and things in this game is kind of crazy, just a little bit. Uh, but it's cool. So it leads to lots of replayability. I can see you're going to play this game at least. If you want to see all uh, the full year progress, you're going to play at least 12 sessions. But again, you could keep playing, I think, and just keep seeing more things or reset it. And or play other characters. Play different characters, see their storylines, try to see them, how they would interact with specific places. But again, the world keeps changing. So just think about it. If I go visit a place, I do some kind of thing on a quest line, it changes. So the next game you play there, it does something different. So what happens on the next time we reset the full game, start over, go to that same place and make different choices. Now cards and things have changed. So the second experience is even different. It is just neat. Like the possibilities are, are pretty crazy. And sometimes you don't have choices. Sometimes it's based on dice rolls, which is going to be random for you, right? In yeah. every playthrough. Well, yeah. And it depends on what items you have to help you mitigate those dice rolls and exactly, stuff like that. Exactly. Exactly. So, 86. 86. All right, that is tiny text on there. Oh my God. Maybe I can zoom it in. Hold on, let's see what we can do. That's better. Yeah, that may be fine, right? I mean, the numbers got a little big, but <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll try it. You guys, you guys can see that okay? Uh, those of you who are looking on your phones or tablets or whatever. Uh, standing at the top of the plank, leading ashore, you view the busy docks below. Folks carrying cargo, negotiating passage, or just loitering. Shouting, laughing, living their lives. You want to step down and join them, but this short, symbolic step from the ship means so much more. It means starting your life anew, leaving your troubled past behind. 
the past your new friend so kindly pulled from uh, pulled you from. She should be waiting for you by the tavern, supposedly the worst Rheimstum has to offer. Will you move already? The captain shouts behind you. Or do you want to go back or something? So your only option here, do you want to step ashore and go meet your friend or step ashore and go meet your friend? Or do you want to step ashore and go meet your friend? I'll step ashore and go meet my okay, friend. Okay, step ashore and go meet your friend. Yes, okay. yes. All right, cool. Uh, walking through the seaside street, your mind wanders back to your benefactor. You met, in an you met in awkward circumstances, yourself trying to steal from her. You could have ended up in jail again, or worse. But instead, she listened, showed compassion, and helped you out of some serious trouble. You don't fully understand how she did it, or why. And it took you a while to be able to trust her. You spot the tavern, brewing toad, and your friend awaiting you. She's wearing a hood, but you can't mistake that beak. Her eyes light up as she finally sees you, and she greets you warmly. Here, I brought you something. Welcome to Gazir, Azala, Azala. So this uh, text, normally you have a, so the way we're streaming it is probably not exactly the way you'll play it at your table, but somebody is going to have the device. I mean, again, you could cast it onto a screen or a TV in the room or whatever you want to do, but the color behind the text there, the turquoise, is kind of symbolizing that the, the story master or book reader or whatever it's called in this game, uh, it has a specific name. So you'll be reading the story. There's a main person in charge of reading the story. And you can pass it around. It can be different people. So for example, I'm reading it for Mel right now, and she could just be listening. But obviously she sees it on the screen, as you guys all do. I just want to show this game and present it fully open so you understand what we're seeing here. But normally I would be reading off a tablet or something. I'd be reading this to Mel. This is how we were playing it before. And then the story master, they just do those things in turquoise without reading them out to the player. You can read them out if you want and show them. It's fine. But they're meant to be just like, now do this. So kind of like a, you know, a game master would do. So you're going to move the adventurous figure to Rheinstum. So you can go do that. Also, we're playing cooperatively and everything too. So yeah, yeah, you're just I, reading it and me just doing it. But I'm just fine. letting them know yeah. that's what they'll read in the rules. If you guys yeah. go read the rule book or you see another playthrough demo, you might see them treated a little different. We're just, the way we're showing it on the screen is just maybe different than how you'll play. But do whatever you want. It's your game. Um, Rob is more comfortable to read out loud than me anyways. <laughs> yeah, I'll make you read some aloud. Mm. If you want to go grab your glasses or what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so she moved to Rheinstum. That's where she's starting. That's where her story is leading her. Okay. Okay, then you get a random 150 from the library to the adventurer, which I think is going to be an item. And you can grab 281 while you're there. You can pass me the 150. I'll shuffle them up if you want. And, and a 281. 281. So... These are item cards. So behind every like 100, this is very similar to kind of how Seventh Continent works. You know, the food cards in that game uh, or the, your hunting cards or whatever. So you have different levels of items, I think. Um, so these are all the 150s that come with our prototype. Uh, it shows you the number in there as you sort through. So we grabbed all the 150s. We're shuffling them up. And she's going to get one random little item to start her off here. What'd you get, Mel? <laughs> a way of spies, perception, and literature. A book studying the art of observing the unseen and searching for the vanished. Famous for being hard to keep, hard to find as cryptic to interpret. In perception skill checks, you may reroll up to one die and convert one of the knowledge into, right? into knowledge into knowledge into into a success. Knowledge. I keep saying intelligence, but it's actually knowledge. On the back of the book is a beautiful little reference to tell you all the keywords in the game, what they do, all what the skill-related symbols are in the game on cards, the card types, terrain, adventurer names, in case you don't know the symbols on the cards. You know, that, that like, more will have that symbol if it's a specific card for him. Uh, and then we see scene-related stuff as we go through the book. So this affects one player, the partner, or all players at the table, uh, that kind of thing. Just so you guys get an idea, but this is on the back. Sammy, I love this stuff. I love the reference on the back yes. of the rule book. So even when it's sitting by, it's still useful just sitting on the table. Uh, very helpful stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's that. And then my 281 that I got is Nara. What She's, type of card is this, Mel? This is a companion. Yes. Show the back. Show the back. Yeah, that's how you know it's a companion card. So she's got a little friend that's going to hang out with her. Yes. So she's also going to hang out with me uh, for five rounds. We can see the discard five at the bottom there, which I'll put a token in a minute. But she is Romer and Flight. Nara has traveled all over Galzir and beyond for a living, taking on various tasks ranging from trivial to hopeless. In survival skill checks, get one success. 
And if I sneak or intimidate, I can reroll up to two dice. <clears throat> That's not, that's going to go up here because it's not an item. So one thing I want to show, pass me this uh, item card you have. Yeah. So the skill related stuff is like, or the scene related stuff. So if you're in a scene, it may ask if you have something related to literature or perception. And, and that's what those tags are for. Uh, this one doesn't have any optional stuff on it, but this one does. So the sneak or intimidate. Uh, and this one feedback I have for Sammy here in a sec, we'll see uh, in the story. But uh, when you're, when anytime you see the word sneak come up in a choice, you know you have this ability available to you, and it's optional though. If it's in brown, it's optional. If it was in a purple with a different kind of border, it would be forced. So there's like bad things in the game, like I was saying before, like freezing, for example. You could become freezing, um, and it will tell you on it, like, when you do this kind of thing, you're forced to do this in the box. Like, it, it's obvious, you'll see. Um, but just letting you guys know. But my feedback... Um, I'll show it in a sec. Actually, I'll show it in a sec. I'll show it in a sec. When we get to a, a point, I'll remember. I'll remember. Uh, so back to the little app here, and we're going to go continue. So there's more. So you have your wits, but to make it here, you'll need more than that. Nara blabbers on as the two of you tour the city's market. Wouldn't hurt to try to make a good impression or to pick up a book every once in a while. You do know how to read, right? But most importantly, be careful out there. You notice her grimace briefly at the last bit, but before you can ask her about it, she excuses herself to visit one of the stalls nearby, uh, which seems to offer camping equipment. Left alone for a moment, you look around at the busy market, curious about its foreign city you've ended up in. What are these folks like? So here's Mel's first choice that's related to skill. So this is where my feedback is. So here you know it's a medium test, and in this game there is easy, medium, and hard skill checks, which I can show you. Uh, there's a table right here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can bring it up here. So on the left here, you see a little table in the rulebook. The difficulty of success is required. So a star is a success-ish. Uh, it's just letting you know you need one success on easy to pass. But you can get more successes to get even better outcomes or even less successes. You could get as low as zero and not even pass. And something happens, which maybe is good, maybe is bad. Um, but it's, it, it could happen. So uh, two is medium, hard is three, and there's unknown test, which is really cool. And then, uh, yeah, okay. So if we go back to the app, so in here you can see there's a medium perception test. So if we look at Mel's character, she has a level two, which it's not zooming here, here we go. A level two in perception, uh, one in thievery, one in survival. So here's how the skills work. This will make more sense. Uh, so the skill check. On a skill check, you're always going to roll five dice. And these are your five dice you're rolling to start. Okay, on a, a generic, when you're building your dice pool, you're basically grabbing five black dice. And there is one of each of those skill symbols on all the sides. They're nice little custom little D6s. So you have, you know, your communication, your survival, all that. So there's one of each symbol on here. No misses. No misses. Thank you for that. <laughs> but you still can't miss if you're not getting the skill you need, right? So you have these five. Now here's where the cool part comes in uh, to know how, how you can change that dice pool depending on your skills in an area. So how I like to look at it is you look at what test you're doing. So let's say we're looking at that first option of perception. So Mel has two purple little plastic pieces in here. So that means for a perception test, she might want to grab, and I believe this is optional, you can choose. But I'm, you probably would. So these perception dice that exist in the game, they have two sides with two perceptions on them, but then they also have two sides with one of each of the neighboring skill. So two of these perception dice can also help you on a communication test and can also help you on a thievery test, okay? So by that, the pink die for thievery also has some perception on it. So not only would I want to use these dice, because I'm trying to do a perception test, I would also be allowed to grab one pink. If I want, I don't have to, but there's more chances of getting a perception symbol on here, there's two, versus only one chance of getting it on a black die. So you're always rolling five dice from my understanding, uh, but you can change them out. So like I said, you start the pool with the five, but then you can start replacing dice in the pool with your better dice of that skill test. Okay, and this is just a one player making the decision. If we were partnering on a quest, it works a little different. We'll explain that at some point. We'll get a chance to do that and show you how two characters can work together on a skill test 
uh, and figure it out. And not only are you just building your dice pool from this, but when you roll, you get a free re-roll if you want, and you have to roll all the dice, and before your roll, before your re-roll, or after your re-roll, anywhere in there, you can choose to use abilities off cards. So for example, this one, if we were doing a sneak test, we could re-roll up to two dice, and you can only use it once, it's optional, and you would have to decide you either do it before you do your full re-roll, or after you do your full re-roll, maybe you don't wanna re-roll, maybe you get awesome results, and you just wanna re-roll a couple of the other dice, see if you can get some more, uh, you can do that. But then you still have a free re-roll of everything, so if you still don't like it after that, you can do that. Any order you want. But there's also items that might give you free successes. So you could have something in this case. Well, for example, this one that has, oh, uh, in a survival oh, check, yeah, yeah, right I get there. one success. Yeah. This is unfortunately not survival, but that's okay. And then for every symbol you roll is a success. So obviously if I roll two eyeballs in a perception test, I'm getting two off that. And if I roll one off that, that's three successes, for example, right? So that's all it is. That's, that's basically how skill checks are gonna work. Um, but you don't know, you know, do you, you know, you know it's a medium test, I know it's a medium perception on that first option, uh, and it's an observe, so if you have anything with the observe word, uh, you could add that ability into it. But there's also another option of recalling what you know about Rheimstam. So if you have anything that helps you with a recall, and you know it's an easy test, you only need one success, but the difference is it's a test with uh, knowledge. So for example, if she's looking at the knowledge option, well, she has nothing in knowledge, but remember, this neighboring skill of survival has two knowledge symbols on one side. So for that skill check, she'd be rolling four black and one yellow. Not very high odds of getting it, but again, it's easy. So she just needs one success. She might have an item that helps her with that test. So that's the kind of, the kind of decisions you're making in each scene. And there's usually multiple uh, decisions like that happening on a turn uh, in a scene. So we'll just leave those there for now. But my feedback, Mr. Sammy, for you, I see what you're doing here, trying to keep it clean and simple. But I'm finding when we're playing it, the two times we played it, I feel like it might be intuitive. The way that observe is an important word. It's, it's like a verb in the game. You, cards could have the word observe on them in a nice little brown symbol. It would be nice if that had some kind of symbol around it to, to trigger the player to actually look down at their items or if their partner to look at their items uh, of their partner or on cards they have to kind of find out if I have something that affects the observe. I find when I'm playing this game, and Mel is doing it too, we would read like observe and we just look at what our perception stuff is. And then we would do the test and after we realized, oh wait, yeah, I have, this, so I have something neat. that could have helped me in recall. And I didn't even think of that. But maybe you might want to put in the app, uh, highlight those words somehow to let the player know that they are important and they might be on cards in front of them. Or there might be cards they might want to look for they've seen in a past playthrough that they might know where to go maybe find uh, to help them in those kind of tests. But I just found like intuitively that was the one thing we kept stumbling and going like, oh, we already finished the scene. I forgot that I had this item that helps me sneak. So that just might be a, a, a little something. That's my only like real feedback I noticed after we played last night. We still were forgetting. But you guys will see like, cause you want to look at your cards and you want to see, like I'm looking for, let's say it said observe, it'd be in a little brown box like this, right? So you kind of want to scan your cards looking for observe on any cards, right? Uh, so yeah, that's the only thing I, I think, but it, it still makes sense. And once you play a few times, it's like you just get used to it. Well, yeah, that's just one thing I noticed. But anyways, what do you want to do, Mel? Observe or recall? Well, I have a better chance, I think, in, uh, with observing the folks at the market based on the die that I get to roll. So I think I will try to observe the folks at the market. But also you could say, I've played this before and I've done one option. Maybe I want to try another option. So there's those kind of things. You don't yeah. have to. I don't even remember what I did. I know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but I'm just saying some people might be like that. Might go, ah, you know what? I played this before. And last time I did observe and I failed. Maybe I want to try <laughs> observe again and pass. True. Or maybe I did recall last time and I want to see what observe does this time. Like maybe I want to get, you know, it's medium, so you only need two successes, but there might be an option if you get like four plus successes, but you have no idea, which is so cool. So you're gonna observe? I'm gonna observe. So if I click on that right now, that she's locking that in, it now shows a button here, graze this option out, which I can switch if I want, but it's hiding everything behind a button here. All it says, just underline it with a permanent marker. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, one sec. Oh no, my monitor. Uh, Snowdale Design says, I get you. I've decided so far not to highlight them as it would somewhat spoil what verbs have I... Oh, oh okay. Oh, maybe not all of them do. Okay. All right. Understood. Again, we've only had a couple playthroughs. Or you I wasn't just highlight sure. all the verbs. 
Yeah, that's true. And if they have keywords, they do. If they don't, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just do it all. But anyways. <laughs> or you do what you're doing. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after after a little while, you get used to it. It's just, uh, there was a few that he was like, oh, I forgot. Yeah, I like finished. I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. I had the Underworld trait, and I did that, and I totally forgot it was on a card. Like, oh, not the Underworld one. There was other ones. Not yeah. That's not a verb, but anyways. <laughs> uh, but yeah, different stuff. But anyways, there's, there's cool ones. So anyways, you're going to do the test. Yes. So Mel's going to okay. roll her dice. We got, like, we got the zoomed in dice cam going. Looking for two successes. Uh, so we did get three. So you could choose. You could choose to keep those three, or you can reroll all your dice. Or if you had some kind of abilities or something to add successes, or reroll dice, or change something, or discard a card to do this or that, this is when you could do it. I do not have any cards that will help me affect the dice in any way, but three seems good. And if I reroll, I could, could get be none. less successful. So I think I'll stick with my You'll three. You'll just keep it? Okay. Yeah, I'll keep three. So now we go to reveal outcomes. And then uh, you, you could have got zero to one, you, you two to three, or four plus mm -hmm. is the, the ultimate super lucky person. Awesome. <laughs> if you had your, you know, your guy built for that. Yeah. Um, so if you had like maybe better skills, like you had some in communication, you could have been rolling some blue dice instead of these black dice. Right. And maybe those would give you better odds too, which is kind of neat. So you were going with two to three successes, right? Yes. The market is even busier than the docks were. You look on as a plethora of different folks do business. There's plenty of polecats, but you also spot lemurs, monitors, so ocelots, ducks, and many more. However, your inquisitive gaze sets, inquisitive gaze sets on a group of armed vultures. Slowly approaching, clearly looking for something in the crowd, or someone. Something in their forceful demeanor causes every instinct you've developed over the years to scream danger. Interrupting her haggling, you point to the vultures, you point the vultures out to Nara, whose face crunches with worry. Them again, she says. They tried to catch me once already, and I'm afraid they're after you too. One of the vultures seems to have spotted you, and they start to wade through the crowd towards you. We have to get out of here, Azala. So, your options, you could sneak, sneak, mm -hmm. hint, hint, mm -hmm. away. So she has a sneak card, right? I do. So this is where, you, you know, I'm remembering now because, you know, I'm learning from my mistakes, but. Oh, okay. So Sammy's saying in a small note, some of the prototype dice are a bit incorrect color. The perception uh, isn't blue enough. We'll be fixed in the final game. Oh, we oh have, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we assume that kind of stuff too. That's, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. We get it, we get it. But yeah, you can see, like, what he's saying is, so, at least there's no other blue, so it's, like, kind of obvious that these blue dice go with that blue plastic, but obviously if it matched exactly, it'd be better, but that's fine. That's okay. Totally okay. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you make a prototype that's off on color? Anyways, all right. Sneak away through the crowd is a medium thievery test, or convince the folks around to help you, which is a medium communication test. So minimum two successes. If we go back. So what, what on your board? Uh, so if we're looking at doing a medium thievery or a medium communication. So if I was doing a thievery, I'd be rolling the exact same dice again. One pink, two purple, and then the two black. But you're looking for a different symbol. But I'm looking for a different symbol. And, but I do have... I do have my card here that says sneak. I can re-roll up to two dice. So, um, I think just having a reroll on the sneak, uh, the other word is convince? Uh, communication. Commun so, you'd be rolling two purple and three black. Yeah. Because you have no blue or no green. And I do not have anything to help me convince anybody, so... But you do have the item to help you sneak. I do. Where you could reroll up to two dice. I'm going to sneak. Uh, sneaky, sneak sneaky. away through the crowd. Sneaky, sneaky, sir. So, she's going to choose the sneak option and roll them out. I okay. can't reveal what successes you're looking for until you've actually locked in your roll. Okay, we're looking for thievery. We did get Holy. one. You see, you should have done the convince test. No, I'm I know, just kidding. It should... would have been different dice. But yeah. You got uh, one. I think we will take a reroll on all the dice. Because then I still have... Cause you have one initial reroll of all the dice, and then I still have my reroll of up to two, so... You could do your reroll of up to two first. Because you did get a thievery on a black die, which is one in six. That's kind of hard. And you could just re-roll the one that should get you two thievery and like one of these ones have two. If you still don't get it, then you can re-roll them all. So I'm just I'm talking your options. Yeah, then I'm stuck you with what You do I what have. you want. I'm just showing you like the thought process that could be there. So like, 
you know, I, I, I don't know. That's a tough one. But you do have a way to reroll two dice. You can do it now or you can do it after you take your full reroll if you want. Yeah. I think I'll take my full reroll first. All right. Yeah. Just don't be mad case. if you don't see any little thieveries on your black dice. You had one. Whoa. I got one on the purple. I will reroll up to two dice. So I will reroll these two dice. So the ones that have more odds of getting oh, you the sorry. symbol, right? I put it on there and you can't see that. I got, oh, I got so exactly you got two. two. You got your two. This one didn't even give me any. Wow. I got two. Okay. So reveal outcomes. So you got two. Which <laughs> oh, okay. Same as if you got okay, three. Okay. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, you dive into the crowd and do your best to avoid the vulture's eyes as you escape the market. They catch sight of you once or twice, but cannot keep up. And eventually you manage to lose them completely. There is some upstart group, Nara whispers to you at a safe distance while watching the vultures frantically search for you. You can probably guess why they're after us. You can indeed. Looks like you weren't quite done with your past just yet. You'd have to deal with that before you begin your new life in earnest. So you gain two prestige. All right. So she's going to move her little token at the top of the board there on the prestige track. Okay. Uh, and then the story master would return a friend in need, which is your, it has your little symbol on it. So it's your specific quest card, 111, to the library. And the library is just literally this section of brown dividers, and you're putting it back in the, in the numbered section there. Yep. And then you're going to grab card 268, which is specific to you, has your symbol on it. And you're going to take it, which I'm assuming is your next part two in your quest line, which is cool. Hey, Quip, how's it going? 268, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. And that's the end of scene. So I believe that's your turn. And you're done. I, I think you have to move. Yeah, you have to move first. You have to move first. And then you do a scene, and then your turn's done. So you don't have to move. You can move up to two spaces, and we'll see that on the next turns. Um, but yeah, now we go to my turn. So I am forced to do this quest, just like she did with her starter quest. So it says, you've come to Galzir. So this is Chasing Legends. You've come to Galzir in search of the hero of your favorite childhood stories. And what better way to start than from the very beginning? During setup, place your figure on this card. You cannot abandon this quest. So start your venture. I'm going to start with 85 in the book. 85. Boom. Finally, you've arrived. You peer at the outskirts of a small town peeking from behind the great mountains. It's humble, but most fitting start for your journey. Of course, you enjoyed everything that came before as well, but this is the true beginning. You unfold your thrill and excitement thinking about the stories that await and step forth to Chabar, the birthplace of your hero. Head into the town. Only option. On the way there, you can't stop grinning, thinking about all the stories your grandma used to tell. Tales of White Fang's adventurers were always the best, like the ones where he bested his nemesis, Kafarit. Now, years later, those stories were coming to life. Rumor says that the mysterious, legendary adventurer hasn't been seen in years, decades even. No one seems to know where he's gone or even what his real name is. But that's about to change, because you're going to follow in his footsteps and meet your idol in person. You've even brought along your treasure, your prized possession that once upon a time belonged to White Fang himself. So I'm basically a crazed fan, and I need him to autograph, you know, my... my you know, my action figure of White Fang or whatever. <laughs> my unopened sealed box of his action figure. So move the adventurer's figure to Chabar, uh, which is up here. And uh, give a random 100 from the library to the adventurer. I don't get a 150. I only get a 100. Hmm. Hmm, I'm better. I don't, I'm better. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't like that. <laughs> but anyways. So what I get? I got a... Flint lock pistol oh. item. It's an item card, so it's going to go down into my player area here as one of my three items. And it is uh, when I'm doing a scene, if I have a firearm or a weapon, that might help me in that scene. Flint locks are slow to reload that you generally only get one shot in a fight. Generally, one shot is enough. And then I have these optional little verb boxes here. So if we see fight or we see unlock or intimidate, uh, I can get a success and convert one perception into a success on a fight test or unlock, intimidate can help me get one success on whatever test it is, as long as they have that. This is a six gold item. So if I sell this to a shop or buy it from a shop in the future, 
Uh, and you can find shops in this world and places to sell items. It's worth six gold. So I think that's pretty good. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's go here. So we're going to continue. Your mind races as you follow the enthusiastic polecat, polecat cubs guiding. Uh, in it is such a small remote town, but every everyone knew White Fang, and the cubs immediately agreed to show you his childhood home. He's truly made. He's truly made. We are here. One of the cubs explains, interrupting your daydreaming. You look around, and the place appears most ordinary on the outside. A small farmhouse, some ways off, off the town, but the inside looks like a museum filled with memorabilia of White Fang's many adventures. Standing there, you close your eyes and immerse yourself in his legacy and story, which feels closer than ever before. Opening your eyes again, you see the cubs looking at you expectantly. So we could investigate the memorabilia, which is an easy perception, or recall White Fang's adventures, which is a medium uh, knowledge. So if I look at my skills here right now, I'm great at communication. I have some knowledge and some uh, fight. Or might, sorry, might. So I'm looking at an easy, easy perception would have me rolling two blue and three black. Or the medium, which I'm trying to get two successes on, I'd be rolling three blue, one green, and two black. But I need two successes. I think I might try that one. But... Are you feeling lucky? <laughs> I don't have anything to help me with investigates. And I don't have anything to help me with recalling. But I do have my once per game ability, which I don't think I would use here. If I choose to do the perception skill check, I might be able to help get a bunch of successes off that. But I don't feel like doing that. Sorry, I didn't tell you mine, but... Oh, oh sorry. No, I just forgot that. Uh, mine is, when traveling, you may discard to gain plus four movement. So, that's good. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I... Uh... What should I do here? Should I, uh, let's see. I guess I could leave it up to the chat and let them decide on this one. Oh. What to do. So, investigate or recall White Fang's adventurers. So now you guys know how to kind of a skill check works and what I'm choosing from here. So I need one success on perception. And you guys can see here, that would be two blue which again, those blues only have two sides with single perceptions. Um, but vote in the live chat. You guys vote, I'll leave it up for a few seconds and uh, I'll go with whichever option you guys choose in the live chat. So go ahead and vote. Um, but do you want me to try the medium test with, or would you try the medium test with knowledge? Uh, we're rolling a few more colored dice. We have a better odds of getting it, but we do need two successes at least. But if we get extra successes, we could get some cool option. So even if we try the easy test and we get like three successes, that might be even a better result than just rolling like the minimum one, you know? So there's a poll in the live chat. You can click on the option, should be there if you're on uh, mobile or on, on the website or whatever on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should be saying knowledge, but yeah, if I see the book and I say investigate, uh, we play too much Arkham Horror, the card game here. So that book in my head is in, you know, doing a, our intellect, uh, we're doing an investigate or intellect, uh, but yeah. Or, oh, I see. You're saying also the investigate. Oh, investigate the memorabilia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And invest. Hey, yeah, we're doing an investigate check, not using the book. <laughs> well, you're going to look. What's happening? You're just going to look around. This, you're is not, investigating this is not with what your I'm eyes. used to doing. You're investigating with your eyes. Oh, and Steph in the chat says he's backer number 569 for the deluxe. Oh. Oh, awesome. and all in. Awesome. I have the nice, pretty nice stuff. Nice mat. Huh? Yeah, the nice mat. Yeah, I'm a little jelly. That mat's nice. Yeah. Yeah, Sammy, where's the mat? Huh? <laughs> Why are we playing on cardboard? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, so we're going to end the poll there. Thank you everyone that voted. And it looks like we're going to go recall with 55%. I think that's a good idea. Which is cool. Yeah. So let's go recall. Yeah, I'd probably do that. A little more push your luck. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, so let's go here. So, uh, again, I have, uh, a green and I can use two blue and then two black zeros rolling the five dice. Whoa. Um, hmm. I don't see any book symbols. So it looks like I'm just re-rolling again. I don't have anything to help me with that that I know of. No recall help. 
This is medium, so we need to see two. I need at least two successes. If I fail, bad things might happen. We'll see. No, no, it's my rolling. <laughs> we didn't pray good enough to the dice gods or hard enough. Oh, none. None. I got zero. So it's good. You guys get to see this uh, again. We we risked it, and this is what happens. So I'm gonna do zero to one successes. And being amidst it all proves distracting, as you can't recall, or, or really, sorry, focus on any single story in this environment where everything blends into one magnificent adventure. You scramble for a tale about his many adventures in Sarwar, Sarwar, but everything you say, the cubs have heard many times over. In the end, all you can do is look around at the various folks there and smile at the tremendous influence your hero has had. You see, the others give you curious smiles in return. There are several eyes on you. No matter how, you've always liked being the center of attention. Time to impress them. So now I can declare your ambitions or sneak out, which is a medium test. Both medium tests. One's communication. And one is uh, thievery. I feel like I do the declare your ambitions. So I would get to roll two. I, I'm rolling the same dice, but I'm looking for... A better symbol, but I don't have a sneak. I don't have anything to help me with uh, declare? declare. But again, I do have my one time ability of using it on communication or perception. Probably should have used it. I <laughs> know oh, I couldn't have used it on the last one. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to pick a different option. So I'm going to declare my ambitions. Edgar's calling out the cursed dice tray. I know, again. I know. Well, you saw it worked for Mel, okay, I guess. All right. So okay, you technically. I got the two I need. Not on the dice that you wanted on, though. I know, Interesting. but do I risk getting higher than two when I have the two? Probably not. I don't trust my ability to reroll. <laughs> We've all seen how rerolls yeah, yeah. work. So I'll just go with the two to three. <laughs> you give a passionate speech stating that you'll be the one to find White Fang and proudly bear the torch of becoming a great adventurer yourself. Your declaration has met with cheers and happy faces in the crowd. Not quite everyone seems convinced, but you're sure they'll learn soon enough after they witness you in action. Satisfied and eager to continue your adventure, you turn to leave. But before you're able, the cubs come running at you. Or come running to you, sorry. And they're carrying something. We found this lying around, one says, and we want you to have it. Tell White Fang we said hi. So I, unfortunately, only gain one prestige. Okay. And then I'm going to return Chasing Legends. So my part one quest I was just working on is going to go back to the library. And I'm going to get a random 200. And I'm going to get card 267, which is specific to my character. Okay. Random 200. Oh, random 200. Here's the random 200. Oh, one more, sorry. Oh, no, a few more. Oh, what are you wow. doing? Are you trying to short me here? No, there's lots more. And then 267. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 267. Okay. I'm going to shuffle up the 200s, and I'm going to get a random item. And again, when you take your fourth item, so you can only hold three on your mat, below your mat, but once you take your fourth, or at any time, you can just decide to discard them. But again, you can sell them. And if you ever have to get rid of an item, let's say you take a fourth item, you can always discard one and use an ability if you have like an anytime effect on it, uh, and still use it. So I'm going to take an ear horn, okay, which helps me with hearing. Growing old has both many advantages and disadvantages. Loss of hearing can be classified as both. So I have something here to help me with sneak, unlock, and observe to help me reroll up to two dice. Hmm. The jokes are going to start flying. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, then I'm There's just... your 267. Oh, my 267. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at that. Uh, so this is Chasing Legends Part 2. White Fang's storied enemy lives in Sarwar. You should pay him a visit and find out what he knows. He might not be in a talkative mood, however. And you cannot abandon this quest. So this will always be one of my three quests I kind of have until I complete it. The cool part is we both could meet in Sarwar and, and we could do it together and maybe both get some rewards. Uh, and we can meet the enemy 89. But I don't know how much I want to continue. I know, these. I'm not going to do mine because yeah. we don't want to spoil them. Yeah, I don't really want to spoil too much, so I'm going to leave these for you guys to discover. We could just hold this as a third quest. But we can't throw it away, so it's always going to hold in our hand until we complete it. It takes up one of our three quest slots. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's that. And then we're going to end scene. And then that's the end of a round. So what you do is in the app, just like you do on the board, we're going to drag a little day marker to the next day. To keep track. Okay, and then you're going to move it on the board. Yep, so we're on Saturday. There's no time tokens on the resolve, and it's literally back to the first player's turn. And we just keep going around like that. That's a full round. 
obviously it happens a lot quicker when you're not you know reading out and doing what you're doing but uh yeah the game just kind of flows so you'll see here some scenes are shorter than others depending on what you happens in the scene some can go longer uh, but yeah so now it's mel's turn first movement you can move up to two spaces you can also pick up quests from the notice board or drop quests or whatever at any point between your movement so you could like move move one space into a location pick up a quest move another space and then you could do a scene on like a different space that kind of thing so you are currently in Rheinstum. Yeah, I'm not really sure which, where I'm going. If I want to try to meet up with you well, to you do a partner quest. Yeah, it's kind of a long journey to get all the way is. up there. I do have plus four movement, so at some point oh. I could do a move of six. It's fine. I have but, to, I can stay there and wait for you. Oh, uh, or no, actually, I need to go to uh, Sarwar. Yeah, you're going up Here. to Sarwar. So I could so also could, like, come along that way. that way and we can meet up there. If... You, you could also choose not to move and you can do something here like go to the wishing well, the docks, the market. Uh, the arena, the casino, or the convention center. Convention center is my favorite place mm -hmm. on the board. That's my favorite place there. The other thing I could do is if I was going to meet you in Sarwar, I could come along and pick this quest up and then kind of, well, maybe that will lead. You can do whatever mm -hmm. you want. But I think I want Sandbox to... game, fully open, totally tons of stuff you can do. You can look at hand cards in your hand and go try to do those quests. Yeah, I'm not going to do my personal yep. quest, so but we're going to, yeah. Just going through the options. So you could look at cards in your hand and your in your tableau or your hand or whatever and go do those. You can do stuff on your location or you can move to a different location, you know, or you can go pick up a quest as part of your movement and then do one of those quests. If you happen to be at the location, you can do those quests. Okay, I think I'm going to start moving towards Tashun and then maybe move up to meet you in Sarwar. Depending so you're going to take one, two, that's one turn, two, three, that's two turns. Well, I also have the, I have the movement. I have the movement. It's all good. You do whatever. You're just talk, talking about taking the long route. Like, what am I doing? No, I'm just joking. I have lots of stuff I could do there while I wait for you. If you even want to do that. Well, because if I come up there, I don't want to come up there empty-handed. You do whatever. I'll just pick this up along the way. And then maybe I'll use my movement to meet you. Do whatever. So I'm going to move for two. We're going to ignore these uh, places for now and move one two and i will end my turn here all right so mel's gonna grab an, an event card yep event cards the word i'm looking for yep and you're on a grassland but first option on the card first option on the card is wednesday it's it, not wednesday it's saturday so we are going to go to the grassland option which is 63 63 and then you just put that in front of you for now 63 I scroll too much. All right. The tedium of traveling through an oppressive thunderstorm is broken up by the bruise colored sky opening up every few minutes to light the world in pure white. As you walk, you notice an odd pattern to the strikes. The last few have all occurred in the same place, three repeated bolts striking the same location a few hundred meters away, behind a large clump of trees. Five minutes later, the same thing again. Something there must be attracting lightning bolts. You can't help but think this is odd and possibly bad. Do you want to go investigate or ignore the phenomenon, Mel? Uh, I would like to go and investigate, I believe. The air is charged with electricity as you enter the clearing. A newly built cottage rests near the giant metal rod. The rod near is, is five meters tall, supported by guy ropes with supporting wires running towards the cottage. Hello there, shouts the oscillated lizard, flapping his arms as he runs from the cottage. I'm Professor Larnamy. From the Royal Academy of Jemsid. My research team is conducting aha, some experiments to measure electrical cloud che. Five quick bolts of lightning smash into the rod, and you and the poor professor oh. Larnamy hit the dirt. The rod is attracting far more lightning than anticipated. Please help us and quickly before we lose everything. Uh oh. So one player, if you pack each scholar tag gives you one success. So your first option of help to pack the equipment, if you choose that option, and you have the scholar tag, any scholar tags, which you would look around on your character board, any cards you have, uh, all around, anything could have a scholar tag. You kind of have to like uh, see what you got, but you don't have I any? I don't have any, no. Okay, so you could uh, still do that. You just don't have those three successes, so it makes it a little harder. Or force the rod down, which is a medium might test. So both are medium tests looking for successes. Two successes, sorry, I should say. Uh, what do you want to do? I do not have the verbs to help me with either of these tests. So you don't have help or force. I do not. Uh, if I... Mm, oh, that's still not... Oops. 
Uh, this is not a survival test, so Nara can't help me with that. I think might I think actually is your best one for, for getting the get most to, colored I dice. I get to roll a pink and a yellow. Yeah, but they're the neighboring skills, so the most they can get you is one each. Yeah. So. Okay, let's... Let, yeah, let's force the rod down. I get one pink, one yellow, and three black. And I'm looking for two successes. We're looking for swords. We did get one sword. You need at, I least, need at least two to succeed. Okay, so we are going to re-roll because this is a failure and we're going to fingers crossed we get two this time. Uh, we got one again, so it's so one. So you did force? Yeah. Reveal outcomes, zero to <laughs> one. The electrodes at the top of the rod are bathed in arcing faint blue flame. This seems like a bad sign, but you focus on trying to knock the rod down before another bolt. Oh, no. You wake up inside the cottage among the ruins of instruments and supply crates. You've been out for 10 minutes as a professor. Your ears are ringing and you hear some and there are some minor burns, but you're otherwise unharmed. The bolt jumped to the support wires and ruined our instruments. But the important thing is you're unhurt. The team lets you rest while they pack up the ruined gear, the lightning smashing the rod every few minutes until the storms passes. So it says give 54 from the library to the adventurer. What is 54? You're I'm shocked. shocked. So I'm stunned and weary. Your <laughs> mind is haunted by the latest experiences and you can only wish you would have acted differently. You cannot utilize your skill marks. So you're always <gasps> rolling black dice for right now. For three rounds. I think, right? Yes, for three rounds. Oh my goodness. That so get a time is token terrible. And put that three days from now on our oh little track. Oh my goodness. And then it says return the drawn event to the bottom of the event deck. Okay. So sometimes it'll remove them from the game to based on things you would have done there. Oh man. Watch out for that lightning, folks. Three. Yeah. End of One, scene. Two, so your turn's done. Whoa. So on my turn. That was terrible. I should have ran away. I'm gonna pick up this quest from Chabar, which is an, an inquisitive but inconspicuous person needed. Contact the sawmill headquarters for more information. So this is now in my hand. Smoldering Wood Part 1. So if I want to do this, I have to go to Yezden. And I could do it with somebody to visit Jaonka's firm. And there's a little story here to it. So I'm going to hold that. I have two quests in hand. I'm allowed to have up to three. Whenever we empty uh, space on the notice board, we can take this one off. Uh, we're going to refill it with the front card from the quest slot at the front of this deck, which that quest slot will change. And that's uh, random, sorry. And this is going where? Yezden. Yezden. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, no need to apologize. That was terrible dice rolling on my part too. And maybe I should have ran away. Again, we haven't built up our, <laughs> our items and abilities yet and stuff. So sometimes you're just going to have bad rolls. And sometimes you get choices to avoid rolling dice. Sometimes you get choices to spend money to help you out. And mm -hmm. it's your choice what you want to do. Yeah. Um, or if you have specific tags and things, you get some cool options and stuff. Uh, but we're early, so we don't have many tools you know, yet to use. So I'm gonna choose to move. One, two, I'm gonna go this little mountain spot out here. So I need an event card. Okay. And is it Tuesday? No. No, Saturday. Settlement, no, I'm on the mountain. So I'm gonna keep going down until I hit mountain at the bottom, 61. All right. So 61, as you travel up the wooded slopes of the mountain, three pangolin children race down the bend, colliding to you. Uh, in a furry jumble of uh, jumble pleads, they beg for your help before scampering off back up the road. Following them around the next turn, you see their mother's their mother kneeling on the road and bandaging the head of her wounded husband. Mm. You ask them what happened. The father huffs. Some wolverine and raven jumped us. Took our blue cart and ox at gunpoint. I tried to show them what's what, but out. Uh, he ended with his wife tightening the cloth around his bruised head. Can you help us get our cart back? It's our livelihood, the wife pleaded. We must get my husband treated. So I could help the pangolins or decline to help. Hmm. But you can play and be kind of a jerk in this. I see. <laughs> uh, we'll do the help the pangolins. You promise you'll return what has been taken. The family thanks you before guiding their grumbling father along the trail. You rush up the mountain's path, hoping to catch up. Within 10 minutes, the road narrows and you meet a party of traveling polecats. You ask them about the cart, shrugging. They tell you they haven't seen it. 
You backtrack along the road and check out the outlining brush coming across a pangolin doll. Pushing further into the foliage, you spot a faint wagon tracks. Uh, following them, the tracks grow more distinct, leading you to a, a hollow that holds a mound fitted with a wooden door and a tin-plated chimney emitting a smoke. Out front, a half-plundered blue cart sits with an ox. Do you have a cord tag? Mm, I have bolster, unfold, hearing, weapon, firearm. No. If I had a cord, uh, that would probably make this all easier, but I don't. So I could enter the mound and fight, which is medium. I would roll one orange die, but four black. Don't feel too good about that. Or I could come up with another plan, which I get to roll two blue, one green, which could get double books on them. So I will think I'm going to come up with another plan. All right, so two blue, green, and two black. I got one, but we need two. <laughs> and this was a come up with another plan, which might not have. Yeah, I don't think it has any keywords. Uh, all right, that I've seen. So I'll just re-roll. Nothing. Oh, no. Nothing. Oh. What? I should have fought. I have something to oh, fight. Oh, you have fight? I'm an idiot. Oh. I'm an idiot. I, see? Then rewind it, because you haven't actually revealed your outcomes yet. Right here is what I'm talking about, Sammy. Totally didn't put that the fight word in there. Tied to my fight on flintlock pistol. Because even even Sammy's saying that not going guns blazing. Yeah, on that's what, pistol. Uh, yeah, so I, rewind that. You I think can. I can, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. And just roll your different dice. Yeah, that, I'm being an idiot again because I forgot about that idea. That it says fight right there. I should have realized. Uh, okay. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So what I would do instead is enter the mountain fight. So I roll four black and one. Uh. Uh, orange, orange, one orange. And it gets me one success, and I convert I convert one perception eyeball into a success also. Okay. Yeah. So technically, right now, though, you do have two technically if you convert one eyeball into a success, and you had one success. Well, I'm going to push my luck. Okay. I'll do my reroll. I got oh, two better. swords, and I got an eyeball. So I technically have four. Yeah, that's better. And I don't need to discard this to do this, which is good. Oh, Sammy says, I'll put that on the campaign page as a quote from Rob. I'm being an idiot. That's Sounds correct. <laughs> that's correct. That's, that's my official quote. When Rob played it, he liked the game, but he also said he's being an idiot. <laughs> which is no different than any other playthrough on the channel. All right. Uh, reveal outcomes. So I got... Oh, no! No, I didn't no. even get the highest! One shy. No. That's it. I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> don't like it. No, I'm just kidding. All right, oh, so I got funny. four. Let's mm -hmm. see. You boldly tackle the door open. Inside, a wolverine and raven are uh, sorting stolen parcels. Intruder, the raven squawks. The criminals draw on you while you dive behind a stove. Chaos reigns as bullets fly and furniture is lobbed. Much of the stolen loot is obliterated in a storm of projectiles. In the end, you are victorious. Uh, steering the ox wagon to the nearby inn, loaded with criminals and surviving uh, goods, the Pangolin family, along with the guard patrol, greet you. The family's mood is dampened, hearing many parcels were destroyed, but still treat you to a small reward, which is increased when the guard slaps cuffs on the criminals and informs you that there was a bounty on the raven. Ooh. Ooh, I gained one prestige and four gold. That is good. Yeah, that's and well. Then return this to the prestige bottom. is the name of the game, and I only got one, so I feel like I didn't do the best option here. But again, this wasn't exactly a quest; it was an event, and quests are supposed to be the main way. At least in the rules, it says to gain prestige. So I'm I'm betting it's not likely in an event you get two prestige, probably unless you do like the best of the best options. Right, maybe, maybe if you'd roll the five. Maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, so that's that. So, so put that one, on the bottom of the deck. Yep, you, already... you get one prestige. One prestige and four so, gold. Four gold. I like the way I don't have to mess with gold tokens and stuff, so I just go... I know, but instinctively you always want to reach for them, right? Because yeah, we're not yeah, used to I having know. them tracked on here, but I love it. Yeah, so I'm now up to 14 gold with my character there tracked in the little dial. And uh, if we stopped playing right now and we went to play later in a new game session, he would start with 14 gold. And the world, it persists, which is cool. Uh, so we got a little bounty there. And that's the end of the scene.
So we okay. know the day changes. So I'm going to move. It's now Sunday. Okay. Okay, and then I'll move on the board. It's now and Sunday. No timer tokens. Now it's the first player turn. Okay. Well, I am going <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go to Tashun to pick up that quest, I believe. So we're going to go here for one. I'm going to pick up the quest, please, if you will. Okay. Uh, Tashun. Tashun. So this one says, a chance to earn money from an apt individual with nerves of steel. Oh, and folks with bad manners don't bother. So I, I can't do this no, one. So no, I, I can definitely yeah, do this you one. You can do it. I sorry, sorry. 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 Uh, <laughs> so this is the collector. So we want to go to Arin um, and go to the party. And Arin's way down here, not in the direction I was thinking about going to meet up with you. But we'll see. We need another quest to refill the space oh, yeah, on the notice board. Me. There should always be three available. That is me. So pick from the front of the deck. It is also in Arin. Okay. Assistance in fund seeking required. Fund fund seeking. Not uh, fund seeking. <laughs> Understanding the mind of a potential sponsor or patron appreciated. Or deep pockets. Arin University. Hmm. Yep, universities. Always want your money. That makes sense. All right. Uh okay. Now, I could stay here to do something either at the ruins or the camp, or I can continue along my way. <laughs> I'm weary now of doing tests since I am shocked and I cannot roll my skill dies. So maybe I just do something there. Uh, maybe I just stay here. I'm going to stay here, yes. Now. I thought we were going to meet in Sarwar, and I'm going to be sitting there. Oh, I'm oh, going to forget gonna, who you are okay, by the no, time you. No, 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 I'm just kidding. You but do whatever. Now, you do whatever. If I'm, I'm shocked, you can still use my skills in a in a. Uh, if I'm the active test. player, I would assume so, yeah. Okay, then, then yeah. Like, in read that read case, what Shock says? Uh, you cannot utilize your skill markers. I'm not you. So you can. Okay. But I don't know. Maybe it's not allowed in a partnering. I don't know. Actually, <laughs> I, could, I could use my plus four movement and move one, two, three more to get in there, and I'll already be there. You, you don't have to. It's all good. Just, I can do that. I don't know if that's worth it. No? I don't I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. Well, I can't do much because I'm Sure. Shocked, do it if you want. So... It's a one, once per session ability. If you just want to use it now, that's fine, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, this also, uh, another reason is... Um... But it, you have to discard it, right? Yeah, so I discarded so then... it for this, for this playthrough. But it also says, return any companions without flight back to the library. But if I don't have this, I don't have to worry. She has flight, so I'm fine. Are you restricted? Because if you're restricted, you can't use the card. Is shocked restricted? No, it's stunned and weary, right? Yeah. I'm assuming restricted would be... Yeah, we'll tell you. Would tell me restricted. Okay. So I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to soar in the sky and move up to four. One, you can just put it back three. in the safe slot for that character. Yeah, yeah that's true. Because you're going to get it again next game, right? Okay. And I'll end my turn in there. And then I can choose... I will do that in a second. I can choose one of these places... So you could do a quest in your hand out of I your available quest. Yep, I don't or have any you here. could pick uh you could do you could visit the metal factory, you could visit the market, which you still Ooh, have item have, slots empty. And I have ten gold. Yeah, that might be Maybe a good I spot go to, to the go. Market. Or you could go to the museum or the city park. Hmm. I believe I will go to the market. All right, market. I have is some gold. Eight. If I can't use skills, then maybe being able to get some items might be helpful. So the market is number eight. Sarwar's market is mainly known for its lively trade in mounts and draft animals. Great for riding effortlessly from place to place, but there's plenty of other stuff for sale as well. Ooh, so you can maybe even get around. Do you have a mount tag? I do not. Okay, so that's a no. What would you like to browse for? You could rent a riding animal for four gold. You could look at weapons and camping equipment. You could look at books and apparel or miscellaneous gadgets. Your choice. Hmm. Interesting. I yeah, think that's cool. I think I will go for. What are you buying? Uh, I'm not really a fighter because I'm more in the perception. Books and apparel. I think I'll go for miscellaneous gadgets. Miscellaneous gadgets. You're feeling curious today and decide to take a look at the selection of uncommon goods and gadgets in the market. Take card 201 and three random 200s from the library and place them face up in front of the adventurer. This is normally how you shop in this game. Okay, so 201. They give, yeah, and show then... me 201. Uh, this, card, this card comes up with it. This is assorted gear. This is perception and thievery it can help you on. Okay. Blending into the shadows is often affiliated with dishonest intents. 
What if you simply want to avoid disturbing anyone? When purchased, discard to swap one of your skill marks for either uh, Perception or Thievery. So this can help you change your skills going, going forward. forward. So for this playthrough and in future playthroughs, you know, you get to modify these little skills. So you could do that. Okay. But it says... I only get to pick one, right? Of these? Yeah, you may purchase... Oh, no, you may purchase any number of these by oh, paying okay. its value. You may also sell your items for half their value rounded up. So this is different than the last market we saw. The last one was like you pick one of. Yes. And we've seen sometimes it presents rewards and you choose one. Sometimes you can buy all. Sometimes you can sell. I don't know if the selling values change, but uh, that's okay. kind of cool. And I get three random 200s. So we'll take one. I'll show them in a second. And then you return the items the adventurer sold and those they did not purchase back to the three. library. Okay. So my other options are a cloak. Uh, which is shady and warm. This costs five gold. Cloaks are pretty much the only clothing always in fashion amongst Lumere nobility. Uh, they are striking in appearance, but can conceal you from prying eyes when it comes time for more unseemly activities. Sneak, I would get one success reroll, one die, and intimidate. I think I already have something with sneak and intimidate. I do, but she's going to leave soon. It even makes you even better at it, though. That's true. Magnifying glass also costs five. Reading. Being able to discern minute, minute details come in handy in many professions from detectives to locksmiths. However, when viewed through the lens of a polecat cub, the most important trait is the enhanced ability to make funny faces. Search, get plus, uh, two successes, and unlock reroll one. Oh, that is very good. I also found a feather duster, which is also cost five, sweeping, made from the fallen... fallen plumage of various feather folk dusters are commonly used for cleaning up they're not to say there aren't others other uses for a st slat oh my god a stack, a stack of, ticklish of ticklish fluff, fluff. search get one success and reroll one or fight convert to thievery into one success <laughs> you can tickle them in a fight i could I don't think i want the tickle and hello mr brian weaver hello welcome welcome hello i think I think I'm going to take for five. I'm definitely going to take this magnifying glass, which gives me the search plus two uh, successes and unlock. I can reroll one. <sighs> do I want to change my stats or do I want you the could sell the other item you have for uh, was it round three gold? It's rounded it's up, rounded up, rounded up. So you could sell that for three gold if you want to like make some. You don't feel like you're going to use that ever. Checks. I know you don't really need to clear out slots. So you, you have, you know, stuff you can. Mm -hmm. Build up. You'll get other chances to buy things and get rewards and find yes. random items and stuff too. I think I'm actually going to go for the magnifying glass and the cloak for the full 10. You don't want to change your skills to better perception or thievery at all? Mm. You also have that option. Swap your skill marks from either perception or thievery. Uh, you don't have to. I'm just saying it's an I, option. The only thing that I would be tempted to do if I did that would be to move my second blue uh, purple perception stat to the one communication so i kind of have them all around i can move it you can move it to perception or thievery oh, you're four. already full perception oh so, i thought i could move one no. of, oh, sorry sorry when purchasing no, no, no. or discarding swap one of your skill marks for either oh i see i think oh i don't yeah. want to do that yeah so i don't want to so buy like this. very specific what you could get better at so oh, okay you're being like more perceptive or more Sneaky and thievery and... Yeah, no, thank you. I think I'm going to spend all my full 10 for a magnifying glass and a cloak. So I'm going down to zero gold from the market. Okay, and then these are going to go back into their respective spots. Yep. 200. And that's one. end of scene. All right, I am going to move into where Mel is. I'm just going to move one space. There was, a, sorry, uh, oh, so yeah, yeah. say uh, the partner must be able to loan their skill marks. That makes sense. They assist, so shocked players can't loan theirs. That makes sense, because okay, so you would I be helping help you. in the test, but it's like, obviously, if you're not allowed to use those those dice, like those skill marks, obviously, I shouldn't be able to use them because you are helping me. Yeah. So that kind of sucks, so we're trying to do a little test together, and now you're pretty much useless to me. Can other, I loan other than my if you have items? items? Yeah, yeah. Okay, just not my skills. Okay, yeah, we well, that. I mean, we can try. Like I can just join you. Worst case, we get sure. extra rewards, right? Yeah, I just want to show the partner thing. Yeah, uh, it's just unfortunate that I'm shocked and you can't use my dice, but maybe they won't even be relevant for you and what you're doing. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I just move one space into Sarwar, and that's where I have to be to continue part two of Chasing Legends. Hmm. Yeah, we can do one more of that. That's fine. 
Or is there one we can do here together? Uh, no, I don't see one. This one I have to be in Yezden. Yeah, let's just do this just to show it. Uh, so this is continuing that White Fang story. We're going to go visit and fi find his nemesis, his enemy. We're going to go meet the enemy. And we're going to do this together. Like, I ask Mel, do you want to help me on this? And she says, sure. Yeah. And we're going to go meet the enemy at 89. And we can. If I can. 89. Not let me type in. I don't like 89. Uh, you knock on the door of the imposing manor near the market. Rather than size, it is the subdued, seemingly effortless elegance that makes the two story house imposing. The yard is impeccably cut, the rose bush is neat, and even the open window on the second floor glimmers cleanly in the sun. It's the perfect home for a villain. The next step on your journey should sit inside. From what you've heard, she's White Fang's story's enemy, Kafaret. Yes, a big crocodile asks as he opens the door. Yes? The moment you mention White Fang, however, he slams the door in your face. Rude. But you're sure your hero wouldn't be stopped by just that. So you can, or I can, sorry, I'm the active player, so I'm choosing. Mm -hmm. I can unlock the door for medium thievery or climb through the window for an easy survival. For unlock, I do have one reroll. I have reroll up to two dice off my ear horn. For unlock? Yep, oh, I also, so that... off my flintlock pistol, have one free success. Oh, so. So let's get sticky with it here and go with the thievery, I think, right? Yeah. Or, I mean, the, uh, the, yeah, the thievery test. So unlock the door. So this is going to be so amazing. It's unfortunate I can't. I have a yeah. pink die, but I can't give it to you. But I, I can use my orange because it's neighboring to the pink. So I'm literally like kind of rolling crappy dice to do this. But we do have lots of rerolls and, and some successes to start. Yeah. So let's just roll it up and see what we get. I did get one. So technically with your auto success, we have two. You can reroll one from mine and two from yours. You could reroll three dice. Yeah, let's just do the uh, two reroll. Do you want to do this one too? Or not yet? Uh, we'll just do the two reroll first. I may want to do a reroll oh, on the orange yeah, die again. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Oh, nice. I got, I got another one on the black die. So mm -hmm. now I'll use your one reroll one die. Oh, there got you go. Got one there. Okay. And so I get a success from an unlock. Do you have any unlock nope. anything uh, else? That's the only one I have. Okay, so four successes. Oh. All right, I got the highest one. Ooh. I like this game again. I like this game again. <laughs> <laughs> in no time at all, you pry the lock open and sneak inside. Short way in, you come across a large room, complete with a large dining table. And there's a much smaller figure sitting at the other end. Who are you? And what are you doing in my house? The dwarf crocodile asks. She must be Kafarit, then. She wields a napkin on her neck, several rings on her fingers, and a cane which she is currently pointing at you. You ask if she remembers White Fang, just as another larger crocodile comes in carrying a food tray, which she promptly drops on the floor. You have some nerve, Kafarit says, in her voice suddenly dripping with venom. To barge in and ruin my supper like that? You try to explain yourself, but she interrupts you. That's enough. Get him! So. I could fight them for a medium fight test or offer to pay for four gold. <laughs> I have no gold to offer you. So I could fight with my flintlock pistol, which gets me one success, and I could turn a perception symbol oh. into one success. I, have, I do not have any fight keywords, unfortunately, to lend you. <laughs> <laughs> Rob is so swinging. Yeah, yeah. That's the it dice. depends on if it's going in his favor or dice, not, right? Dice are swinging in games, right? So my opinion is also swinging along with my dice rolls. That's just how it works. No, I'm just So kidding. I can't offer to help you in any way on this one because I have no fight, I have no dice, and I have no money. But it would have been nice. I would have been able to use a yellow and a pink. I know. Uh, I would have been able to use the yellow and the pink from your neighboring skill dice and my one orange. I should never have explored the lightning. And oh, the vassal's no. saying, fight, you have a gun. Exactly. I think you should try the fight, too. So it's the same dice I'm rolling. And I have one success. I could turn an eyeball to a success. You don't want me to just be a chicken and buy my way out of this? All right, here we go. 
Oh, this time we're looking for fight. I didn't even get an eyeball. And uh, yeah, no fight symbols. So I'm just going to have to reroll all of it. And I, I don't like these odds. I don't know. I need at least two successes. You have one auto, right? One auto success? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have one auto success. So I just need to see one sword at least. Oh, and I got three. Oh, look at that four again. And I got an eyeball. Oh, so you got I'm five. At five. Whoa. All right. Let's see if I, how my impressions of this game increase. Please say five plus. I'm just kidding. Oh, four, four plus. Even so. Man, Still I'm good. overkilling Still it. Still good. All right, I'm so good at this game. I'm just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, drawing strength from heroes that came before you, you face your foe in a fierce fight and overwhelm her in a glorious victory. As she slumps in her chair, one of her goons lying unconscious at her feet, before it looks defeated in more ways than one. Unbelievable. Just when I started to forget the indignity, it, it, in comes another. What do you want? Or did you come here just to humiliate me? Still feeling your triumphant high, you stare in her eye and demand to know where White Fang is. Fine, she says. With luck, you'll beat him as well. My sources tell me he lives in the countryside near Reinstam. She points out the location on the map, and with your business settled, you leave her be. Time to go meet your hero. Oh, I gained two prestige. Look at this. So here's how the partner thing works. So this little symbol of the one little hand uh, is one, the sort of active player. I'm going to return that quest to the library. So you're going to put that away. Okay. And I'm going to get 62 card from the library. And then I'm assuming the next step, uh, the next part in this quest, which is 271, and it has my character symbol on it. So. And 62. And then it says the partner, since she helped out and joined me along in it, she's going to get some prestige out of it. So do you see how in a competitive game versus a cooperative, like we're working together, we're trying to get prestige all together. But in a competitive game, you might need another player's help. And they might want to help you so they get something out of it too. And this just shows you like, you know, how they could help. But when they help you, they choose whether they want to give you access. So if I had the gun and Mel was in doing this, and she could say, okay, Rob, I, I need your help. I need your gun. Can you use it on the test? And if we were playing competitive, I might let her use it. And I might not. Because I'll still get something out of it, I assume, if I help her. But maybe not if we fail. So these are the kind of decisions and options that can happen in the game. And I'm not sure which is the best way to do it. But So since you helped me and we did a really good success, uh, we're both getting to prestige. You're getting 62. I'm getting a 62. And I'm continuing my quest line. That's your card. So you're, we're both going to gain two. So one, cha Chasing two. Legends Part 3 is now in my hand. So I can't abandon this. I have to go one space east of Rheinstam to find White Fang. I can do it with a help. It has the partner symbol on it. So that is in my hand. I'm gonna, don't let me do that one. I don't want to continue anymore no, on stream. No, we don't I don't want to spoil too much of it. But uh, we're also, both of us are determined. So this is a character status. And you're resolute and upbeat. No matter what kind of hardships await, you feel like you can take it all with the strength of vigor of three speckled bears. In a skill check, you may discard this to get one success. So it doesn't matter which skill check. And if you have a frayed status, discard it as discard to return it to the library. So we can get rid of an afraid. So this will just sit here until we use it, basically. Um, but this is the kind of thing, like the little tool set you're building up. And why at the beginning we're like having trouble with skills. But as we build up a little, you know, a tableau of different abilities and things, um, you're able to kind of choose options and, you know, succeed at things better than if you try things you're not ready for. Makes sense, right? Amy says, soon I'll go and edit the odds live in favor of Rob just before he reveals the outcome. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Would love to see his reaction when getting three prestige with zero to one outcomes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so good. I even rolled zero successes and I still win. Yay. No, I'm just kidding. Either. That's funny. I'm just joking around. I know you're joking, Sammy. That's awesome. <laughs> That's funny. And then another player plays like right after and they're like, I didn't get three on that option. Yeah, I got the same thing, but I didn't get that. How the, how the heck is Rob getting all these successes and prestiges and stuff? Does he make sense? And then when Mel does the same thing, she doesn't. All right. Uh, okay. So that uh, was that. That's it, you right? Got, you got, we each got, got two prestige? I did, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to move the token to Monday. Yep. I'm moving in the app to Monday. Oh. Anything happening on Monday? Nothing's happening. Nothing yet. Tomorrow. Okay. Something's happening tomorrow, though. Oh, we got a new subscriber, Underlord. Uh-oh. That sounds evil. Awesome name. Underlord, welcome. Welcome. 
Pull up a chair, take a seat, check out what we got on the table. Welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. Thank you for your support. Welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, best game ever. <laughs> uh, Darren has a question. You might have answered this, but are there a limit to the number of items and special abilities like determined you have? No limit on the abilities. There's a limit on three quests you can hold and be, and be available to you at a time. Uh, your abilities, there's no limit. Your um, companions, I believe there's no limit. Uh, so status is no limit. Companions, no limit, I'm pretty sure. But the um, items, uh, the specific like brown back item cards, uh, you're limited to three spaces that are shown on your player board. So once you draw a fourth, you have to get rid of one, um, but you can discard and use abilities on one if they have discard abilities at that time. You don't have to completely lose it. And uh, yeah, so you do have to manage some inventory. But I believe your statuses stay with you until they're gone or you use them. And I believe if I didn't use Determined at the end of this playthrough, I think this just gets put into my save slot. Because it doesn't say discard at the bottom. But I could be wrong. Maybe you have to get rid of these at the end. I, I just forget. So we'll, we'll, we'll see at the end when we're doing the save system. Uh, you guys will see the steps involved there and you get an understanding of how you kind of clean up the game, save it for the next time and how it's persistent. Um, I just don't remember. We did it last night, but I just... I forget, and then we reset it, so it's, I'm, I'm, con I'm a little misremembering. And then the first one, which we saved between, that was like a week ago, so... Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do it here on stream, you guys will see. And I think for negative effects, such as my Shocked, if you got another Shocked, you have to just take that new one and, and it would go for another three days. Yeah, you'd reset. You'd yeah, reset yeah. to whatever that is, yeah. Oh, you'd get to keep Determined, okay. Okay, that's perfect, so if you don't use it... Okay. Yeah, limit of three items, three quests, no limits on anything else. Awesome. <laughs> Underlords here says, Hello. Sup? I just catch you live. I'm hooked with Gloomhaven Jaws Line episodes, and, and you have still watching. I love to watch both of you play. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. We love to have you both you watching also. Thank, thank you, you Underlord, for the sweet. kind words. Yeah, very nice thank feedback. You. We thank love you. to play. So yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time. Most of the time. Right. Okay, so um What are you doing on your turn? So my quest, if I were to go for my quest, is all the way down here in Arin. Do you have any quests that are in the top half, maybe? We can just kind of march that way together. I have Smoldering Wood that's in Yezden. And that's not your personal quest, correct? No. Okay. So maybe do you want to... Wanna, Yezden's over here. Do you want to try to make it that way together? Um, or I could try to make it all the way down here, but I don't even think I'll make it all the way down there before the game ends. This. Oh, Mel had a question actually, Sammy, uh, while you're here. Uh, the port symbol oh, yeah. that's on some of these locations, is that something that's not in the demo or something we just haven't seen? Yeah, because I don't remember seeing anything yeah, with the Mel port Yeah, when we were playing yesterday, she's like, wait, what are these port symbols for? We, we haven't come across anything for that. But I assume it helps you like kind of travel around the board. Yeah, we thought that maybe board. it helps you get from one port space to another or like from one port space down here. You probably need some kind of item that you can buy yeah. somewhere or, or win or something. I just didn't remember seeing it anywhere. Don't spoil it. Yeah, we're just curious. You don't if, even have to say if it's Yeah, we were just something. curious. We were just curious. If, if like it's something we can even see in, in our playthrough. Uh... And yes, Daniel's asking, so this is a more of a sandbox game that you can save some progress? Yes, it's a story-driven, persistent world from game to game. So it passes every time you play. It, it progresses month to month throughout the year. There's a summer side of the board, a winter side of the board. Locations, there's a summer and winter side. So depending on the month you're in, uh, you know, the, the landscape will change, the options will change. Uh, and the library changes, your save slot per character changes, your skills stay, and the cards stay from game to game. So as the game changes, and you can play with different players, and they can pick up a character, and that character's gold persists, their skills, their items, all that stuff carries over to the next game as you you un, unveil the world and have different things happen. And like the event deck will change, the quest deck will change, new things will come into game, you'll progress storylines. It's just like you're playing an open world game, just unveiling the story as you play, which is really neat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's exactly that, a, a persistent like kind of sandbox game. And Sammy also answered that question. Something you haven't seen, it seems. Storybook can refer to them when needed. Okay, that's yeah, okay, cool. Perfect. I was just, yeah, I just thought, oh, yeah, we've we never seen anything that referred yeah, to them we, yet. So yeah. that's great. In two plays, we've not seen anything that references those anchor symbols. So we're like, hmm, maybe there's yeah. not in the game yet hmm. that we know of. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm cool. intrigued. But we need to find one of those so we can get across <laughs> the board, assuming easier. But yeah. again, we're in nowhere that has a port symbol up here no. anyway. So are you thinking about going to Yazdan? Because if you are, I'll go up that way with you. I'm just thinking that I don't think I can do much on my own, at least for the, another two rounds anyways. 
but I can we can try to do another quest together before the game ends. Just wander around, do things, visit things. You can, you know, visit things on this location. You can go explore somewhere. Yeah, we don't have to be so like, you know, got to get all the quests done no, and get all the prestige. No, yes, you should be kind of doing that. We're trying to get the most prestige we can. Well, we can just show some cool things on the stream, do some different things, whatever you want to do. Okay. You're like, it's totally open. You do to... whatever you want. That's what's so awesome. I'm going to move across the top, at least to Yazen. Maybe I can even start this one. Maybe it's something not far. But I've already explored the market here and I have no gold left. I think I'm going to start moving. One, two. Maybe I'll stop and do something here. I'm interested in these hot springs. Yeah, that's a bit similar to the verbs on items in the storybook. I like to leave so mystery for players to explore and discover on their own. What does that mean? What does that tag do? That kind of thing. Yes. And, and okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. It's all about discovery. That's totally fine. That's why I didn't want to know exactly i just wanted to like we noticed it and we just didn't know if it was like not in our version of the rules maybe yet but the art on the board was finished that's all i was curious about was like you know if if it could appear but uh, obviously you wouldn't put it all over the board in cards if it didn't have some kind of gameplay effect yeah. i would assume yeah, i'm intrigued cool. okay yeah, i want to know what it does now but don't tell us okay so i'm going to end on the forest there so we're going to look at this Oh, this event says Monday. And if I look at our calendar, it is Monday. Oh, it's Monday. So we're going to stop there, which is 118. 118. Hopefully this is good. Let's check out the adventure book entry 118. Okay. Late one night as you're out and about, a white polecat gracefully steps before you, flanked by a group of goons. You turn to steer away from the sinister trio, but behind you, a whole band of thugs emerge from the shadows, forming a living wall that traps you between the two groups. I am Kuhek, an intelligence officer of Gemstead. The polecat offers as she shows you a piece of parchment. It bears a completely faithful and detailed drawing of your face. We learned that you are a spy in the service of Reimstein, plotting conspiracies against your empire, our empire. So if you value your life, you will come quietly. Kuhek's underlings pull out cruel looking weapons. Do you have a tired tag? I don't think so, but let me just triple check here. What no. are you doing? You've met, you've, I, I you've don't ticked know. some people off. You're on like a wanted poster I here. I don't know. So you don't have tired tag? I do not. Uh-oh. Oh so you could God. convince her you were a double agent, which is hard. It's a communication test, so you need at least three successes. Okay. You could fight your way through the underlings, which is a medium might test. And again, we have convince, we have fight. We've seen those before. We know those are in the game. Or you could buy her underling's loyalty for 12 gold. I have no gold, so it's not that option. No one's shopping and spent everything. Oh, and the things I buy aren't even helping me with this. Convince and, and, and these guys don't take credit, so I'm sorry. Convince and fight. Convince and fight. I do not. Hey, Matouche. Okay, I do not have any cards that will help me with this at all. So we're looking solely at my... Um, uh. I can just put it down here. We're looking solely at my board. If I did the communication, which is hard... I would be rolling two purple dice, three black dice. You if need I did three of those symbols. If, if I did the fight, I would be rolling a pink, a yellow, and three, and three black dice. But you only need but two successes. But I only successes. need two successes, and I'm rolling. Hmm, I think I'm going to try to fight my way out of this. Uh oh. But you got to also think what I've learned from playing this game so far <laughs> is always think about the bad thing. Oh, I'm determined. You are right. Oh, you can get a free success if off I that. discard this. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. So mm. always, I find this game has. Oh this... no, skill dice. Yes, dragon. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No oh, skill dice. Oh no, you're rolling all black. Oh no, skill dice. You're right. I forgot about that dragon. Thank you. So, but either way, it's the one you need less successes for. So it's probably the one you want to choose. Yeah, we're gonna fight. I but think. you have to also go with what is the worst outcome thematically. I find this game, and I, I'm pretty sure it's designed this way, is like some of the other story games we played. Is think thematically like. What would happen possibly if you chose to fight but failed? Do you want to see what that is and risk that? Or maybe just try to convince them you're a double agent. What's the worst that could happen, you know? Or try to buy their loyalty with no money. I don't think you can pick that option you unless can. you have the gold, I'm pretty sure. But no, you can't. You know what I mean? You gotta think like, you know, which, which kind of character do I wanna be? Which choices do I wanna be? What could the outcomes possibly be even if you fail, you know? So it's like kind of fun, like seeing the outcomes of these things. I think it's just hilarious, but uh, yeah. So you want to fight still? Uh, I think it's our easiest option because as being determined, I only need to roll one versus having to roll two. Okay. 
Oh, but you're right that if I fight and fail, it's probably worse than if I try to convince and fail. Oh. Do I let the chat decide this for me? I don't know. Yeah, we can. Yeah, you guys can help me decide this because, right. again, I'm, without my skills, it's a lot harder to decide. Oh. Because if I fight and fail... It's probably worse. So you guys can vote in the live chat. I put a poll in there. We'll leave it in there for like 30 seconds or so. So go ahead in the live chat if you're watching. Click whichever option. Convince or fight. Uh, again, Mel's rolling all black dice. So literally on each die is one of each of the six skill symbols. So she has a one in six chance on each die to get what she needs. A hard test needs at least three successes to pass. And a medium test needs at least two successes to pass. But I am determined, so I have one auto success yeah. if I need it. Yeah, she has this card right here, which we got before. So she could, in a skill check, you may discard to get one free success. So she can pull one out if she needs, but... Mm. Again, Matuj, it's not, of course, fight. No. It's not always about which one you can succeed at the best. It's, it's like, again, what will the failure be also? And like, which how bad will it the be? Most? Like, how risky do you want to be and stuff like that, right? So it's like, it's fun doing the story and seeing what happens. But yes, from a gamer point perspective and like statistics and all that kind of stuff, your odds, you know, you probably go with the fight, but. If I had all my dice choices, I definitely would pick the fight. But again, it's, it's like, <sighs> you could have some fun and just pick random things and, and see what happens, you know? You could I get know. super lucky and get all, all the stuff you need, but. All right, so we're going to end the poll in the chat. And it looks like... <laughs> it's all good, Matouche. Matouche said, I have no idea. I just pushed a button. Uh, all right, so fight is 52%. Thank you, everyone that voted right. in the chat. We appreciate it. Thank you. So Mel is going with the fight. fight. Or the chat. So the chat is to blame. You guys are to blame what happens here. So this can't be on Mel anymore. So I'm going to fight my way through the underlings. Okay. Oh, yeah. So we need to at least roll at least one. Uh, we did not roll any, so I have my one re-roll of all my dice, And again, which I you're will forced do. to re-roll everything. You can't just pick and choose unless you have abilities that let you do that. And we got one, we got one, we got one. So, so do you want to discard uh, determine then? Yes. We'll put that in there. I will discard determine, I will put that back. Okay. Uh, which will give me two. So we got two successes. Whoa, oh, oh, hold on, hold whoa. on. What is this? So this, the story master would be reading this while Mel's being the active player. So I would be reading this off a tablet, let's say. Uh, if the adventurer is in a settlement, so I don't have to read this out loud to her, but I, I would just do this stuff. If an adventurer is in a settlement. No, I'm in the forest. Okay. And any items, so you didn't even know this before picking the option, which is so cool. And this is the first time I think we've seen this. And any items with firearm tag were used. All swords count as... Wiggles. Whatever the heck symbol I've never seen that before are. Instead. Okay, well, this So you're not count. in a settlement and you didn't use anything with a firearm tag. No, no. So my... Oh, this is so cool. I've, I've never <laughs> seen this. This is... I've seen where it's sn snuckily threw out some options. So this is something I didn't mention before, but uh, you are not supposed to touch these dice. Once you roll uh, something, you leave them. Like once you've settled on your roll, you leave it for the rest of the scene unless it tells you to roll for another test. So there could be things that pop up and do things based on other results you have. Yeah. Which is so clever and so cool. And it's not common that we've seen. I saw it happen one time before, but this is like on another level. Dragon says stun. I mean, it does look like stun in other games or noise, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, okay. But we don't get to pick any of those, unfortunately. If you were doing it, because you have a firearm, don't yeah, you? Yeah, if, oh. if, I, if I used it, yes. That's too bad, okay. But I did get two. We got two swords. Yeah, two legit. So we're picking that option. So it just, we thought there might have been three options based on all the tests we've seen, but now there's six options that could have happened. That's, this, That's cool. This is crazy. I love it. All right. Uh, the only way to escape the situation is through the line of thugs blocking your way. You fiercely attack, fiercely, furiously attack the group, scattering enough of them to open a path through them. Exploiting the opening you just made, you run off into the night. Behind you, you hear the hook to. Too heck, screaming, the spy cannot be allowed to escape. The remaining goons give chase, but as you have a head start, you lose them shortly after. 
Hours later, when the coast is clear, you return to the spot where Tuhuk was looking for answers. The only trace of the altercation is the discarded weapons of the thugs you downed and something familiar. You may swap one of your skill marks for a might skill mark. So to help you out in these kind of tests in the future, you can swap one. Uh, mm. And then you got to give uh, the specific card. What symbol? That's the symbol of... I don't know what that symbol is. Oh, oh that's, yeah, these that's are a card related. Our, our card specific. Yeah, when asked to take this card with this icon, pick the one matching the active player's adventure. Oh, okay, okay, I get okay. it, I get it. Uh, yeah, I remember that. If unavailable, you give a random 200 instead, and then you're going to return the drawn event 78 back to the library so that we can't run into that event again. Uh, for now, at least, that we know of. Um... And then, as you see here, we'll shuffle 173 back uh, from the library into the event deck. So now our event deck's changing, which I'm sure there's something in that new event card that progresses this story. So this is how we see the persistent worlds start to change based on decisions made and stuff, which is really cool. So, sorry, these ones, I just think we might have made a mistake. Because we only have the two, the two that we didn't play with. But we've had these before. But I don't know, they're not here. So we may have put something in wrong. Right, because we had these in our last. Uh, they might be here, maybe. I don't know. Sorry, sorry. That's all good. We can figure it out. No, they're not there. So maybe I just. Ugh. So you're looking for two, two, threes. They might not be in there. But I thought we had. Uh, because they're not finished, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. Those are just items. Yeah, and I thought we had these in oh, maybe our last do. game. So I might have just put them in the wrong. It's a lot. That's okay. We can figure it out. Uh, Dragon, yes, it does have true solo. You can play with a single uh, character, 100% true solo, yes. And you can wander around. And the cool part is, since it's a persistent game, each session you can play with a different amount of characters uh, or a different amount of players each session, and the game keeps progressing, and the world keeps changing, and you keep, you, you keep a character's like gold, skills, and items. Uh, so even if you're playing solo, I could play as more in one session, complete one, you know, week of whatever play, and then the next, and then the game saves its state, and the next time I come back, it could be in the month of June, I could play another character and progress their story uh, as a solo player. And then I could, for the third session I sit down, I could go back to, you know, more and try to push his story forward and see what's going on. Yeah, we should have all four copies. We did yeah, see we them. Yeah, we did, we did. I think I just filed it wrong. So the other thing I can do is I can just play with one of these because I know it's in here. I just filed it in the wrong spot. Yeah, because I think we saw them in our playthrough we before. We did, but weird that both of them are. So both of them are. I looked at all the other two, three options. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's just us resetting it. We yeah, obviously I just reset. messed something up. And I put both of them together wherever they are. That's okay. Sorry. Uh, another thing I want to say was um, the cool part about the adventure book, so that whole thing we saw, for it being in a web app, I like the way it hides this kind of stuff, that if we're playing a physical book, you might accidentally wander with your eyeballs and see. So there's no chance of that in here, which I like a lot. That's the one thing I love about apps in games in general. My favorite thing, like in Mansion of Madness 2nd Edition, one of our favorite, like one of our first real good app games we played, this isn't an app-driven game, mind you, but just having an app instead of a physical book, it allows it to hide things from the player so you don't accidentally know what's coming next or you know what happens on your test result. But in a game like Tainted Grail, we've seen where you can like you know read down and see what's there and maybe accidentally see on the page. Yeah, you, you like keywords will jump off the page. Like it wasn't really well, an issue, but I see people talking about that online. Well, but in, there is an app for that also, right? Yeah, when we played. Um... Was it Gloomhaven that we played where Janet was telling us the results? Because yeah, they were on the page yep, and we would have been line. able yeah, to yeah. see. Yeah, Jaws of Lion. And Janet had her book open and was telling us the results so we didn't know. I can just play with one of these. I know it's there. I'm so sorry. No, of course I do that. It's okay. It's all good. Yeah, you have to be careful with the cards in this game and put them in the right order or it could like completely mess with things. But uh, the, we'll just find it. I'm just looking quickly. If we don't find it, yeah, we'll go with your... Could they, be... They'll be together as well. Uh, they're in the 200s. Oh, whoops. 
So we randomly could have got them as items, Mel. How dare oh. you? Oopsies. Trying to cheat. Okay, I so see what's up. I'll take mine and then I'll put these back. All on. good. It's all Thank good. Thank you. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> Crisis averted. Yes, it's my bad. All right, so that you've got so uh, all I only these things. Did, no. Oh, okay. I'm too, okay, and then uh, it is available. Return the event to the bottom. Back to the library. And then take yeah. one seventy three. Yep. Well, you do that. Uh, Diana in the chat saying this looks like a great game to play with friends and family. I just backed it. Plus, I'm subscribing to your channel. Really enjoy your gameplay and eager to check out your other videos. Diana, oh, thank, thank you, you so much, much for the kind words. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it definitely, I said that at the start of the stream too. It definitely feels like a, since it's only like a two complexity out of five on, on BGG, like around there, it's definitely more of like you want to play an adventure sandboxy persistent game with your family or lighter gamers, you know, like, uh, you know, ch children or people who are new to the hobby. Totally, this game is not bogged down by heavy rules. It's really like streamlined, really light. Not really, really light, but like, you know, it, the, the game doesn't get in the way of itself and it just flows around the table and everyone can kind of have fun watching and getting involved in reading the story out and that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, definitely a good family game for sure. Okay. I showed it to our daughter and she was kind of like, this is like, I want to show her because we play like these big epic campaign games. Like, you know, we're just talking Jaws of the Lion, Tainted Grail, this kind of stuff. Uh, and those games, you know, she's played with us, but she doesn't really care. But when you start putting like the animal folk world, uh, you know, she likes that kind of art and then the stories and stuff. They're, you know, the stories aren't exactly like 100% family friendly. You have thugs beating up people and robbing and sneaking and breaking into places and fighting and all that. But it's still, you know, it's pretty family friendly. It's yeah, the mechanics are family friendly. Yeah, sorry. I initially I put it on the bottom, but I have put it back in the deck. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, it's back in the library. And I have 173, which is a new event I'm shuffling in. So take 173 from the library and shuffle it into the event deck. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I did put 78 back into the library. Everybody hey, it's it. the sorry, cabra. Sorry. It's cabra saying it's light, not light, light, or barely light. And it's tough on these streets. Got to learn early. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, train your kids how to exactly. deal with deal with vultures and ravens trying to rob you on the street. Definitely some good life lessons. Here. Yeah. Definitely a nice family game you could play. I think right? so. Right. Definitely. Well, it looks pretty on the table. Yeah. That's for easy sure. to set up. Easy to put away. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. And you'll get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I did give 223. Yes, 223. And then I did return that and return take... 78, took 173 and shuffled it in. Yeah. We're good? We're good. I'm ending the scene. Yep. And then I can just show my... I did get a, a wanted poster. So I'm shady again. Uh, high self-confidence can be a dangerous weapon. Only... As a, how do we say this again? Azala. Azala can use this card. Intimidate, get two successes, and roll the 12 sided die. One to two, place 115 from the library on the notice board. Uh, and I get a fight, reroll up to two die. Okay. Oh, that's an item. Oh, that's an item. Hmm. Now I have the decision of either throwing something away. Nothing I have on the items I currently have have a discard. So I would just be replacing. Uh, you don't have to take that though. No, but I do like it gives me a fight. Mm -hmm. And the intimidate. Depends what kind of character you want to be, Mel. Do you want to be a little shady? Well, clearly that's the way this is going. <laughs> I'm not trying, but it's going in that direction. You can always discard any <laughs> item too. You do not have to keep that stuff. I know. So if you want to get rid of the shady things, just in case you're going to go do a mission that says, are you shady? And then bad things start to happen because you're shady. You can always at any time get rid of any items so you don't have them. But you're just not going to get any money for them or anything. But if you go and sell them at a market, for example, you possibly could get some money back instead. Uh, I think I'm going to go <laughs> full-on shady. So my cloak is making me shady and my wanted poster, and we're going to return 150. That's back. why they call me Mel Shady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Okay, and then my determined was discarded, so this is going to also go back. 62. Okay. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> One more turn. Oh, actually, next round I'll have my dice back. Yeah, so that's good. That's All right, good. my turn. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, it took a long time. We're trying to get to Yesden, I think. So I could go to that place you're on. 
going to go the same path. Or, uh, yeah, I mean, we might as well kind of stick a little bit together. Yeah, let's, I'll, I'll just move one, two. Imagine it has a partner on your event card. I don't know I if don't that know. happens, uh, but. Uh, we'll find out. I'll do an event card. Let's just go on Metaphorist, and it's and also it's... Monday. Is the oh. adventurer wounded? Are you no, wounded? I'm not wounded. Okay, and we are in the forest, so you're going to go to 217. We're not in a settlement, not in grasslands. We're in a forest. Yeah, you're just going to go top to bottom for those that have joined late. Uh, so I am going to where? Sorry. 217. 217. I'm going to put that right in front of you. I'll just scroll. 217. While you are heading through the woods, the sound of cracking twigs and muffled curses raises your curiosity. Probing deeper into the woods, you hunt for the source of the sound. As you look around, a tree where Rukka seems to be emanating from, you are met by the muzzle of a blunderbuss. Behind it is an old, gruff badger bearing fangs and dressed in the worn-out remains of a Jemstead military uniform. At his feet is a sack of gold and a twisted charred remains of a pistol that misfired. The left leg of his pant is shredded and burned. The fur under is stained red. Now you best take a step back and go on your way, youngin. What can you do so he will not shoot you in the face? Whoa. All right, so being, Serious. being children friendly maybe is not the right, <laughs> the right words I was saying before. Uh, do I have the cumbersome tag? Whoa. No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay, so that's a no. If you inspect, each first aid tag gives you one success. I do not have anything that's helping me with first aid. So I could inspect the badger's wound, and obviously having a first aid item would help me with that, thematically, right on the nose. I could intimidate the badger, which I do have an intimidate off my flintlock pistol, which could give me one success. Intimidate with my gun. Uh, I do have two blue, uh, two level two in communication, which that is like a good test for me. Or I could back away slowly. Come on, I'm not backing away. I got a flintlock pistol. And, and I'm one of those lizards that can do the whole, you know, so like, I'm going to intimidate this guy. Come on, man. All right. So let's do the medium. Do you have an intimidate keyword? Yeah. So I get one success, like okay, I said, perfect, off my perfect. flintlock pistol. So I am going to roll, uh, so I can roll two blue, which is the one that could have two communication on a side and two of them. I can use the, um, knowledge one green that I have, cause it's, it's adjacent, so it'll have some knowledge symbols on it, better than black dice, and then two black. So here we go. And I got two. Two. Which is medium. Technically, that's a pass. I got a free success off my flintlock pistol, assuming I'm not going to get punished for using the gun <laughs> and turn this into some other symbol. Who knows? Oh, yes, I do have the risky intuition. I keep forgetting about this. I think I've only used this like one time before because I always forget I have it. Uh, I could use this one time per playthrough ability that each character has. Uh, this is my own one. I could discard to get one success and roll the d12 as many times as I want. On a one to three, I get minus, that's a minus one. That's what it looks like when you get minus one skill and you stop rolling. Or on a four to 12, I get one success for every time. So I keep pushing my luck. Are you going to get another chance to do this test before? Well, hmm, hmm. Like, I mean, we're, we're on Monday, we end on Friday. I might as well, right? Yeah, let's just use it to show it. Yeah. All right. Risky intuition. <laughs> it's risky. <laughs> it's risky, all right. All right, so uh, I'm going to stay with this roll of just getting two successes. Okay, I have one free off this. So I'm already at three. I don't think I would use it. Because even if you roll the minus one... You still technically pass. I know, but you kind of want to use this when you're like really trying to make it happen. And, and this is like the first test of the scene. So I could have something else come after this that's maybe a bigger deal. But maybe it's not the same test. Right? Yeah. Because it has to be a specific test. I don't know. What if I get, what if I get shocked and I can't use my symbols? This is the, like, that's what this is for, right? Yeah. I don't know. Normally I wouldn't do this. Oh. Oh. It's a copper saying save, save it. it. That sounds like a Rob card. Yes, it is. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. Yeah, you do already have three. Yeah. 
But again, in this game, Sakabra, you could go over. There could be something that if I get six successes, I get some amazing result. Which is going to be funny when you press that reveal outcomes and it's Yeah, not, yeah. It, I can blame Sakabra, though. So it's, it, I'm all good with <laughs> that. Okay. I'll, I'll, it's sleep, not your... I'll sleep well tonight. Okay, it's not your decision. Oh, and I can blame Brian. Brian's also saying same. Okay. Right. Oh, Brian, you're back from vacation. I hope it was well. Yes, we missed you in... What was the place uh, here? We missed you in... Oh, my gosh. Brain fart. Oh, the dog, the Barkham. Oh, Barkham, Barkham Horror. Yeah, the Barkham Horror playthrough. We we thought you would yeah. be punny to have you there, and you weren't there. Yeah, we missed. So you. we had to come up with our own puns, and it, was, it wasn't People as good. People were trying, but yeah. yeah, we missed you, Brian. Oh, but yo, he's saying risk it, use it. <laughs> Yogi. So you have you have Sakabra on one side of your shoulder and Yogi on the other. Who do you listen to? Well, I like Yogi's decks in Arkham. Same. Uh, he seems to want to help us. So <laughs> he has our good intentions in mind. I think I'm pretty sure. Sakabra did say it first, though. Yeah. All right. We're going to save it. We're going to oh, save it. Oh, actually, and you have Brian on the save it too. Yeah, so, you so we'll have just two save against it. one. We'll, we'll save sorry. it for now. All right. So I'm going to take... Oh, see if I had oh. four plus, it could have been better. Oh, well. Oh, well. So I'll have three successes, which is the same as rolling two. Trying your best to intimidate the badger into lowering his weapon, he just glances back at you seemingly to be indifferent. You think that scares me, youngin? You do not flinch and maintain your intimidating posture. The badger holds a stern gaze on you, but an unsure smile surfaces on his face and he cracks a nervous laugh. Tough, are you? Fine, youngin. This is what you want? Scooping up several coins, the badger tosses them at you. Take them. Take them and leave. You figure you're getting some money and not getting shot in the face <laughs> to be good enough an outcome. You slowly withdraw from the badger and return the way you came. That's amazing. You gain three gold, so the max I can ever have is 20. This puts me to 17, so... Uh, <laughs> you want yeah. to share some of your wealth? I have zero. <laughs> if we're partnering in something that it comes up with, we can I know, do that. I know, I uh, know. We can trade if we're on the same space. We, I, I don't need, but I'm just I saying... Can, I can trade you some. I, I can give you some, 100%. We can do that right now. <laughs> yeah, you can trade any time on your turn, just like when you can pick up quests and stuff. I always forget that. Um, and we can return the drawn event to the bottom of the deck. Okay. So that could happen again. So now knowing that... What was the tag at the beginning? I forget cumbersome. what it was. Cumbersome. So knowing that, I could get a cumbersome tag, realize that, and I could start going to forest uh, spaces on the board and hoping to see to that. see that. It's on the bottom now, so it's not like going to happen today. But they do get shuffled sometimes. They do get shuffled, but it could happen in a future playthrough. So keeping that in mind, if you remember the stuff, you take notes, you know, you could, you could keep in mind that that's a possibility later, uh, which is kind of cool. All right, uh, so let's trade here. Yeah, I don't want to have to wait though because technically that's the end of your turn. No, no, uh, I think there is trading. Right, let me find it here. There is trading for sure. I'll find it. I know I read it. Yeah, I also I also read it. I just thought that you could only do it. It's no, it's, in, it's in the part that's like when you're on your turn, you can. Yeah, right here, right here. So on your turn, while not resolving a scene, okay. you may do any of the following any number of times. He's made done even if you have moves left or at the end of your turn. Okay, okay. So you end can trade turn. with other players if your figures are on the same space. While trading, both of you may give and exchange gold and items. So if we're trying to make me the more shady guy and I have stuff that helps you with something you're doing, or if we're trying to spread out the words, so you know if I have like three fight items and you have none, maybe we trade to kind of spread out the love. Yeah. Uh, and and make us both like kind of jack of all trades, or you can really focus on stuff. So there's lots of game here. It's 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 neat. Uh, both of you must agree to the trade before it's executed. So this applies to competitive or cooperative modes in this game. Any promises about future trades or actions are not binding. So of course I would say, yeah, Mel, uh, give me that gun. I'll give you a gun when I'll give you something cool when I find it later. I'll give you I'll give you ten gold once I find ten gold. Trust me. And then I don't have to give it later, which is fun. Uh, and you can pick up quests from the notice board, as we talked about, and abandon quests. Okay. So any of that stuff can be done, like, kind of any time on your turn, unless you're in the middle of one of those scenes in the adventure book. Okay? It's very sweet of you if you do want to share yeah, your yeah. gold. How much would you well, like to I share with I me? I don't want to do something and gain, like, eight gold, and I can only take three of it. That sucks. Yeah, I have zero, so I... So I'll give you seven gold, and I'll, I'll just go back to ten. Seven, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, we're working co cooperatively in this mode. Yeah. If we're competitive, I would just take gold and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> no gold for you. And just laugh at you when <laughs> you have no gold. Yeah. We... That's just how I roll. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Brian Weaver says, have fun, guys. Game looks like a blast. I'm at work and my next appointment's here. Oh, that's so too bad. Quit slacking, Brian. Get to work. <laughs> thank you, though. Get to work. Stop slacking on YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Have fun. Uh, Darren says... With how big the G is in the web app, 
It almost looks like it says lands of Galzir. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the logo reminds me of, uh, like, the Legend of Zelda. Something about it reminds me of, like, the old NES, like, Zelda game. Something about it. I don't know if it's exactly it, but it just gives me that vibe. But this game kind of gives me Zelda vibes, too. Like, Breath of the Wild wandering around, or even the original Zelda. You know, it's wandering around, finding random caves and holes, and old men, and you know, trying to sell you stuff. Random merchants, like, hidden in a bush. Like, just this, this that game has all that. Uh, you know, except for the choices you're making, you know, they, they, they can persist throughout the game, which is neat. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you a massage later. Psych. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that was the end of your turn. So we're now moving our low marker to Tuesday. And when we get to Tuesday, we'll see that we have a token here. So this token is on my shocked card. So Yay. I now have satisfied that, and I can discard that now. Yep. So put this back. So I am no longer shocked. I can now use all my skill scan, and now I can play the game. <laughs> and for those who are curious, like there's no like discard pile. It took me a sec to figure this out. But discard is a keyword. Anything in blue on a card, we have abandon, delay, discard, hasten, and movement. It tells you on the back of the rule book what they do. So discard, when a card gets discarded, return it to its place in the library. So it's not like normal discarding in a card game where you just kind of throw it in a pile. If the card has multiple effects which require discarding the card, only one of those effects can be resolved. And discarding always refers to the card it is written on. So just letting you guys know, there's that's why you'll see discard in the blue, because it actually has a little... It's different than normal discarding, like in a, in a game usually. Okay. Yeah, it's now, dangerous to go alone out there. Exactly. It is. it is. I now have access to all my skills again, so that's exciting. Um, I would like to move... For one, yes. and I stop think I'm going to stop in Jabbar, and I'm going to visit the hot springs. Oh, I gave you seven gold, now you're going to go and visit some <laughs> hot springs? Go on and have a sauna vacation, Mel? <laughs> this is what you're doing with my money? Uh, Holy. I mean, what you kind gave of it game? to me, you didn't tell me what I had to use it for. What kind of game we got running here? This is, oh man. Maybe what? this is not going to cost any money. It's location six, or, it's, yes, or scene six? Scene, scene six. six, yes. Yeah, maybe it's a free hot spring. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Well, I mean, at the time of, yeah. All right. The Inn of Wet Feathers is the main attraction of Chabar, city of hot springs. Relaxing pipe music can be heard even before you enter. And upon going through the doors, you're welcomed by the deep bow of an emperor penguin, the innkeeper, Ranut. He squawks enthusiastically about how busy it is this time of year and how proud he is of his little resort. My staff can barely keep up with all the peak season work. He uh, looks, sorry, he looks at you for a brief moment. You don't happen to need a job, do you? So your options, you can spend a day at the inn for, <laughs> for two gold. Uh, spend my hard-earned money. Oh, man. Oh, we did forget to change the day. No, I changed it on here, in but I think app. in the Yeah, app. it's fine. Yeah, I'll do it when I get back to the thing. Yeah, I keep forgetting. Mm. Uh, thank you, Edgar. You could clean the baths, which is doing some work, doing a medium survival check for two successes, or you can help at the inn, which we don't know what happens there. Hmm. This is interesting. I don't know that, I don't think I want to clean the baths, but I'm, I'm willing to help at the inn, but, or spend my day at the inn. I'll help, I'll help at the inn, I think. Let's save the money. Maybe I can make some more money helping. Okay. Exactly, vassals, for money. I'll help at the end for the money, if it gives me money. Clean the bath? No, help oh, at help the end. Oh, help at the end, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, the amount of work that goes into managing an inn surprises you. There's laundry to do, floors to mop, dishes to wash. It won't make the most exciting chapter in your memoirs, if you ever write any, but at least Ranut pays well. He also insists that you stay the night at the inn, an offer you gladly accept. It definitely is nice to sleep on a proper bed every once in a while. You gain eight gold. End nice. of scene. All right. So I have 15 gold now. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. So what day are we supposed to be on? Tuesday? Yeah. Oopsie. Wow. Okay, okay. Uh, all, right. all right, what am I doing? It's all you now. Hmm. I think I'll just pass on through. One. 
two. Uh, and I'll go stop on a little forest event. Okay. Is it, it Tuesday? It is Tuesday. All right. 119. All right. That's fun. I love when that happens. Oh, like it's, it's rare <laughs> to line up, but when it does, it's like, this better be good. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> so here's to show you, this is officially a prototype. It, it doesn't look like it production-wise. Everything here seems like a complete game. But it is not, like we said at the start of the stream, not every scene entry is done, not every card leads somewhere yet, they're still developing the game. So if you back it on GameFound, links in the description or in the chat, you'll see there's still more game to develop. So, you know, it's, you're not just pre-ordering a game, this is a project that still needs more work to be done and to be completed. So, it just says pick another one. So, we could just draw another event card, or we'll just go down and we'll just pick the different uh, symbol. So yeah. So if we go down, you are on a forest, no settlement grass. So fifty nine. So we go fifty nine. We got excited. You saw how we got excited there for a minute, and <laughs> it then it's like wow, <laughs> wow. So yes, we eagerly want to play the full game eventually when it's ready, yes. as you can tell. Uh, yeah, I want to see what happens on a Tuesday when I go to that location. <laughs> All right, cold sun showers leak from the summer sky, dripping down onto you through the branches of the forest you're in. Along the road that is taking you through the woods, you spot something up ahead. Drawing close to inspect it, you see its shred, uh, it shred of fabric impaled, out, or impaled on the limb of a bush. I think you see a shred of fabric impaled on the limb of a bush. Uh, one player, if you search, each scent tag gives you one success. I don't have a scent tag, but remember, I have my once per scenario risky intuition. Oh, that we that could get me successes. Uh, it's a risky one, but I could choose the hard test to hopefully get three successes minimum. Mm hmm. Or I could figure out what happened here. Medium. That one's probably the easier one. For me, based on my dice, but we saw even I can still roll nothing on that. <laughs> Sammy says, "I'm sorry for the letdown." No, it's oh, all no good. no need it's to all apologize. Good. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm just the amount around. that you've put into this. Yeah, it's no, crazy. No, this no. Is prototype is like a mind blowing the amount yeah. of work that's gone into it already. Uh, that's the first time we've come across that too, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah because we there were some cards in our prototype to be to be transparent. Uh, we got more cards, probably twenty or so cards we had to take out of our prototype. That I guess at the time it went to print, uh, those storylines and stuff weren't ready yet, which is totally cool. Which is also is good for prototyping that the book is digital, so technically as things are added, we could play in a couple of weeks from now, and maybe some of these entries are in there. I would assume, maybe not. I don't know, but yeah. So that's kind of kind of interesting. And we may play this again uh, before the uh, game found campaign is finished. We'll see. We'll see. Depends how many likes people put on this video too. So if you're watching, hit that like button down below and, and, and maybe, maybe we'll continue with a persistent playthrough and you guys can see how it keeps evolving. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to spoil too much, so we might only do one playthrough uh, and leave it up to you guys to discover this game when you get the full game. Uh, all right. Or we could ignore the torn fabric. I don't ignore anything. <laughs> exactly. You guys know. Basil says, to be honest, Rob is a loot person. Yeah, yeah. So I got to search the area, right? Well, Janet also says go for search for the loot. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go all in. Yeah, you do have your backup card, so. All right. So let's go to the special view here. All right. So we are going to, so for search, it's a hard perception. I don't have any skills in perception, but I do have the neighboring communication. So I can roll two blue dice, which have two eyeballs on it, which is 50% better than the regular black dice. So I'm not expecting many eyeballs from the dice, but we're going to use risky intuition depending on what happens here. And that will let us roll a d12. We could push our luck and maybe get some more. And you get to see your result before I, you decide I that. Do, so. I do also have determined. Oh. So I could discard that to get a success. So this is when we're going all in because, I mean, loot. Come on, right? Hey, Buell. <laughs> you got busy, eh? <laughs> What else is new? <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking for here? Oh, you're looking for eyeballs. And I got zero. But if you were doing a communication test, you would be all I'd on have it. five. <laughs> Too bad. All right. Full, um, full um, reroll? Full reroll. 
One. Okay. We got one. We got one. Okay. We'll put this little one to the side here. Okay, these ones will just keep the, the same facing, right? Because it could say we, if you got some books, you know, add those in as something else or something weird could happen. We never know. So, uh, I am going to try Risky Intuition. Okay. So Risky Intuition says, trusting his instincts uh, has saved more from sticky situations more than once. Getting into trouble from the exact same thing, not rare either. So I am in a perception test. I may discard this to get one success. So I automatically get one, we hope, unless I roll a one to three on the D12 right after this, then I lose that one. So I can, and then I can keep rolling until I get a one to three, then I stop and I lose the success. So Mel's gonna use her amazing finger tracking and we're gonna know how so many- So you have one, technically two. I technically have two successes okay. for the test right now. Okay. So I'm gonna take the D12, the one that we used to, to randomly determine what month we were starting on or whatever. Okay. And I'm gonna start rolling it. And sometimes you see the D12 will come up on other card abilities and in tests and things. A six. six. Success. All right. Oh, here, I gotta switch to the other view. <laughs> A nine. Success. All right. Big money, big money, big money. A four. four. Okay. Success. It's not the one to three. We're cl I was close. So we need a three to pass a hard. So But we, more is probably better on yeah, a hard. Yeah. But we've already we're we're succeeded. I don't have to waste determined. So we're gonna keep going, obviously. Oh two. I rolled a two, so I lose one. So I only got four. Okay. So I'm only one over. Still good. I know, but what if it's five I know. plus? I know it's gonna be. All right, I'm doing determined too. Don't oh, care. Oh, so yep. that's a five. Going all in. Wasting all my cards. We only have three more days left in the game, so I'm going to go all out. Uh, so let's reveal our outcomes. Oh, yeah. you were right. See, you were right. Five plus. I figured if I'm going to use my risky intuition, I want the best result, and that the other determined helped me get there. So uh, both those cards are discarded. So the once per game ability goes back into my save slot. We'll just throw it there, and then the, uh, I think it goes to the library, but then when you reset or save at the end of the game, it goes back. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, we go five plus. So scanning the area, you spot tracks. Following them, following them, you're led to a cottage on stilts where the tracks go under the building. Dropping to all fours, you see a young frog curled up and feebly calling for help. Her dress matches the piece of fabric you found. Uh, you help her out of the hole and carry her back to the main road. She thanks you, but can barely say more. It's a risk of going in forced hibernation from the cold. Waiting at the main road is a family of frogs on a wagon who are calling out for her. They are relieved to find you, and after giving you a quick reward, race off to the town to find a doctor. You are confident she will make it and continue your journey. You gain one prestige. So I'll gain one prestige, going to five. And then, give card 47 from the library to the adventurer. If unavailable, give a random 200 item instead. Oh, it's available. And then we're going to return this item to the bottom of the event deck. And that is the end of scene. I'll move the day marker ahead in the app. Oh man, I got one of the best weapons you could ever have. A broom. It's got sweeping, it's got pull. A tidy home is a source of pride for mongooses. Many other folks end up delaying cleaning as much as possible, often finding lost long items in the process. So this can help me for searching to get a success and reroll up to one die in a test that's searching, or fight, explore, test, I could, or, or verb, sorry, I could reroll one die. Okay. So that's my third item. I finally got all, I got three items now filling up my slot. So a uh, fight test would be good for me. So I'm exploring, searching. Yeah, this is all good. Okay, so I'm going to also now move to <laughs> Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we did have a tracker token. <laughs> this is where we're going to lose my friend here. Nara, who was of no help to me, oh, no. is being discarded after five turns. So I will discard we'll her. back in the library. So she didn't help me at all, but that's okay. It was nice to have so, a friend along the way. So our fellow Canadians in the chat are making jokes with the broom about sweep and hurry hard from oh. the sport of curling. For anyone who watches the Winter Olympics, knows of curling. That's like a Canadian pride kind of... Mm -hmm. sport uh especially out east 
Uh, but Kate uh, has taught me that there is a curling emoji. Never knew that. That hmm. just blew my mind. Um, and Brian S. with the funny, way to clean up, Rob. <laughs> way to clean he's, up, Rob. He's back. Boom. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. And thus curling was born in the new realm. Yes, yes, Casey, that needs to be added to the story. <laughs> curling is an official sport in the animal folk world here, land of Gazir. All right. All right, so... Uh, okay. Oh, I think it's me. We moved the day. We moved the day. Turn. I got rid of my uh, companion. I think I'm just moving along the way. So I'm going to move for two. One, two. Maybe now is when I wish I saved that... Um, Ability to let me move more, but that's okay. We'll get there next turn. So we are on a mountain So we're gonna look at this card. It is Wednesday Oh, look at this. I am no longer but is the adventurer shocked? I am no longer but that is hilarious that Probably would have been something cool if it's finished. That is hilarious. Okay, <laughs> and I am so sorry I am on a mountain. So we're gonna look down until we get to mountain which is at the bottom there 241. Oh My god, that is hilarious I almost wish I was shocked. Okay. I could have saw that. Sick. That's okay. Okay. Uh, 241. 241. We'll try to get to Yazden next next round. Well, we will. Climbing a rocky path through the mountains, you are drowned in sheets of frigid winds that whip at you, worse and further by the harsh and high altitude of the mountain. Looking for shelter, you see a log cabin just a ways up the road. Knocking on its door, an elderly thrush answers. Caught out in this cold wind? No good. Come in and get warm. Accepting the thrush ushers you in. Accepting the thrush ushers you in. Instead of joining you inside, he closes the door behind you, locking it from the outside. Oh no. Uh oh. I don't like this. Escape room time. <laughs> Instead of joining you inside, he closes the door behind you, locking it from the outside. The interior of the cabin is dingy, and two figures slide from the shadows towards you. A bear and a lion, both mangy and in rags wielding clubs. Uh-oh. Money. Oh, no. Money, the bear demands, or else. He's going to steal. Do you have a resolute tag? No. I, I just want to check something. I feel like I had resolute on my card. <laughs> What the oh, heck yours. did you just come into I here? I don't know. I'm not oh, going no, where you okay. just went. This is terrible. Um, I do not know. Oh my god. These shady animals, man. You can't trust I any know. of them. They keep they they're <laughs> yeah, they're trying to steal my money and oh man. So you don't have the resolute no, tag? No, this is unfortunate. Oh, I see Jeremy's here. Uh whoa. I'm excited to see this on your channel. Awesome. Hello, thank you. <laughs> it's definitely very welcome, fun. welcome. Oh man, this is yeah, wow. <laughs> Damn, that would have been cool to send me that option. Ah. Oh, Determined. Oh, Determined. Has... I was going to say, I knew I saw it somewhere today, and I couldn't remember. Determined. And then I spent the Determined already. So our luck. You got excited, you threw that away, and now it's, now, you know, you don't get to see that. Yeah. But that's cool. Yeah. But see the replayability here? See where it's like, you know, you could be playing, you know, the next time you play, somebody could come across as possibly, you could be playing a three or four player game, you have, you know, they're using different characters, just somebody has the card, and then boom, this just happens, and it's like, well, that didn't happen for me, you know, like just the different experiences based on who has what and, you know, when they experience things. It's really neat how it's, it's just very like, I don't know, I just see the replayability there. It's kind of, kind of, the potential is huge, I can say. I need to stop wandering off by myself. <laughs> so your options are fight them <laughs> oh off. God. Do you have anything to help you fight? I do have something to let me fight. Yes, my wanted poster lets me reroll two dice. Well, you need two successes for it. Uh, you're allowed to actually roll skill dice this time, yes, Mel. So yes. you can actually roll different colors. So you could roll a pink and a yellow, which aren't the orange. So you, they could help you, though, find swords. But, you know, uh, do you have anything to help you unlock? Unlock. I can uh, re-roll one dice. But you see, it's, on a hard, it's a hard thievery, which However, you could roll two purples, one pink, but you need at least three to pass. Yeah, nothing gives me an auto success. Or you could agree to make a donation, Ugh. but you don't know the, the amount of money of the donation. So it might be this choice of how much you want to donate. I, I don't know what that's going to do. But uh, I was able to fight off the other guys that tried to attack me. But was it just a medium? Was it an easy? Was it a hard? I feel was, like it was it unknown? Medium. I feel like it was a medium. I don't know. And I feel like I fought them off with only black dice. I did have my determined though at the time. The so cobra says you should pick the option that says make him some porridge or kick him in the junk. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. And Drew's here. Says hey there Rob and Mel. Just jumped in to say hi. I'll watch this in the evening. 
This is just like Explore It, right? Just kidding. <laughs> Okay, it is an adventure game like Explore It with lots of story just kind of sandbox style happening and you're unveiling the story through cards and, and experiences and, and kind of random things that happen. Um, and you choose how to like form your character to, ha to do things like, you know, and stats and things to help you in certain ways. But uh, complexity level and the amount of the rule book size and the rule set and, and uh, it, it's apples and oranges. But it is an adventure game, yes. And the story is within your exploration and discovery. Uh, so it does have that, but yeah, I know you're just kidding, but there are some similarities, though. So, so, so the cover's reminding me that it's fine, because you gave me seven gold, but I do now have 15 gold, because I was able to work at the inn and got eight more, so... Don't come back to me asking for more money, because you, <laughs> you wandered into some cabin looking for a good time. <laughs> oh my god. No, they're trying to rob me. Yeah, black eye or not, I don't know if I can uh, give you any more money. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I think... Part of me really wants to agree to make a donation. I'm not set on this yet. I'm just talking it out. Or I want to fight them. I don't think I'm going to go with trying to unlock the door. Because I don't think that's a good idea. Actually, I think fighting them if I fail on a fight, I think this is bad what too. What if they're just captives that, are, that were like you and they're just imprisoned in there? Oh, but then if they have no, weapons. No, they imprisoned me. Well, no, no. Well, they tried to like lure me in and then lock yeah. the door behind me. I don't know. Oh, they're wielding Come inside, clubs. It's warm so, yeah. in here. Never mind. They have clubs, so they probably would have beat up the captor. Yeah. I just thought maybe you got locked in and then they were also locked in, you know, you got tricked like that, but mm -hmm. no, I think they're all working together. No, they lured me in. All right, what are you doing? Fighting? Well, I'm either fighting or making a donation. Uh, I'm just thinking, oh, do I think I can get two swords? I got I have two rerolls. Okay, let's fight. Let's fight. Let's fight them. Fight off. them off. I'm not letting them take my money easily. So I roll one pink, one yellow, and three black. I have, I can re-roll up to two of my dice. Uh, first we will re-roll all of the dice as my one zero. free re-roll, because that was zero. Oh, this I don't feel good about this. I don't either. Okay, okay, we got two. Oh, okay. We got two. All right, you've, you've passed. And now I can re-roll up to two dice, so let's just re-roll these two. Oh, we I got, got three. One. Okay, we got three. Okay, okay. All right. That feels good. So it's still the same as two. You okay with that? Yeah. Instead of complying, oh, I guess you'd have to be okay with that. <laughs> Too late to use stuff. Uh, instead of complying to their demand, you abruptly attack them. The fight is terrible at this in intimate range, but after a brutal and long battle, the wounded bear pounds her fist on the door. Let us out! The thrush unlocks the door from the outside and is trampled by the escaping bear and lion and scampers, off, uh, scampers after them, leaving you alone in the cabin. Taking a moment to rest and let the soreness drain from your bruises, you search the cabin and find an item along with a couple of gold the ruffian stashed away. Once the raging and freezing winds settle down and a gentle br to a gentle breeze, you leave the cabin. You gain two gold. Okay. And you also get card 18. And if unavailable, you get a random 200 item instead. 18, eh? Okay. Mel goes clubbing. <laughs> What'd you get? I got multi-lens goggles. Reading. Lens Master 4000 greatly enhances your vision and improves your chances of spotting whatever you're looking for. I like this. Man, those In are way search, better. Those are way better than the Lens Master 3000s I used to have. Yeah, for sure. Way better. For sure. When I search, I can reroll three dice, observe, reroll two dice, and unlock, reroll one dice. Yes. This is probably better than my magnifying glass. Definitely. But you could use both at the same test. Like on a searches, you could have two successes and reroll a bunch of dice. So how much searching do you think you're going to do or just you're going to focus on that or not? You know what I mean? Like you never know, right? Like unless you know some places where searching was a thing, like in some of these locations, you might go back with some search in mind. Good thing it was a bear and not a seal. Oh, man. Bom, bom. <laughs> I think I'm actually just going to replace my my goggle, my magnifying glass with my goggles. All right. That's so what we'll I'm going to do. Back, the other one back in the library 200. where it goes. Okay. And then return the event to the bottom of the event deck. Okay. That was a fun event. I thought I was going to be unsuccessful. And that's the end of your scene. <laughs> uh, so I am going to just move two. And I'm not stopping where Mel did. <laughs> I don't need to be locked in a cabin or anything weird like that. So <laughs> I'm just going to continue on to Yezden. I'm actually going to pick up the quest in Yezden, which is the one that says, Moving between cities and Galzir is a pain, not to mention how badly my back aches after a bumpy ride on a lowly wagon. 
I have a solution to all this. Only a simple courier service is needed to complete my plan. Olamide the Dodo. All right, so take off that symbol, and if you can get me another quest to replace it in the uh, in the uh, notice board. This one's in RN. Oh, oh wow. man. All the quests. So all the quests right now off the notice board are in RN to go pick up. And this one, the public posting is, I came to Galzir for a little vacation. I have everything already well planned, and I would love some company. Karimia, the Gila monster. Okay, whatever that's about. <laughs> I don't know if I want to find out. <laughs> and, okay, so I have High Hopes Part 1 is the quest I just took off the notice board. And I only have two, and you're allowed to hold up to three quests, so I can hold this one. And it says, I got an idea for this, from this large basket I found for cheap. Strap on fabric bag along with a burner, and we have a vehicle capable of transporting folk from city to city. There are suitable banners in rhinestone, or burners, sorry, suitable burners in rhinestone. Drop by the bank and take a small loan on my name before meeting the seller, and we're all set. Olamide, the dodo entrepreneur. So my next to, to progress this is obviously part one. So there's more to this, but I'd have to go to Rhinestone. I could do, I could have another player help me and we can visit the bank and try to see if we can get a loan to help this guy build some kind of traveling device, which is really cool. <laughs> I want to do that, but I don't know. We don't, I don't think we, we have don't time. have enough. I don't think we'll have enough time in this place to do that, but just showing you like, man, okay. Okay, uh, all right. So I'm in Yezden. I have a uh, smoldering wood quest part one. I but if you try. wait for me, we can do it together. Yeah, so what is there? Uh, can you lift the card up? Just yep. show me what options are on the space. So I can do something else while I wait for you. You can visit the temples, the gardens, or the market. Uh, hmm. I think the temples would probably be cool. Number one. All right, let's go to the temples while I wait. Yeah, I'm gonna do if some you wait for me, we can do it together and possibly get better rewards. Yeah, I'm going to do some sightseeing at the temples while I wait for Mel to show up. After she's done attacking, Sorry. beating <laughs> bears with clubs or whatever she's doing. <laughs> okay, number one. The atmosphere is serene and you climb the numerous stairs, arriving at the higher parts of town, home of the temples of Yezden. Ones that have been said to touch the sky. You're welcomed by a marmot dressed in a cloak who bows slowly and introduces herself as Lynn. Behind her, you spot a small stall nearby with a sign, Boutique of Fleeting Delight. Does the library have 119 available? Oh, that's oh, cool. I like this. Uh, give me a second. It sure does. Okay, so I'm gonna say yes. So I guess it's something special that obviously can only be seen on this quest line, and if somebody already did this quest line, you can't do it it's again? gonna stop you from doing it again, I would assume. That's kind of neat. Uh, Lynn explains how it's in the transition of Bobak Marmots to journey to unknown lands and destinations in order to achieve spiritual growth. In addition to meditating daily at high altitudes, you'd be, uh, you'd be free to join in either if you wish. Lynn finishes with a worrying look on her face. One of our members, a young apprentice, Jung, left for a wayfaring, uh, wayfaring sorry, journey some time ago alone. He should have returned by now, but we're hearing, we've heard nothing. I fear that something has happened to him. So if you meditate, each comforting tag gives you one success. I don't have anything comforting. <laughs> uh, so I can help find Zhang. I can explore with the Wayfaring group, which is an easy revival. Join the meditation session, which is an easy book. Or I can visit the gift shop. Mm. All right, this sounds like a uh, voting for chat kind of thing, because I don't know what the heck to do here. So uh, what to do so we can help. Help, we can explore. I'll talk about my cards in a sec if that helps. Uh, we can join. Or we can visit. So I'll put that in the chat for like a minute. You guys can live vote. Those watching this live can go in the chat, vote on that option. I'll do whichever you guys want to see. Um, but uh, again, we don't know with the Jiang what kind of tests or what, what's going to continue with the story. We have no idea. Also visiting the gift shop. The gift shop might just be a market kind of thing, I would assume. Um, but for exploring, I have a broom. Oh, your new broom. My new broom. My hot new acquired. broom. Uh, could help me just reroll a die. I, I don't know if that's great, but the explore test is an easy survival. 
I don't have any survival stat, but I could roll a green and an orange and three black. So remember, the green and the orange will have two sides that each have one survival on them, and the black have a one in six chance of survival. Um, but I do, again, I could re-roll. Also, uh, the other option was join. I don't have anything for joining. Again, I don't know if there is anything for joining in the game. But on that skill test, I do have one in the knowledge, and I could roll two blue, which could help get it two, and then two black. Um, and then, yeah, helping find Jung, who knows? So you guys vote in the live chat, I'll give it a few seconds. Uh, I'm gonna take a quick break, uh, and just get a drink and stuff, and we'll be right back in like a minute. Okay, so stay tuned, be right back. All right, so let's end the poll. Thank you, everyone. And, okay, poll results. Oh, it's close. Whoa. Wow. So 29% want to join, uh, and 23% help, 23% explore, 23% visit. Wow. Oh, that was close. Thank you, everyone that voted. Thank you. Uh, so we are going to join the meditation session. And let me try to click on it here. Boom. Okay, so like I said, I can roll a green, two blue, and two black. So five dice total. And joining and meditating and all that stuff, I don't want to think of anything for. Uh, Three. Three books sounds good for an easy test that should only need one. I'm just gonna go with it. No reroll. Oh, yeah, there you go. three plus awesome sauce. Uh, the guru's words lead you to a state of deep focus. A gentle breeze swaying in the tree branches. The quiet ripples caused by a nearby stream. They became, uh, or sorry, they become an expression of the calming effect this place has. As you open your eyes, you feel rested, better than you felt in a long time. 
You may return any weary tag you have to the library. Oh, that's cool. Uh, that's cool. Give card 60 from the library to the adventurer. End of scene. And that will move our day forward. We'll take a look at the card. And there's no timer token stuff. Oh, there's a few 60. Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah, if, it's, if it just shows that symbol of just card number 60, you grab any one. Because yeah. they're either all the same or there's only one. So I just gained the uh, status called Inner Peace. I'm serene and upbeat. Meditation and calmness are the keys to tranquility. If you take part in a thievery, a mite, or a uh, survival skill check, discard it. <laughs> you gotta be calm, bro. Be yeah. calm. Don't be aggressive. Uh, and Oh, this is forced. This is a forced uh, verb box. So again, these ones, all the brown ones, with the little like rounded borders on this on the words are uh, optional, but this is a purple one, which is forced. So it's got like the uh, I don't know what you call the the borders on, but it's purple. Recall, convince, and observe. I get a success automatically, whether I like it or not. Forced. And you have this till the end of this playthrough. Yeah. So cool. when we, yeah yeah. So when we go to save at the end of a playthrough, this will get discarded back to the library. That's what that tells me. So you don't get to keep it. From play to, through to play through. Daniel is also saying that effect would be useful in your Arkham Horror. All right, so I'll keep this for tomorrow's <laughs> Arkham Horror playthrough, and we'll use it there also. Oh, Edgar says shock Ted Weary. Oh, that's uh, cool. So okay, we're being able okay. to get rid of that. That's cool. I don't remember all the tags. So that's yeah, cool. Thank you. Okay, so it's Mel's turn. Oh, we're yeah. on Thursday. One more day left One in the game. Day. So I'm just joining. Or this you. is the final day, right? Because as soon as it moves, we do that timer tag, and we'll see what the end of a playthrough does for a cooperative. Okay, you visited the temples. I will visit the gardens. Gardens, two. number two? Yeah. The garden is beautiful. You've never seen anything like it. Bushes fall, uh, full of berries, flowers of all colors, tree branches bending under the weight of ripe fruit. You see a polecat tending to the garden. She has already noticed you and approaches to greet you. My name is Hydeban, and I'm here, I'm the head gardener here. She sees you're still astounded by the beauty and abundance of the garden. It really is something to behold, isn't it? A result of hard work, mind you. There might actually be something around here you could lend a hand with. How about picking some of the harvest? We could also find something inside if that's something you'd prefer. What do you say? Hmm. So you could gather fruits and berries or go inside. I'll go inside. Oh. Uh, Sammy's saying, I've reworked Inner Peace slightly to have a timer of four, and you do get to save it between sessions. Oh, oh that's cool. Namaste. So I assume then, if, if, for example, in this case, if you had got that, it had a timer of four, you would use one of your days, and then when you start the next session, you would put a three on it, or would no, it start again it, no, at no. four? It would still be a four, because it would just have the time in it. Of, it would say four, right? Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, so... That's kind of that's cool. cool. I would assume so. Because how would you remember? How would you remember? Yeah, unless yeah. you're playing right away. That's There's cool. no way to save that. So that's cool. Well, calm, calm. Relax, man. Relax. All I'll right. go inside. You're going to go inside? Yeah. You don't, you don't want to work outside all day? No. <laughs> all right. Go inside. You enter a great hall lit by enormous windows and skylights. The light is redirected around the hall with mirrors, providing energy for the countless rows of plants the other gardens are tending to. The other gardeners are tending to. Next to the walls sit many of barrels full of fruit, waiting for their contents to be crushed into wine, jelly, medicine, and many other products. Okay, I like it. Idaban shows you around the caverns, telling you that there's more work to be done than her helpers can cover. Just this morning, I saw that my newest worker hadn't, noti hadn't noticed that some of the berries he filled the barrels with were rotten. You know the saying, and we have to get out the bad berries out of those barrels before the whole batch is spoiled. Then there's herbs to be mixed, and not enough hands. She then points to a hare by the cavern who, uh, wall who seems to be waving at you. That's Oswana, always looking for someone to test her potions. Claims they give her the gift of foresight. I'd suggest you keep away if you're not sure about the strength of your stomach. <laughs> uh, so one player, if you search each scent tag, Gives you one success. Do you have any scent tags? No. Not on your character or anything, no? No. Okay. Uh, so you could search the rotten berries for an unknown value on a perception test. You have no idea. 
It could be a one is an amazing thing. It could be like, you know, five. I have no idea, but we've seen this before. We're unknown, just like you're surprised by, you know, how easy or hard it is. Maybe it's just a medium. Who knows? Uh, mix herbs is a medium knowledge or approach the hair. Okay, in this situation, my new uh, goggles did give me a search reroll up to three dice, which is huge. Uh, mix, I do not have anything. I say you do the I unknown think, just so we can see what I do want to do that as well because I also, <laughs> if I look, I do roll, I would roll two purple oh. and a pink. So this is my best test. Yeah. So let's so, do that. Let's roll well, two. See, sometimes you don't know what you're trying to achieve for successes, One. which I think is really cool also. And then two black. Okay. So let's roll this. We're looking for the ice eyeballs. Okay, we did get one eyeball. I could re-roll up to three dice. Or you could do or your could once re-roll re everything. I think I want to re-roll once everything and see what happens. Okay, now we have two. So we'll just put the two here, and then I can re-roll three dice, so I'll just choose the three that are remaining. Okay. <laughs> oh, we got four. We got, oh, I'm putting them in, you can't see, sorry. Four eyeballs. Four? Four. Reveal the outcomes. Oh, wow. Whoa, there's six a six or plus? six plus. Okay, but I did get four or five. I'm confident. Oh, we we with don't that. know what these do. Like, is that like I a know. pass? Well, that you, might you, not don't, be good you don't still. know what a pass six is. Six may be the best. So four to five? Yeah. The work is tedious, but after a while, you have a pile of rotten berries beside you. You also find an item from one of the barrels. You can keep that, says Hideaban, observing the spoiled berries. And here, your pay. A shame we couldn't have saved more of the batch. Oh, so you could have maybe got oh, more gold or a different item or something. Thought, yeah. So gain five gold. Oh, I can only gain. So you owe you me, gave money. me some money. I gave I you too much money. Three. You don't even know how to manage oh, your money. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm full gold. And give uh, card 222 from the library to adventure. If it's unavailable, give a random 200 item instead. 222. Now we'll end the scene. And what card okay. did we get? I got a multi tool, six gold, a blade tinkering. With so many bits, you should almost always have a suitable tool. Almost. Unlock, reroll up to two dice. Fight and, cl fight and climb, reroll one and force. Get one success and roll the d12. On a one to four discard. That's cool. Oh, that's good too. I'm kind of feeling that maybe I now start getting rid of some of these shady tags. <laughs> <laughs> but you could find the coolest thing in the whole I game know. that you have, need shady for, and you get this like, you know, cool prestige outcome of this quest. Who knows, right? So I'm kind of thinking of actually getting rid of my wanted poster. So my wanted poster has uh, in intimidate and fight. So multi tool also has fight. Okay, so that would do that. And then on um, on my cloak, I'll keep this, which also has the intimidate. So I think I'm still just so varying kind of spreading my, out. spreading out my uh, tags. So I'm going to get rid of my wand poster. And I'm, I still have one instance of shady. So that'll take a little yep, bit longer. But still shady. I'm still That's shady, correct. but I'm less shady. That is correct. Okay, putting back this, 223. All right, so my turn. We're going to try to... Do the uh, smoldering wood, try to do part one of it, and I can take a partner. So again, if we were playing like a three or four player game, uh, and there was all of us read the same location, you only pick one partner. So you just ask, you know, you want to be my partner, and they have to agree or not. Uh, especially if you're playing competitive, they may not want to, but they could get some benefit out of it. Uh, so yeah, smoldering wood. I'll be your partner. So Rovin, my employer, owns a large sawmill. A lynx named Hylamo is currently in prison for an attempt at burning it down. We believe Jeonka, a previous co-owner of the saw, to be behind the arson plant. We find evidence to support our presumptions. Jeonka's firm is a logical place to start. All right. Uh, so we're going to 143. 143. Following your only lead, you make your way to alluring shrubs and herbs. Je Jeonka's company. It is a fairly small building located some way off the city center, and as one might have guessed, seems to deal in spices and various flavors of ornamental plants. Wondering if you should just slip in and look around, you peek inside the front lobby. It seems quite busy. There is an aardvark clerk behind the counter, a number of customers, and a couple of workers hurriedly carrying boxes and from a door to the side. Oh, to and from a door to the side. 
Surely enough, a placard on the door says that they are hiring. Perhaps that's your way in. So I could try to get a job or sneak inside the building. Now again, my thievery, I would only be rolling one orange and four black. Not the best. However, with my help, yeah. you're rolling one pink and, and two, two purple. purples. Also, because I am shady, <laughs> <laughs> when we sneak, you get one success and you can reroll one dice. Okay. So I think we're sneaking in. We're, we're going to be shady, <laughs> we're shady. sneaky little thieves. we, we got to take advantage of the shadiness. So, so this is a better example of how the partnering works, especially in a cooperative. So yeah. if it was competitive, I would have to ask Mel, can I use this skill? And she says yes or no. Then I ask, can I use these skill dice? She has to say yes or no. So it's like a one-to-one -one basis, which piece you want to allow, and can I use the tag off this item? She has to say yes or no. In a cooperative game... I'm assuming you're just kind of like, all right, my stuff's yours, your stuff's mine, let's go. So, unless she it's... was shocked and couldn't <laughs> use her dice. Which, as we saw. For example. Yeah. So, this time, uh, we're just going all in. So, you guys get to see the real benefits of partnering up uh, and how we can try to get the better results. So, based on that, um, what do we say? So, for mine, you're getting two purple and a pink. Two purple and a pink, an orange for mine. And, and then one, one black. black, I guess. Oh, that's the best we've rolled all day. Yeah, it would be better if we had more pink. Or, yeah, or but another I, if, orange. If I, if I had one in thievery, we could add another pink to this. You're obviously limited by the dice. You can only still, even if even if I had two in thievery and she had two in thievery, we can't get four thievery dice. You're, you're limited by only two per skill. Even if you somehow buy an extra set of dice or anything, mm -hmm. don't. You cheaters. <laughs> don't be cheaters. All right. Um... Okay, and what did we say? Sneak, I have a reroll up to two. Okay, and then for my sneak, you have an auto success and a reroll of up to one. Okay. So we have, we we have, have one what? success. One success so far. already? Already. Okay. Whoa, okay. this so, is good. So we got sticky fingers over here, and we have, oh, whoops. We have three successes. Plus the auto, so we have four successes so to start. I'll use my ear horn to reroll up to two dice. Okay, nope. would you like to re-roll one? Yep, I'll re-roll the one that has the potential of getting a uh, sing or two uh, sticky hands, two little thievery symbols. Oh, no. okay. Uh, but we still did get four total with my one auto success. Sure, let's roll with it. So we're, oh, sorry, we're sneaking inside the building. Reveal outcomes. Oh, oh six, six plus. plus. Oh, no. Dang, I wish we rolled a two, a two on this one. Yeah, that'd be ah. cool. All right, anyways, two to five. Uh, you successfully infiltrate the lobby and covertly observe the proceedings. Notably, a lynx occasionally peeks her head out of the curtain behind the counter and orders the workers to do something. That must be Jayonka. You manage to peek behind the curtain, seeing the lynx behind a large desk in an office of sorts, although cramped with stacks of, of botan 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 botanical produce. But you can't find a way inside unnoticed. Jayonka or someone else seems to be nearby at all times. Your best bet is to come back later after closing time. Aw. Oh man. We tried. You keep watch outside until you see the employees leave. Approaching the building again, you see that it is indeed empty, but for some reason the front door is still lock unlocked. Slipping inside, you hear the reason why. Sounds coming from Jayonka's office. Uh, peeking inside, you see a female lynx behind the desk rummaging through drawers. But it is not Jayonka. There's someone else looking to uncover her secrets. <gasps> Uh-oh. So we can search the office after the lynx leaves for a medium perception test or talk to the lynx. So I have a search ability which lets you reroll three dice. Uh, I have a free success and a reroll one die on my okay. broom. And then so I can help search through the drawers <laughs> with my broom. <laughs> and again, you would be rolling the two purple and a pink as well. Oh, this is the best one. This is, this is the, oh, oh did we forget oh, something? I, I lose this. I forgot. If I take part in a thievery, I oh. might, yeah, so I'm no more inner peace. No okay. more inner peace. <laughs> I just realized that. No problem, no problem. <laughs> I'm trying I, to, I'm trying to break into a, a building here illegally. Like, I, I have no inner peace with, I mean, personally, I, I have inner peace with that. But in the game, there's, there's no inner peace allowed on that. If you search, I think we roll only colored dice. Because for me, you would get two purple, a pink, and you would roll two blue. That's yep. all five dice. Plus we have a total of four re-rolls and one auto success. 
Okay, so it sounds like we're searching. I mean, I think that's the best case scenario. All right, sneaky, sneaky. All right, let's see. Uh, so you're saying... From me, you get two purple and a pink. Two purple, pink. We got two blue. Yeah. And, that, and one... No, that's no black. Five. Yeah, 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 it's all... This is the best one, Here actually. we go. We're looking for eyeballs. Eyeballs only one. one. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Do you do all the re-rolls, or do you want to just do no, a full No, I do a full re-roll first. All oh, right. okay, that's better. So, whoops, oh, that was, that a, was two. a double. Here, let's get these out of here. Uh, so we got two eyeballs. So we got two eyeballs and then re-rolls. I have a three die re-roll. So this was a search. Uh, so I can roll one, which Do you wanna... purple is the one we want to roll the most of. Okay. Because it has double eyeballs. No. We didn't get it. Now you can reroll up to three dice. Uh, so we want to reroll that, and these don't matter, so because they all just have the same on them. Okay. And we got the other double. And so, you have an auto success. And right? I have an auto success on my broom. So that's a total of five. Okay, five successes. I'm down. Okay. Oh, four plus. Yes. You overkilled it. All right. The lynx leaves empty-handed after a while, but her hasty attempts seemed entirely immaturish to you. In just a minute, you find Gianca's notebook which she had tied to hide, she had tried to hide under a stack of reports. Checking the last entries, you find a curious one. Hilamo, Hilamo failed. Send someone else to Chabar to finish the job, followed by a list of names all crossed out. <gasps> Uh-oh. We got some assassinations going on here, I think. <laughs> uh, but you don't limit your search you, to just the desk. In the back wall, you find a hidden compartment containing gold and an interesting letter from Rovan to Jeonka. In it, he demands money from her, threatening to otherwise expose something she did in the past. Dun, dun, dun. You gain the evidence and get out before anyone else shows up. So, we gain, uh, so personally, I gain two prestige. One, two. Five gold. I, uh, five gold, which I go up to 15. And then I return smoldering wood, 148, from this quest line. And then get me 252, 252 from the library, which is continuing the quest line, part two of Smoldering Wood. So we have to go to Chabir to meet Aero, or sorry, Edrosia, Edrosia. So that's a quest we can do. I also mm -hmm. partnered on it, which is cool. Uh, and the partner, so I had a partner yes. to help me. So you gain two prestige and oh. five gold that you can't. I can't hold any more gold, but I can gain the two prestige. I wish I actually, I probably should have given you gold. Like we should have probably traded. Sure. Because I knew I was full, but I mean, we, we, wouldn't, forgot. we wouldn't have oh, well. known that. That's okay. Oh, you can trade even with your partner during scenes. Oh, okay. Oh, so we can just say so we did I that. So I can just give him five gold yeah, and yeah. then I can take five gold. That makes gold. sense. Yeah. So, so then we're both full, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm at 20. Wow. Ball in. Wow. We need full, to go to the market. And, full gold. And have a party or go back to the wishing well. I just want to give you back the money that you gave me so that I'm not feeling yeah, yeah, pressured yeah, by you would hear, having it out. Yeah. She would hear from me for the rest of the night yeah. about how she wasted my money. Yeah. I still so, owe you two gold, I guess. So end of scene. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's the end of a round. So we're going to move the day counter up. To Friday, we're gonna. So the timer token leads to this global effect card here, global status. So because we're going to this card, we now go to two hundred in uh in the adventure book. Take the little token for you. Take there. that away. And hey, Cynthia, Cynthia joined, and I just saw her there. I'll be watching the entire thing tomorrow too. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I hope your uh, trip was well. Uh, two hundred. So after all the excitement, challenges, and adventure, it's time to unwind for a moment and reflect on your travels. How many adventurers? Uh, how many adventurers there were in this game? Two. How many of you have an isolated tag? I do not. None. Uh, neither. I don't know what that is, but I don't want to know. <laughs> uh. You two adventurers decide to punctuate your recent escapade properly and head to an inn to celebrate and trade tales of your personal epics. A nearby inn should suffice for this night of revelry. You find one whose lights are on and is rumbling with the sounds of laughter and music. Throwing open the door, you in enter inside. The festivities lull for a second as everyone impulsive, impulsively 
cast their gaze at the door. If you agree, you can collectively pay and choose to throw a party. <laughs> well, this is that each player can decide, I guess. Or you get involved in this. So uh, I'll spend five gold if you want to sure, spend I'll five spend gold. Sure, I'll spend five gold. We have, we have too much gold anyway. Let's have a party. Yeah, why not? I think that's share, how that works. Share our wealth. Or we could just celebrate alone. Uh, so we'll throw a party. How much prestige did you get in total? Uh, we got... So Mel's on six, I'm on seven, so 13. And that looks like the oh. middle result here. So man, you can get like 22 wow. plus in a playthrough. I guess if you're playing with more players, maybe. No, we picked the oh, player count. we picked the player count, yeah. Wow. So I guess if you're like... Dang, I wish we got in the 17. But I'm assuming future playthroughs, you, it was you refined your characters, you kind of get an idea of what towns or things are happening and where to go, so you get like the highest successes. True. You know, and really focus on something. I, I can see you getting like more prestige that way. Okay, we're middle of the pack. That's Mid fine. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're fine. We're That's newbies fine. still, come on. Yeah. Like, we did the best we could, okay? The chat kind of derailed us a bit. I was shocked for we like can put it on three there. turns. Uh, you put your coins together and buy drinks for everyone, which the folks give you a hearty round of applause. Many even join in your party, dancing and singing with you throughout the, throughout, through the night. Many recall tales they have heard about you, good and bad. Some ask for advice, others admire, and one of them swears you robbed them. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I, I didn't do it. <laughs> it wasn't me. The next morning, you all help the innkeeper clean up. Help yourself to anything left behind the night before. The innkeeper directs, thanking such important folk thanking such important folk for taking the time to help him clean up. Each non-isolated adventurer may swap one of their skill marks for any other skill mark. Mm -hmm. You are well known. End of the game. So, mm. I say we do that. Yeah, I want to do that. I'm going to actually take uh, my level 2 communication, if I can pop it out here, uh, over here, and I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to take a thievery, because I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, it kind of goes with my sneaks, my unlocks, my fights, my intimidates. I feel like kind of goes with that. So I'm going to go to level one and spread out my skills. I don't know if that's a good idea, but at least I'm kind of like, if I do a perception check, at least I can roll like two dice beside it. And, and same with survival. So like, I, I'm kind of going more jack of all trades a little bit. Um, but again, if I get another chance, maybe I can move my knowledge up to thievery or something like that. Or maybe I don't care about fighting as much and just worry about sneaking. And maybe move that one in or something like that. So, you know, you can kind of, you kind of, like, it's, it's very open. You can kind of put yourself all on, like, one half of the wheel. You can kind of spread it out. You can pick two different stats, you know, on each side and kind of go all in on them. This part, I'm like, it's, it's like, I don't know, but, like, you can keep changing as you play. So, uh, and maybe another player plays, you know, and they take more in the next session. And they say, oh, I'm going to try to make more this play style. So you can kind of do the play style based on what you want to play in the game. Or what you think the character should do based on the items they're getting and stuff, so. Well, I'm following the same idea, and I'm going to put a communication, in, actually, I can do it, so oh, yeah, that sorry. I kind of have, similar to what you were saying, where my stats are kind of even across the board, and no matter what the test is, I at least get to roll some die. And I do like this side of the wheel, so, yeah, potentially we can move the survival skill onto this side later. <laughs> Or actually, maybe do I leave it like this? Maybe I leave it like this. If I like that side of the wheel, and maybe I go more like that. Yeah, if that's I think what I you, like that because yeah. I do like this whole perception, communication, yeah, yeah. thievery. I'm not really doing any survival skills. Maybe I should be. I don't know, but I think we're going to go like that. We're going to stay on that half. Then when I click end a game, it just goes back to the title screen where you can start a new game. So we're going to go through the save uh, mechanics of the game to show how you kind of clean it up at the end of the scenario because I want to show this. And yes, Mel is shady. It is known, <laughs> which is why I think she did the robbing, even though Sajat says I wonder who robbed them. Uh, no, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It they was tried to rob me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And it's I just, got away. Just rumors, though. I mean, <laughs> we don't know. All right. So I'm going to check the rule book. Go to the end here. I'm only half shady, remember? Sure, whatever you say. <laughs> All right, so in the rule book, we got saving the game. Once the game is over, you must perform the following steps in order to save the game, world, and the adventurers. Note that the cards and save slots do not have to be in numerical order. So in step one, remove all timer tokens from the calendar and cards without resolving their timed effect. Resolve all save effects on components in play identified by having that save icon next to them. 
and you're looking for those on adventurer boards, you're looking for them on items, companions, let's go in order. So if we look on our adventure boards, this is how we get our 000, like one time per playthrough ability back. And remember, don't bump your dial because that gold is persistent. Mm -hmm. So if you can grab uh, 000 from the library, I would take it, but we know it's already yeah, in the safe slot. We kind of cheated a little bit. It. Yeah. Because uh, we just know it goes there. And then um, items. So any items that have save effects on I them? I do not have no. any. Any companions that have save effects? No. Nope. Nope. Any adventurer statuses? No. Nope. Nope. Uh, local location statuses, there's no location statuses on the board, but there are little cards that could apply to a location. Uh, global statuses, so this one has a save effect. So this is how the month is going to pro progress. So it's going to go back there and be replaced by number six. Okay. Number so, six. So number six is June. So next time you go to play this game, you'll pull this out of the global save slot and you're in June. And you follow the setup instructions on that. Uh, so what does it say? Uh, replace this card with seven from the library. That's okay, the perfect. Yep. Yeah. And then, uh, if we're continuing to play later, there's steps. But if we're just continuing to play right now and we want to do another playthrough, uh, we could do that. And there's steps for that. So like, if you're just like your gaming group's going all day long, you want to play three sessions, or you're playing solo and it goes really fast because you're not like discussing things, or you're not live streaming and trying to teach everyone how the game works. Mm -hmm. You'll play a lot quicker, uh, so you might want to jam a few games back to back. Uh, there is rules to follow to do that. Uh, but we're going to do the playing later. Because we may play this later in the next, you know, 20 something days, 28 days it said, that the, um, the Game Found campaign is live. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that stream if it pops up. It'll be in a playlist link that's down in the video description if you're watching this in the future and you're looking for that playthrough. If it's not there in that playlist link, it never happened, but hit the like button, help other people find this playthrough. Maybe if there's enough likes and enough people see this video, maybe we'll do another one to continue the game and see how the world progresses. Um, but to store the game back into the box, follow these steps. So we're gonna place the cards each adventure has into each of their own save slot. So if we look, oops, if we look here in the back, so each, this would normally be in a separate tray, but I just threw them in here because they all fit. And it's easier on stream just to handle this. Uh, but every, every adventurer has their own save slot and we're just gonna put it behind that. So I'll just grab all the quests I'm working on, all the items I'm working on, and they'll go behind Moore's little, little tag with his ability and everything in there that we would have put there too. And this will go back behind Azala's slot here. So I'll just throw that in there. Okay, and then, um, the quest, items, companions, adventure status go in. Then we're going to place all remaining cards in the global save slot. So all our, our notice board, our, uh, the mode that we're playing, the June card, the global status, all these locations, they're going to go mm. back in there. And they just go back out on the board by number, so it'll just maybe on a different side if it was going into a different season. But I have a feeling June is going to be on the same side of the board. And these go with it. I can put them in order later, it doesn't matter. No, it's fine. So these will just go in the global save slot, which is the very back. Uh, easy peasy. All done. And like you oh, saw... sorry, these as well. Oh, yeah, the vent cards. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense, makes sense. Uh, so as you saw in the setup today, at the beginning of the stream, we literally just grabbed everything out of the global save slot and set it up based on what's there. So it's like super easy to save this game, super easy to set it up, uh, you know, and then it's pack all components in the game box, making sure not to adjust the gold on the sheet. So... This is prototype, but the dial is pretty stiff, like it's not going to turn. But anyone who's played any X-Wing or FFG game that uses dials in it, which we've seen many, Keyforge, all those kind of things, sometimes the dials can be loose. Even Gloomhaven uses dials like this. The original ones were like super loose. Um, they might wear down over time because it is paper rubbing against paper. So, you know, maybe you could just jot down on a little note or something or a notepad, worst case, uh, and just record. Make sure you know how much gold because it does matter that Moore has 15 gold in the start of the next playthrough. You know, so you just got to be careful with that. But there is a spot to put these in there and hopefully don't get bumped around or anything. I do remember when we played Aftermath and we had dials like this, I just took a picture every time. Oh, just yeah, taking a picture. Up, taking a picture, that works too. Just in case too. something moved around, yeah. I just set them all up in all the dials and took yeah, a picture. Yeah, that, so. that, that works too. Yeah. But yeah, it does tell you to be careful with them. But that's it. So like we could literally I'll just have the box here. 
And yeah, super quick, so... And Sammy does say, we do hope to make the dials differ for the final game. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's awesome. I mean, it's not life or yeah, death, no. but like, you know, it's easily solvable by writing it down or taking a picture or whatever. But it's not gonna like ruin the game, but like it does suck if you're a very competitive group. And you're getting back to the next playthrough and you're like, wait, how come you have 20 goals and I have zero? What, what, what happened, happened here? Yeah. What the heck? You're cheating. All right, so then we're just gonna... Oh, oh we, we missed, missed the one. card. Oh, oh no, we, broke, in, we broke the notice. game. We broke the game. Didn't even notice. Because the, the art just blends in so good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we just put it away in here. There's a little component for, you know, the slots in here and, you know, your characters. We put all these back in the little baggies. Uh, but if, if you're sleeving the game or whatever, and, the, and the, these are not all the cards that come in the final game. There's going to be, like, you know, many, many more. And there's some that we're not even using today that are in another baggie. But if you do sleeve everything, you could have, you know, your uh, save slot and your vaults and all that stuff on this side. And you can have your, your uh, library all sleeved in one tray. Uh, but it comes with these little foam things. But again, this is just prototype and it's not finished. So just so you guys know, that's kind of how you pack up the game and boom, it's done. And, and you're good to go. So I just want to show you guys that it's, it's not like Seventh Continent, even though it has the... The dividers like Seventh Continent, that game is a freaking nightmare to put away, especially after a long play session. This is does not have that issue. Yeah, you're kind of cleaning it up as you go. Yep. yep. And then your safe slot just goes to the back. So So yeah, that's that's a look at Lands of a Gal's Ear, which again is on GameFound crowdfunding campaign website. Uh it's linked in the live chat in the pinned post or down in the video description. Again, hit that like button if you if you like this playthrough, you want to see more of these. Uh you know, maybe in the future we'll be playing the final production version on the channel and have some fun playing along with you guys, making decisions and seeing what's in the game uh, and trying different characters. Like we, we have different ca characters, different player counts, playing solo, uh, competitive, cooperative, uh, 350 story entries. And you saw those scenes or 50, 350 scenes plus and how they branch and change and different options present themselves to you based on which character you're playing, which tags you have which options you pick, you know, which tests you're trying to do, then which results you get on the test. Do you even have money to pick this option? Do you have the item for that option? This is just crazy. This is crazy un uncovering this world over many playthroughs. So you just keep playing it. So the next time we play is June. The next time you play, you know, it keeps going. July, August, eventually you get into the winter months and like what happens on event cards when you're in the winter and stuff like, who knows? Who knows? Uh, but we'll leave that up to you guys to discover. We don't want to spoil too much. So that's why I'm kind of like, we could play longer today. We could have more streams of it, but I might not push it just since it's a very story driven game. And obviously from today's playthrough, I think you got a good taste of how the game works, what's all involved. We got a pretty good look at it. Um, but any questions you guys have before we get out of here? Um, yeah, you can find most of the answers you're looking for. Check out the game found link down in the video description. Uh, and you can go on over there, which we can check out an update of how it's doing here live. Why not? Let me just refresh the page. So yeah, it's over on GameFound, which is a crowdfunding website similar to Kickstarter. For those that don't know, it's run by the uh, folks over at Awaken Realms. They made it a game, uh, board game, tabletop game focused crowdfunding website. So man, it has all the tools you want for you know presenting a campaign. It's very nice. So currently, the next stretch goal to unlock is the official soundtrack. Oh, that's cool. So you could have music oh. in the background. Oh, well, that's, that's cool. Nice. So it's 119% funded. Congratulations, Congratulations. Sammy, on that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, 28 days left on this at the time. 644 backers. So, yeah. If you guys are interested, again, this is just our thoughts, our opinions. We weren't paid to make this playthrough again. Full full disclosure. We were just sent this prototype to play on the channel. I, I, I did look the game over uh, in a playthrough video and read some of what, what, was it, what it was about before I accepted it. So, you know, look at that as you may. But it is a cool game. It definitely is in our wheelhouse of adventure, story driven. Um, normally dice rolling and the dice mitigation, not having it at the beginning there would normally frustrate me, but because it's a, a game I knew, I've played it a couple times, I know eventually you'll get the tools and things to help you and you can work together with your partner and fail less. And sometimes you just roll bad, it happens. Yeah, it happens. You get a reroll automatically. Some of that stuff, but it, it, in a game that's like the complexity levels like this and the play time is not that long, and it, it's just, it's okay to fail sometimes and see random results happen and stuff. And sometimes the luck doesn't go your way. I'm totally okay with that in this kind of game. Totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah, so there you go. And you can recover in this kind of game, right? We yeah, saw yeah. that I was shocked yeah. for those three yeah. rounds and it didn't really hurt me too badly. I was still able to succeed on tests, so. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. If you want any more information, check out the link below. It's all here. You can read all about it. Check out the stretch goals, the add-ons, the updates, the comments, the FAQ. See what people are saying about it. You know what they think. It's all on here. It's just like kind of like a Kickstarter page, but you know better. Uh, in mm -hmm. my opinion, you guys saw this for the Hexplorer campaign we we played the prototype for. Uh, I really like this stuff. Um, but yeah, let's see what the live chat is saying. There are rough noises in the soundtrack. Dan, <laughs> you're crazy, Dan. Uh, Cynthia, I'll watch the stream back tomorrow, but it looks interesting so far. Yeah, it gives the vibes again. I'll mention this for those that weren't here at the start of the stream. This gives me vibes of Destinies. That we played except for destinies is very heavy app driven this is not but again the whole idea of you need an app you're exploring a story you don't know what's happening you don't know what's where you're kind of discovering the story as you move around and and interact with story in the game it feels on the same complexity level and kind of adventure of that of course of course that seems to have a much more mature kind of dark fantasy theme to it this is I don't know, it's like got some dark stuff to it, but it's definitely more it's, it's, fun and family yeah. friendly a bit, but it's still not like, you know, you see animal people, it's not like a kid's game. Definitely not that. No. And I love the art in the game. I love watching Sammy draw this art on his streams and stuff. That was amazing. Yeah, if you guys want to check that out, hit up Snowdale Design on YouTube. Go subscribe to Sammy's channel. He has, um, uh, he has upcoming streams scheduled for playthroughs from the designer. He has upcoming streams of, of drawing art for the game. The game's not completed yet. All the cards aren't designed, all the story entries aren't designed yet. You can go see him like draw on a live stream uh, as he plays. He did it for, uh, for this game I watched him do it for before, but uh, he did it also for Dawn of the Peacemakers and stuff like that too. So uh, go check out his YouTube channel, um, uh, Snowdale Design, and uh, check that out later. Uh, he's got stuff scheduled. I saw a whole bunch of stuff pop up in my subscription feed. Mm -hmm. And he says, thanks for uh, accepting to cover it, even in this prototype form. But this prototype no, was this awesome. this is amazing. This is amazing. Yeah, we've played prototypes before, Sammy, that are like, the minis we've had are like kind of falling apart. They're made out of resin. The rule book is two white pages stapled together They're and not complete. printed on a printer. Yeah. And it's like a mess. And yeah, so we kind of try to avoid those things now. But the fact you had like a, a quality rule book already put together, the rules were in place. What I'm showing is similar to what the final product will be. That's how I like to show games to my audience. So... I do appreciate the work. Uh, the fact that you didn't just go the tabletop simulator route to whip something together quick on there. The fact that even during COVID pandemic times, you took the time to, you know, get a game far enough. You believed in the product far enough to get it, you know, designed and spend the time and effort creating art, story, and design for it uh, and still bring it to Kickstarter Unfinished and still produce a production quality prototype and ship it and all that. In today's climate, that is, you know, that shows you believe in the game. And I, I do appreciate it as a content creator actually playing physically a tabletop game on the table versus a tabletop simulator game. That's just me, Definitely. though. That's just me. So I do appreciate that. Uh, I like to see more of that, to be honest. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> uh, Frederick, you're welcome. And Cynthia says, yes, that comment about the app is exactly what I was feeling. I just mentioned it to Brian. It looks like an app-driven game that has the balance, right? This is not an app-driven game. Just so you guys know that we're here at the beginning, I ranted about it. Put your pitchforks away and your, your torches. This is all the app is here to do is replace a giant thick storybook. So instead of fumbling around with a 400 page book and accidentally seeing what the results of a test are at the bottom of the page, or you, know, you open to the wrong page and see something you shouldn't, uh, it just handles it in a web app. So it's not an app you find in the store. It's literally on a website. You can use it on anything with a modern web browser. You can cache it locally to play offline. So you do not need an internet connection once you've downloaded it. So you can take it on a boat or in the forest, like we were talking about before. You take it to a cottage or camping. Um, and yeah, but you do need it to, to read your story scene entries. So th yes, this is similar, Velko saying, to the yeah. This War of Mine app. Uh, or uh, kind of like the Tina Grail app, right? Tina Grail, you guys told us after we were done playing it that they created an app yeah. that replaced that giant fumbly book that we had where like sometimes things were accidentally spoiled on the same page and things um, that I see people complaining about. Um, but that is, in this game, also there's, you know, you guys have seen it in our playthroughs before and you know it. How many times have you backed a like $200, $300 Kickstarter full of minis and a giant campaign book and you're in the middle of playing it and you get to a point and go, Oh, that typo doesn't make sense. What do I do now? I don't know what to do. 
Oh, let me go on BGG and search for an answer. Oh, there's nothing. Let me go read the FAQ. Oh, let me email the publisher to find out if I broke the game or if this is a typo or something wrong. And now you're sitting in there with this book that has issues. You got to like write in it or put post-it notes or something. And it's a mess. And then you're waiting for the next Kickstarter to get a reprint of a horribly translated book or a book with not play tested properly. We've all seen it before. It still happens to this day. But the fact that this is only available on a web app means that, you know, Sammy can fix things and he can update things and correct typos and stuff on the fly and, and improve it, you know, more easily uh, with less cost, less time. It, it just makes sense. It's just the right way to do it, I think, uh, in this day and age. Like everyone has an access, most people, right? Who are playing in this hobby have, you know, if you're on the internet watching me right now, you have a device you can use this on. So no complaints from anyone watching the stream because I know you have a way to access this through the web. You have an internet connection. That's all you need to download it or or just open the website and see the app. And it will always be the latest version, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Dan Roberts says, how many times I backed a two to $300 Kickstarter? Uh, my lawyer told me not to answer. I Yeah, I totally understand. I wouldn't answer that question either. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. It's confidential. And Daniel's asking if we have the Tainted Grail expansions. No, we don't. No, no we don't. Uh, Vogus said, never happened to me. Blessing of being a newbie board gamer. Well, I remember it happened, especially yeah. when we were playing Tainted Grail. And when we yeah. emailed them, they specifically said, like, oh, our playtesters never took this path or something. Right? Yeah, they said, like, we broke the game. Kind of scared me. And we made, were like, oh, yeah. okay. It, it kind of gave us signs that, like, Tainted Grail wave one shipment was kind of rushed. And it probably was the pressure of people, like, you know, in the Kickstarter comments demanding their game, which is why I take the stance of, like, you know, if you need to delay this game beyond the release, take your freaking time and make the best game you can because a rushed game, you know, that's bad is bad forever. Mm -hmm. You can't correct that. As much as you'd like to say you can with future Kickstarter packs and stuff, it's too late. There's already people that have moved on and moved on to other things. For example, uh, what's that one Awaken Realms game with the dreams and all that stuff? Oh, um... That I totally never care to play ever because of yeah, how they handled it. Our, yeah. yeah. Oh. I don't even remember. You guys will know. Someone in the chat will know. But the cool part is, so Sammy could release this game uh, and, you know, the book maybe has some bugs in it, but at least you can fix it as quick as possible. So, um, but yeah, we've all been there. But Tainted Grail had that issue at first and they told us like, oh, that, thanks for catching that bug. Etherfields. Ether Etherfields, that's the game. That was never going to come to break my but Yeah, we experienced that with Tainted Grail and we were able to email them and, and talk to the developers and figure out, you know, where the game was broken and where the book was not tested. Uh, and where they were missing rules cues and stuff. Uh, but they told us they would add that to like the wave, second wave, they would send a like, uh, you know, a correction sheet to the players or something. Either way, it sounded like, you know, it's like, uh, it's too bad you didn't like, you know. But are publishers taking emails from just randoms? Like I know you uh, were, they were able they to... Were, they were answering stuff on BGG. Okay, yeah, but like I even... we were able to like personally email yeah. because we have... Yeah, yeah. I gave them crap too for not answering some questions on BGG. Like I would find the same question I had and there was like all these people also asking and no answer. But then I see them answering other questions. So then I would send them the link and be like, hey, answer this. I need to know. <laughs> We're in the middle of playing this game. Let's go. Oh. But yeah. So. Sammy says, how did you know my plan was to release it horribly broken? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We know you're not. Listen. That was amazing. What we no, saw. No, but it, it could amazing. happen though. Yes, with, it with could a, happen. With a game with this many options and story entries and possible <laughs> outcomes and who has this card and what card and which players yeah. and which characters and if they click on this or that. It, you have to go through full software testing, like to make sure every button that you click goes to the right thing, right? Yeah, that's a and, lot. And, and then you also have to correct all the text in there and make sure the options are correct and which tags are there and all that. That is a monumental task to not mess up something. So you're allowed to have some bugs, you're allowed to have some things missing and, and some errors and that kind of thing. But the cool part is the people who get it and play it can easily send an email, you know, and, and have it fixed like that. Yeah. Not get frustrated that they're sitting over the big giant book full of mistakes that they have to throw away. You know, that's like useless and wait for the wait for the new edition to come out, you know? Yeah, and Brian's saying looking at the Rata on Sleeping Gods. And I think Sleeping Gods was the one I was trying to think of. We literally went through and put put little taggies on yep. each one we did that, for that had, Grail too. had something wrong with it so we yep. would remember. Yep, yep, yep. I yeah, agree. and that's tough. So yeah, there's gonna be an argument where some people see this game and might say, Oh, there's an app. You need an app? I'm out. But please don't. Please don't. It, 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 you try it. it. It's worth it. Trust me. Like, there's the benefits outweigh the negatives, it, you know, from any any point of view. Like, because you technically can disconnect from the internet, 
Like, what's the difference if it's on paper or on a screen? I guess I guess there's some argument there, but you know, staring at a screen for so long maybe can wear down, fatigue your eyes. And sometimes people want to just disconnect from looking at screens to play their tabletop games. But the cool part is you have like 99% of other games that exist to go choose from and play. So there's always that option. So yeah, I, I think it's pretty cool. I think having an app like this, I love in games because I love that hidden information and not being able to I, see something man, and I things pop up. And yep. you can see as we played through, you could see our reactions as we were maybe expecting one thing, but something different happened. Yep. You can't do that in a paper book. Well, you could, but I mean, it, you could, it's just fumbly. It's fumbly. You guys yeah. watch me play in Madara. I'm like, I'm like fumbling with this giant, you know, huge yeah. book. And I'm like trying to flip back. Oh, now I have to go back 10 pages to find this and find that. And, and, the and, best and I'm using the red decoder to try to read and find it. Yeah. It's cool that it's hidden. But it just but, could be so much better if it was in an app and you're just clicking and it's just exactly. smooth. Yeah. It's just smooth. And then, you know, you know where your progress was and that kind of stuff. I yeah, like that. I really like it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good job so far. I, I think it's a good game. I, I, I like to where it's going. I'm excited to follow some of these quest lines. It, it does. It does irk me not to find out where some of those quest lines went in all of our playthroughs we've done <laughs> this game. It feels like I've just pushed every quest a little bit. I don't think I've taken any quests all the way to the end because I didn't want to see spoilers yet. And I knew I wasn't going to be spoiling stuff like that on stream, purposely not taking any quests to the end. Yeah. To leave stuff for you guys to discover. But I cannot wait to push this further and discover some of these things. I love this kind of stuff. You guys say it on Destiny's when I'm playing. I love replaying the same scenario and poking different options and going different ways and seeing, you know, what the story writers had and what surprises they have for you based on passing tests, failing tests, making choices. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you like story driven, sandbox, open world kind of adventure games. Take a look at this one, it might be worth the play. And especially if you have younger gamers or lighter gamers or gamers who don't wanna play super long epic story games fumbling around the book and, and they take like three or four hours to play a session, which we all play those games. I love those games, I love those games. But sometimes it's nice just to like chill on an evening and play a, you know, a 90 minute fun story game and you're all just discovering and then get back together next week and just Continue and see how the world changed and what else you discover. Uh, so it's really cool. Also, we've played now technically three sessions, but we played the opening session twice. It was very different. Yep. In, the, yep, in those yep, two yep. playthroughs, which is great. And Stonedale Design saying, we really wanted to make the physical book, but there were just too many upsides to going digital, so we made the leap. It just yep. makes sense. I love it. And, and if you start thinking environmentally, it, it's like... You know, if you make a book that's full of issues and then you have to do it, uh, you know, a second on the second Kickstarter, you're giving a reprinted version or, it's, you know, you maybe missed a few things that people are demanding, uh, you know, a newer version. How much work and, and printing and shipping and wasted, you know, manufacturing and paper and all that stuff just to fix some issues like, I, yeah, it's just not worth it. It just makes sense to do it digital. It, yeah. it, it makes complete sense. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, the cool part is with a book, if the print is super small, or, you know, you, you're stuck with it. You got to you know, get some glasses, magnifying glasses, whatever. Um, but with an app, you can zoom in, you can put it on a bigger screen, which also is cool. So I don't know. I, I like it a lot. I like I it a too. lot. And it's, it's not like taking over the game like it would in like Destiny's where it basically feels like 75% video game, 25% board game. This is different. This still feels like... 95% board game and like 5% you know app involved kind of thing is it's just replacing a book really yeah that's all and I like that uh... <laughs> uh... I'll be reading the rule books tonight Olympic spoilers the worst <laughs> uh, Daniel says another advantage to the web app idea is that they can expand quests with new options later on exactly 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 or if they put, uh, you know, the idea of you going into a cabin and then getting locked in and getting robbed by mangy bears <laughs> with swords is something Clubs. all of a sudden a bunch of angry parents write into Snowdale Design and say, <laughs> I don't like, you know, bear violence in my games. How dare you? And, you know, Sammy can go in and, you know, change that card. What happens on that effect and completely get it out of there and change it. You know, times change, that kind of stuff. Well, I'm kind of joking, but kind of serious. Like, that's kind of stuff that happens, you know? Uh, you never know. Uh, but yes, it could be expanded. So it's very easy to just add to the book. So there could be, like, expansion packs later where you just buy little decks of cards, throw them in the event deck, boom. Then there's a whole bunch of other story entries added in the web app the next day. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just, 
Yeah, or like little quest expansions. Little quest, yeah, little quest expansions, yeah. all this. Like, yeah. man, the, the possibilities, if you like playing this game after a whole bunch of sessions, so easy to expand this kind of game. Uh, well, from a release model kind of point, designing those expansions. Yeah, that's, that's uh, beyond my us. Head, my head hurts even <laughs> thinking about doing that, but I'm not, it's not easy that way, but it's just easy for the consumer uh, to just to just get extra stuff for this game. I think it's neat. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you guys support it if you're interested in it. Go check it out on GameFound. Uh, it's a really cool game. I like what I see so far. So go check it out at least. Um, you know, and uh, we may play through it again to see you know a little more in the game, but we'll see. We'll see. Again, spoilers. Yeah, I'm we're not, cautious yeah. of the spoilers for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think you guys get the idea from this stream whether it's it's a game for you or it's a game that's not. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to come to retail as we've seen the other games from Snowdale Design has come to retail. So if you're really not sure right now, don't have the budget, you want to see how it, it works out, hopefully we can get a copy from Sammy or we'll get our own copy in the future and play the final version. I'm interested in doing mm -hmm, that. Definitely. Uh, and you guys can see the final product later. You might pay more at retail, maybe you don't, I don't know, but there, it, it should come to retail later assuming it, it did fund. It did fund, yeah, today. So yeah, so uh, you know, you, you, you can always wait. So if you're watching this in the future, there might it might already be in retail, so go check it out or See if we have a newer video on the channel or go look for a review or something uh, and look into it. But uh, from what Sammy was saying, this game's pretty far along. So what you see here is kind of what you'll see in the final product. So, you know, you get an idea of the quality and the content. So that's pretty good. Oh, and Frederick's, uh, Frederick in the chat is asking, how long do you plan to support the app? Asking because I often pick up old games like Steve Jackson's old Illuminati. Not the card version, okay. Uh, and then Sammy says, you know, as long as humanly possible, if ever it's not supported or he can't do it, he'll just uh, release it as an open source software, like a zip package, you know, like a zip file of, you know, here you go. You can just open it up and run it and kind of, you know, click through it. So, yeah, awesome. that's cool. But to be honest, there's like games coming out every 10 seconds all the time. Your shelf's getting full of them. We're always buying new games, always trying new games. The industry is always advancing. So Frederick's situation is true. People do that. They go to try to find the old classics and stuff. But I mean, the odds are there's another story adventure game that you're now looking into, you know, and this one's whatever. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's, 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 it's app driven and app required board games haven't been around that long yet for it really to matter. But we have seen publishers go out of business. And, and we have seen that kind of stuff get closed down and games not get picked up. So, you know. Well, hopefully you get it and have some fun with it and then, you know, you feel the value, but you'll know at the time when you're making your decision. Anyways, we're going to get out of here. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thanks everyone for hanging out with us here live. Thanks for those hitting the like button. If you want to find your way back to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Thanks to those that support us on Patreon or those that are joining the YouTube channel by becoming members. If you want to support the channel financially, you can find links for that stuff down in the video description. Thanks again to Sammy from Snowdale Design for providing us with this prototype to check out for you guys. On the channel, it was fun. Uh, and looking... for being here for the whole yeah, stream, yeah, that was amazing. They... Thank you. Yes, it's uh, what is it, Sammy? Like uh, eleven something your time probably right now. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty late. Yeah, and you, you had a big day today. You yeah, should, definitely you a big get day. Some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Sammy wants to say we poured, uh, we've poured so much love, sweat, and tears into the game that I'd hate people not being able to play it. So, uh, so I'll everything, I'll do everything in my power make it last as long as other games that's cool that's cool and then cynthia says i'm definitely in the interested <laughs> range <laughs> good luck <laughs> uh but yeah go check it out again the campaign's going for 28 days links are in the video description if you want to find out more uh and go ask uh, sammy from Sony design any questions i recommend you go to the uh game found page or go check out his website um but yeah, you can leave questions in the comments below, but again, I only know what we've seen here, so you might be able to answer that stuff for you. So I recommend going to the GameFound page, uh, checking it out there. But thank you all for watching. Thank you for spending time with us here. Hope this was helpful. And we'll be back tomorrow, where we start our Circle of Undone, or The Circle Undone, sorry. The Circle of Undone uh, playthrough for Arkham Horror, the living card game, our blind playthrough of that. So if you want to come and watch us stumble through the world of Arkham Horror and the uh, Cthulhu Mythos, uh, in a card game. We'll be playing that tomorrow, starting that campaign. So come and join us. Uh, I believe it's 11 a.m. Eastern, and we'll see you for that. Bye-bye!